Right. Hello. 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 All right, we are live. Live? Is it happening, Mike? It's happening. Wow. Can they hear your voice? Yep, it should be able to. Okay. What's up? Okay, light up that. Hear your voice? Light up that yep, chat. It should be able to. What's up? Okay. okay. What's up? I figure out. I need to read. Okay, light up that. Hear your voice? Light up that yep, chat. It should be able to. What's up? Okay. Okay. What's up? I figure out. I need to read. Okay, light up that. Hear your voice? Light up that yep, chat. It should be able to. What's up? Okay. What's up, everybody? What's up? I figure out. I need to read. Okay, light up that. Hear your voice? Light up that chat. It should be What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? I figure out. I need to read. Okay, light up that. Hear your voice? Light up that chat. It should be able to. What's up? Massive. There it is. I don't know why that is doing that. We will figure it out. Oh, I do know why. That is that was your computer audio. There's an application open that is for some reason hearing your voice and hearing every voice and just okay, it's so better now. Okay, yeah, no, we good I, now? I see it in the data. Oh, awesome. sorry. Should we say hi to everybody? Hi, this is Mike. Hello. And then the crew say hi. Every- hi. Hey, what's up? It's the crew. Steven, Braxton, Josh. Boom. Shua. Maybe. Sure. <laughs> Oh, we look cute. Cheers to all y'all who are in here. Cheers, cheers, cheers. How we doing? Awesome. Okay, I think we're back. I think we have better audio now. I think I remember, we were all freaking out because there was a huge echo. Awesome. Where are you from? Let us know where you're from. <laughs> Cambodia in the house. What's up? Cambodia. I see Jason, Isaac, Micah, Blake. Arbor Weddings in the house. Sunri, the Richard, Jason. What's up? Stopping in a bit before Better Call Saul. Fair. Very fair. Iowa. What's up? Next door neighbor. Okay. Oh, Jason. Gonna go waiting for a couple to show up with their dogs for the end of their session. Nice. You probably, are you out at North Avenue Beach? Let us know where you are. Nashville. Nashville in the house. What's up? Georgia. Let's go. Georgia the state or Georgia the country? Miss uh, Sydney. Chad in the house. What up, Chad? Oh, sick. Okay, Blake. Blake sent me a wonderful email the other day. Thank you for that email, Blake. You are awesome. Oh, yeah. I should have seen that when you said Nashville. Okay, whoa. Coming in hot here. Montreal, Quebec. Let's go. Arkansas, Washington State. Wow. Canada. Oh, Jason's in Naperville. Okay. <laughs> Augusta, Georgia. Nice. So Georgia, the state. LA, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, near where Braxton's from. He's from Mississippi. Uh, Los Angeles. What's good? What's good? Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Hello, hello. Seattle, California. Okay, sweet. Michigan. Okay, wow. These are rolling in now. Epic, 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 epic. Okay. Thank you. Keep, keep lighting up the chat. If you guys could do me a huge favor, if you could like the video... That helps push it to more people who are scrolling through YouTube tonight, who may already subscribe to me, who might be interested in something like this. That helps a ton. If you could just smash like um, and keep lighting up the chat, I think that's uh, what's going to help push it out to more people, just so more people can be involved, hear what I have to teach tonight, get in on the Q&A, get on in the mentor sessions. I just want to quickly explain everything that's going on. Recent YouTube videos have been epic. Thank you so much, Christopher. All Everybody in this room has just put in so much hard work over the past week and getting all that stuff out to all of y'all. Um, so it's really awesome to hear that it's been um, epic for you to watch and entertaining or insightful or any of those things. So thank you. Thank you so much for liking it, guys. If you're just tuning in, if you could just bomb the chat, get the chat going, like the video, awesome. Okay, so what is happening tonight? We are closing out this entire week of the classroom, my course, um, with open enrollment in it. It closes tonight at midnight, and I just wanted to do one last completely free, like 20 to 30 minute um, 
like information session for you guys. So I'm going to go through an entire slide deck on how to diversify your own business and some of what I've done to diversify mine, um, whether that be in the wedding world or even beyond. Um, and then past that, we're going to do some Q and A. So you guys ask questions, I give answers, and then we have a whole setup where you can basically call in to the live if you feel so bold. Um, and I can evaluate where your business is at. You can give me kind of a synopsis of what's going on in your business. And then I can give you some advice on what I think you should do and next steps. And really anybody in the room here, because they're all at different experience levels. We all have a bunch of experience in a multitude of things in this room. So I, it's just going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be going for four and a half hours. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> um, all the way till midnight, all the way to the close of the classroom enrollment. Um, and throughout... If anybody enrolls, if anybody enrolls in the classroom throughout this, we're going to be reading your names live and thanking you for enrolling in the classroom, um, and maybe even mentioning some of the people who are already um, enrolled this this past week and even today. And yeah, so we just want to shout you guys out and thank you for making that investment in yourself. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, like who's the best person, what's the best fit for joining the classroom, and um, Ultimately, it comes down to really like two places in your career. One is you've like really just started shooting weddings or you're just about to and you have the finances to invest in something to learn. Um, so really taking it right from the beginning, getting all the basics down and moving into the more complex topics. And then it's for the experienced shooter as well, you know, getting into the 15 to even upwards of 30 weddings a year, but you're looking to scale it to something even bigger, looking to scale it to six figures, looking to take it to that next level, that next marketing level, all that good stuff. So those are really the two big demographics of people um, that I was really thinking of when I made the classroom, both the photo course and the video course for wedding filmmaking and wedding photo. Um, so if you have any questions in the Q&A about that, if you want to jump on for one of the mentor calls and you want to chat through if it's a good fit for you, um, I'm more than happy to do that. But I'm also totally here for not classroom related stuff too. If you don't want to talk about that at all and you're interested in something, talking about something completely different in your business, completely different in how you're balancing your personal and business life and all that stuff, I totally want to engage with that as well. And for all of you that are just tuning in, I want to do an around the horn one more time so everybody can see who's in the room. Hi, it's Eric here. Say your name. Oh, I'm Mike. <laughs> What's going on? I'm Steven. Hi, I'm Braxton. And I'm Shua. What's up? <laughs> so we have a whole crew of people in the room tonight um, going through questions and just partying all night with you guys. So I hope you stick around. You can stay as long as you want. You can peace out whenever you want. Um, but tonight's just about bringing value to you guys and um, yeah, just helping out in any way we can while we celebrate the close of the classroom. So, all right, I want to jump into my slide deck so you guys can see this stuff. And we're going to switch over to my computer and let me know when I'm good to go on that. I think he put me in the bottom corner as well. Sick. So slide decks over here. I made a joke last time. I was like, I was like, why I ought to? <laughs> Eric, that was a really good joke, but I would like to interrupt you really quickly oh. because we actually have oh. a purchase. Oh, let's go. We have first person to enroll in the live stream with the classroom, Andrew Brewer, getting the photo course. Thank you so much, Andrew, for investing in yourself in that way. As I said, anytime an order rolls in, anytime you guys enroll, um, we're going to call your name live tonight. So thank you so much, Andrew. Stoked that you're a part of it. Don't forget to join the Facebook group. Okay. Jumping in. All right. This is one of my favorite topics, topics to talk about. and sort of a variation of module 10 in the classroom, but marketing without marketing. I'll give you a bit of insight of how, where my business is now with diversification. A lot of people ask me if I still shoot weddings. Like, is that something you still want to do? Is that something that you're trying to get out of? I hate that question, honestly, because it, I, I really just don't like the idea of graduating from weddings or thinking that it's lesser than uh, than another type of photography or filmmaking, I think with the right mindset, it can be something that is sustainable for decades, ultimately. Um, and I just think that's a stigma that needs to be broken, honestly. Um, that doesn't mean that I, I don't want to diversify my business and do other things. But at this point in my career, 
I don't want to leave weddings uh, at all. I still love shooting them. I still love serving my clients. I still think it's such a foundational bedrock to my business. And you'll see why in the coming, um, the coming uh, slides. So the first thing I want to talk about, and this is the most common thing that is asked of me online as a wedding photographer and wedding filmmaker, is what do I do to get started in this <laughs> career? What do I do to get started in shooting weddings? My my response every single time, DM, Instagram comment, YouTube comment, always is lead with value and maybe even work for free to get started. What I mean by that is you need to approach people and approach scenarios where you lead with value for the person on the other end. So if you're reaching out to a planner, what kind of value are you bringing to their life and career? What kind of work are you willing to do for them and not just something that you want from them. And so an example of this, this is like half of my DMs on Instagram pretty much all the time are, I'd love to second shoot for you. And now that's incredibly flattering. I really appreciate that people want to do that with me, that they want to shadow me. It's super flattering that you would want that. Um, but the truth is that the volume of DMs that I get that say this, I can't say yes to everyone that asks to second shoot for me. So I, I'm only really responding to DMs that are like showing me like a video of their face and reaching out really intentionally or bringing value in some sort of way that I wasn't thinking of already instead of just being like, hey, I would love for you to pay me to second shoot whenever. And I go, well, I have no idea who you are actually. I have no idea what your work is like and I'm going to have to dig and do research to see if you're somebody that I would want to hire. So how can you creatively reach out to someone or reach out to a potential client with that value add? And this is really controversial to say, but what if you reached out to someone or a couple or a potential client and just said, hey, I just want to shoot for free. I just want to shoot whatever it is, like your engagement photos, your wedding, um, your business, whatever it is for free. No expectations. You don't have to pay anything. And then for you, that just lowers it lowers the the stress of what you need to produce for yourself if you're really early in the game and you don't feel super confident in your abilities there's nothing really to stress about because if you screw it up they didn't pay any money in the first place so it's a great place to start getting portfolio work and building a portfolio that proves what you're capable of and once you have that first portfolio piece whether it was shooting for really cheap or shooting for free you can then prove to other people that this is something that you do and something that you can replicate over and over again so for me right now, if I speed up to where I am right now, not 10 years ago when I started, I'm still working for free. So if you see here, these are a bunch of images that I have made over the past six months that I've shot and collaborated with friends completely free. So up in the top left, that is my buddy Patrick, my barber, who cuts my hair every month. But we have a working relationship where I and my friend Mike, one of my studio mates, he's here tonight. We work with Fernwood on making content for them in exchange for them cutting our hair all the time. So that's something that I'm doing for free. You might think it's okay, maybe it's an exchange, but I'm not getting paid any money to do that. And you might even argue like, okay, well, we did one portrait session with them. I charge $500 for a portrait session. If you spread that out over haircuts, like it's about a year of haircuts. So we don't care if we're like getting the shorter end of the stick in that scenario, or it's, it's all about collaboration and getting more portfolio work and building community in that sense. So that's, that's one part. The next one is, is my documentary I'm working on with Joe Greer right now. Crazy happenstance that that happened. We connected at the New York city marathon last fall, and then it avalanched into making this documentary about him and his next marathon attempt this December. I have completely self-funded this to this point. And now we are finally reaching the stages of it potentially getting funded by someone who wants to put money into it and see some sort of return. But I've shot that for free. The next is, is Emma over here. Portrait Emma just shot a week and a half ago. This is Braxton's wife. They just got married. And this was the night when we surprised them with a party at Creative Club, our studio. And we, Steven and I just shot their portraits like right in their neighborhood and started building more of our portfolio of some of the wedding work that we want to get into with film elopements and small weddings. 
Next up, we have Josh, who's also here tonight, Josh and Tina. Um, Josh just started working with us formally uh, this past week on the classroom launch. And one of the videos we were actually planning on making and releasing on Saturday, things just got too hectic. We went out to North Avenue Beach and did a portrait session with them in their wedding attire. Now that's gonna be a video I release in a couple weeks probably because it just felt too rushed, um, but that's another portfolio piece. I have two photos in the bottom left corner. We were invited to Maui um, to be on a podcast and Steven and I shot film the entire trip, got featured in an online magazine with that work and it's more portfolio work. We completely, we completely shot that for free. We pretty much broke even, no, we spent money on the trip. We spent our own money <laughs> to basically get that portfolio work. I made a YouTube video, he made a couple YouTube videos and then our trip to Yosemite in the bottom right corner, which we decided to tack on to a Washington state and Oregon state wedding um, that four of us, three of the four of us in this room shot. And we went down to Yosemite, made more YouTube content. Steven shot that running photo of me of us potentially working with brands like Hoka in the future, or maybe doing print sales with landscape work. That was very long winded, but I want you to see, do you want to add something? I do. Okay. Um, it, it kind of goes off of uh, somebody's post, mm. but talking about free work and you want this part to be interactive a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. Yeah. he's talking about if you do free work, they just find you less yep. available. They'll never pay you. I, when I moved to Chicago, did free work for a ton of people. And what it did for me was I was st strategically doing free work for specific people that were in. It's Can't listen to yourself. Yeah. Yep. That was in a specific group of people that I wanted to reach. Mm -hmm. So I actually wasn't doing it to get work from them later on. It was connecting. It was connecting and building my network of people so that then that free work is seen by all of the people that I want to see it. So then they pay me because I hear what you're saying. And yes, that does sometimes. Oh, is my mic off? Oh, no. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't think so. Hello. Hello. No, you should. I should be coming through. Can you guys hear me? How is my mic off, but yours is not? Hmm. Sounds like audio is only going through Eric's mic. Great, Eric, you can keep Okay, going. well, I'll keep going on that thought. Um, so basically what Mike is saying is working for free in that way is a better way to actually connect with people. So if you have the mentality of working for free or working for really cheap, it's virtually no different than spending your own money on traditional advertising like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google ads, paper ads. No one does that anymore. Um, but like anything like that, instead of spending dollars or spending a, on a subscription to Wedding Wire or The Knot or anything like that, you're just instead spending your time, which is also valuable to market yourself, to get connected to people and get potential work while building a portfolio. So that's, that's a huge component of building now, the argument is that then people will think you just work for free. Well, then that's when you start setting hard expectations where as you build that portfolio, people will want to start paying for that work. You can start charging maybe a little bit more. Maybe you shot the first one for free, but your next portrait session is going to be $200. And then from $200, you're graduating to $300, $400. I think you know how to count. <laughs> so you start escalating that price. And once you prove the quality of your work as you grow and as you become better, your demand is going to go up. And once that demand goes up, if you are balancing a part-time job and shooting on the side, or you're getting enough work at that point to, um, to subsidize your lifestyle, then you don't have to say yes to everybody anymore. Um, I choose to work for free or work for really cheap from time to time because I'm going to get to that in the following slide. So it's a, it's a really strategic move. It's not that you're just communicating to everyone that you work for free. You make it abundantly clear like, hey, I'm really, you can phrase it that way. When you say that you want to work for free, you say, hey, I'm trying to get my feet into this market. I'm new here. I just started photography, all those things. It's okay that they have that expectation of you if you are working for free. I wouldn't expect anyone who's really seasoned to come up to someone and just be like, I just want to do completely free work in the field of work that I already do. If it's something that you're branching into and you explain that to them, then that's an expectation of if you want to do more of this kind of work in the future, it is going to be paid work. And it's okay to tell them that if they reach back out to you, if they want to shoot again. Okay. So 
these are some examples of, of my recent free or very cheap work if I got paid anything or got anything in return. And that's in hopes of building into new ways of diversifying my own business. Okay, so if you're overwhelmed by all the things I just said, you can backpedal a little bit and focus on this idea of just conquering one thing at a time. If you get too interested in this idea of diversifying too soon um, and diversification too soon in your career, it could lead you to trying too many things at once and, and not becoming a master of any of them. Um, and so you have to figure out, okay, if I'm going to make something profitable, I need to be really good at it. I need to grow in it so that it becomes its own entity that functions on its own. Similar to what we were just talking about with doing the free work and building your pricing, you have to keep building that pricing and growing your skills in that one specific area so that that demand starts flowing and that you're regularly getting inquiries on that thing. So maybe that's wedding photography photography for you. You're networking in your community. You're getting referrals that are um, secondhand by clients, word of mouth referrals, uh, people, your clients posting on social media and all their friends and family wanting to hire you. And that starts functioning on its own. And you start, you're at a price point where you're starting to book everybody that they're connected to. Once that machine starts going, then I'd say, I'd recommend, then you start thinking about the next step and diversifying and adding a new skill and doing a new thing and figuring out a new branch in your business, a new way to make money outside of the existing machine that's set as the foundation, like wedding photography in that circumstance. So build one side of the wedding business and see it to profitability. See it to actually making money. You're no longer investing back into gear. You're no longer investing back into software, but now you're actually putting money in your bank account and you're actually able to use it for more marketing purposes. Maybe you want to go and do a, a destination shoot or a styled shoot, and now you can use actual business dollars to start investing instead of hacking it for free or hacking it by doing really cheap work. Um, so yeah, basically what I said already, if you're a wedding photographer, become a master of that craft and pour yourself into that role for at least two years. That's my recommendation. Stick to it and see it through for two years and see what comes of that. See what kind of growth you've had, you have in that two years time and see if you start getting a more organic reach of people wanting to book you, their family, their friends, referrals, planners, all that stuff. So this isn't possible. All this free work that I'm doing now that's somewhat in weddings, but then extending outside of weddings, none of that would be possible without me building that wedding business first and building that core foundation. I became a master at my craft in wedding photography and wedding filmmaking. And then I started to diversify in a more unique way with that wedding business being the foundation that could give me the ability to spend money. And even like I look at the documentary stuff, like spend money out of my pocket to prove to a potential investor that this would be something worth investing in. So how do you diversify a wedding business? You might look at the stuff I'm doing and you're like, I have no intention of shooting a documentary. I have no intention of you know, doing landscape film photography. How do I diversify my wedding business? Expand your skills. This is from the perspective of if you are a wedding photographer, learn video. It's very similar, very yet very different than photo. Um, if you understand composition and light, you're going to, or you're going to have an upper hand in starting video. Once you start doing that video, learn how to include audio into that. Uh, video is a, a two-faceted uh, medium where it's including motion and visuals. So moving pictures along with audio appealing to two senses from the viewer, not just still photography that is very, very poignant, um, yet very hard to communicate something um, just in one still image. Start live streaming. I've, these are all things that I've been paid for over the past five to 10 years. Do a live stream. The only reason I've even offered a live stream at, at weddings that I've done is because Mike knows how to live stream and I contracted him out and hired him to be there to run that live stream. So that's a, an aspect of community and getting connected to other people to bring profitability to your own business and jobs to other people. Branching into film photography. People in our studio do add-ons and I've even done add-ons at elopements before 
of charging for film photography at a certain point of the day or a certain amount of rules throughout the wedding and shooting a different aesthetic and a different medium. Doing a photo booth, I've charged multiple times for a photo booth setting up with constant lights like this and photo paper like what's behind me and charging like an extra thousand dollars at a reception, hiring an assistant to run the photo booth all night and delivering an online gallery where people can order prints afterwards. If you're, if you're looking to, to get more money, um, increase your editing skills and start editing photo or video for people. There are so many wedding photographers and wedding filmmakers who need work in editing. So many people are overwhelmed with the amount of editing that they need to do for their own business. You could make money and improve your skills at the same time editing. Adding on associates whenever you are booked for your wedding, uh, for, for a date. Adding on people to your team who you know and trust who could shoot weddings under your brand where you can take a small commission off of the clients that book them as your associate. And then getting into some of the things I've been getting into the past you know, two to four years with education and podcasting once you become more of a master of your craft or dabbling into the commercial work world. There are just so many things you could pursue. And I've only like adamantly pursued a few of these things to profitability because pursuing all of them at full blast would just literally be impossible without a team of like a dozen people. So then I go back to the same thing of when you started, if you're wanting to branch into something new and modify your business and start diversifying it again, you need to approach these things by leading with value and maybe even working for free. You got to start these new pursuits in the same exact way you started the first thing. We might be having audio issues with you. With me now? Yeah. Uh, is anybody else experiencing that? Hello? Hello? Is anybody else listening? Hear me? Still? Is Kristen watching from afar? Can she hear us? Hello, hello, hello. It's fine. Okay, yeah. Keep going. Still good? Can you hear me? Let's just do a quick audio test. Let's see what this delay is. Let's count to okay. 10. Oh, I can hear. Sounds fine. We're good. What about, What's what about me and Steven? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Eric just got very scared. <laughs> oh, you did it. Oh, wow. <laughs> we good? How's the chat look? Awesome. So every, you can hear everybody now? Thanks for, sorry for that. I just plugged in my phone. That's okay. I think this dongle's busted. Oh, bad dongle. Yeah. Oh, bad dongle. Bad dongle. This is mean by dongle. dongle. Okay. Well, all right. Getting back to it. Sorry. If you're looking to diversify in this new way outside of just weddings, the same thing as you did when you first started with leading with value and maybe even working for free or super cheap. The more profitability you get in these endeavors, if it is a new branch of your business, if you built that foundation of, in my example, wedding photography first, and you switch over and learn a new skill in wedding filmmaking, and now you're hiring second shooters and associates to do a team of both photo and video on the same day, now you're going to see more profitability with your ability to do photo and video as a full team on the same wedding day you're going to be charging one and a half to two times the amount of what you were charging before for just one of them. So if you have more profitability, then consider start div to start diversifying uh, that those into assets, into different assets than just throwing all your money into a bank account. So even better, maybe start considering investing into assets that have reoccurring and passive income. Super big buzzword, buzz phrase, passive income. But here are some examples of how I have taken that profitability in the base foundational parts of my business in wedding photo, wedding filmmaking, and portraiture, those foundational things, and invested them into new things in my business that have reaped even more profit and more benefit in my career. So dumping a lot of that profit into YouTube, into production and getting more gear like lights and audio and a studio and photo paper and just a ton of travel and ton of different opportunities where I'm spending money out of my pocket to make YouTube content, but in return, making money in ad revenue and sponsorships through different brands and ultimately selling my education and Patreon through my channel that I've grown and have um, earned the trust of subscribers for you know four to five years now. 
affiliates that exist in the description. Anytime people click on links in my description, that I'm getting a small kickback from like Amazon or the choice different businesses that I'm partnered with that are in the description as well. I now have presets and LUTs partnering with other companies to create digital assets that benefit people uh, outside of myself, outside of my own entity who are pursuing some of the same things in photo and filmmaking. Um, and then selling prints or getting royalties from companies who sell my prints on their behalf and their company prints with my clients, uh, prints when I drop them on YouTube, um, and other ways to, uh, creatively sell prints and then getting into real estate. I own a condo that has renters in it. My family does that. And then we also have our own home. We're building into the equity of those things all the time. Um, and then, you know, the ways I invest in, um, my money market account and my retirement accounts, and then looking to the future, potentially doing more real estate with something like Airbnb and short-term rental properties that I can use for a multitude of other things that are listed here, like potentially hosting it as a wedding venue or um, making YouTube content in those places and, and using it in a multifaceted way. So when you and your business become diversified in skill, in clientele and in assets. So first building that foundational skill, something you can do and provide a service to people and then diversifying that clientele of people who you are serving in your business that is multifaceted in skills. Then you invest that money and profit into assets that are reoccurring and uh, build a feedback loop into more profitability for your company. You're no longer beholden to any specific entity or business or client. Not to say that any business or client or entity is a bad thing or a bad person, um, not judging it from its base value. But now in this circumstance, when you diversify this much or not even this much, you don't have to diversify this much. Let me make that very clear. But at least diversifying some and diversifying that skill set some, you don't have to cave to the pressure of giving another discount. And that goes back to the question of working for free or working for cheap. When you have this many skills, you build a community around you and you have all the resources to make money in a few different ways. You don't have to, you don't have to lower your standards when someone comes to you with a lower budget at that point. You can then have enough demand coming through the door in multiple ways where you can feel comfortable saying, you know what, this is actually my price point. If that's not in your budget, that's totally okay. I have a bunch of other friends who might be able to work with you at this budget or I have an associate that might be able to work with you at your budget. And you don't have to say yes to booking that weekend, even though it's your kid's birthday that weekend. You don't have to feel, you don't have to feel like you have to get that job or you have to do that to make ends meet and you have to miss something that's really important to you. So these are some of the benefits of diversifying. Now, the negative side of doing it too much is that you can get totally engrossed in it and that you can you can obsess over it and that's the other unhealthy side of it which i talked about in the last live stream is just like keeping community around you to keep you in check and things like therapy that have been so helpful for me and recognizing and spending time with my own wife to recognize like okay i need to chill out here or i need to spend more time with my family and more time with my friends and less time on work and truth be told, the last two or three months for me have just been insane with presets dropping, LUTs dropping, now the classroom. And, um, you know, as tomorrow ends and the classroom is over for this drop, I'm going to be spending a lot of time just being with family um, and being with friends and, and working on relationships again and adding to that point in my life. And I'm going off the deep end now. It's just more of my personal life that I love to share about just so that people can, you know, relate to it in some sense. But you don't always have to work for free anymore when this happens, when you keep improving your skills and keep learning new things and adding new things to your repertoire. But you still need to always, always, always lead with value and take care of your clients. Because if you build the foundational pieces of your business, whether it's wedding photography to start, wedding filmmaking to start, or portraiture to start, if you don't take care of those existing clients and, um, People refer to this as like your, your golden cow, um, the thing that you are just like, that's the thing that is always generating money for you and your business. If you don't take care of that, that's the foundation of it. And if that crumbles, the things that you have built on top of that can also crumble with it. 
So always make sure that you're taking care of your clients. Don't leave them um, in the dust. Don't leave them by the wayside. Make sure that you are taking care of them, serving them um, as you continue to grow and build your business. So that's what I have for that presentation. Um, I hope it was somewhat helpful or inspirational to you. That's really the goal I wanted here is like, it's like drinking out of a fire hose. It's super nutrient rich in uh, ideas and what you could potentially do with your own business. But I just want it to be something that like makes you think what it, what could you be doing to change what's already existing in your business right now? What could you be doing to learn and grow? Are you, are you working on that foundational piece right now? Are you working on diversifying more? Um, or are you looking to scale things back because things are too overwhelming? Again, it just, it's all about intentionality. What are you doing to make sure your business is healthy and thriving? Okay, sick. We're going to go into Q&A, but I just wanted to mention another person who enrolled in the classroom. This is Christopher Messer. Uh, he went on the photo uh, side of the classroom. Just want to shout you guys out again. If anybody enrolls in the classroom during this live stream, we just want to thank you personally for trusting us with putting on this, uh, this course and really hope Chris that it is foundational for you and it changes your perspective on business and helps you grow. Um, so thank you for enrolling and make sure to sign up in the Facebook group first module right away, go over there and get connected with everybody. We have almost 150 people in the Facebook group. There are still people stragglers who haven't joined since last drop. Um, that's why I want to keep reemphasizing. If you are enrolling, please make sure to hit up the Facebook group. We are doing, I, I do my own referrals in there. If I'm booked, my associates are booked. I put referrals in the classroom. People are getting second shooting jobs in there. People are referring other weddings in there. I just saw today someone posted their own elopement like in Colorado for other people to potentially shoot. There's all sorts of guys. There's so much crazy stuff that happens in Facebook groups like that. And there's consistently times where I come in throughout the year where I just want to do portfolio review and critique and open up conversation about what's going on in everyone's business. So that's another component of the classroom that is really special and powerful as well. Just want to make sure everyone knows that. Okay. I had the Q&A sli slide up for a while. So I assume there are some questions rolling in and we can go back to just my face instead of the slideshow now. Whew. Okay. All right. Someone, Jared said, curse the dongles. <laughs> Dang dongle. <laughs> okay. Not much of a question. Just wanted to say you're one of the only few people on YouTube that encouraged me to keep doing photography despite being colorblind. I do product photography. Man, that's so cool. And that's really consistent with one of our friends, uh, Chris Chu, who we had no idea was colorblind and it just has like such a successful career in photography as well. If you don't know Chris's content, please go check out Chris Chu on YouTube. Um, I don't think his color blindness is really intense. I know, but he has, um, I think he has some deficiencies in red and green. Um, so that just affects the way he edits and the way he shoots. So um, yeah, definitely check out his work. I really appreciate that comment, Alex. Thank you. Um, is this live stream going to be saved? Yes, I can't guarantee that it's going to be up forever, um, but I do want to leave it up at least for like a week. So uh, make sure to check in and um, rewatch it in that time at the very least. Uh, I just don't know if it will be or not. Um, made the classroom sound too good. <laughs> oh, oh, Chris, who just signed up. That's awesome. Finally came. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much again, Chris, for signing up. That's so rad. Um, tips for wedding photography without a second shooter when the budget doesn't allow for it tips for wedding photography without a second shooter when the budget doesn't allow for it okay um there's two answers i have to this specific question is that if you want to always shoot with a second shooter maybe consider hiring someone on and and taking that own money your own money out of your pocket to hire that person so that you get the robust kind of coverage you want for portfolio work in order to book more clientele with a second shooter the next time. I always try to push clients to go for a second shooter when it's necessary. Early in my career, I was constantly telling clients, it's fine either way, I can cover it either way. And then started to realize quickly that any weddings over 100 people, I started feeling very, very overwhelmed with shooting them by myself. 
So that's what the kind of model I set for people now is like, if you have more than a hundred people, I would highly recommend having a second photographer with me just so that I can work at my optimal level, not feeling stressed. Um, at the very least, maybe hire on like a college student friend who can work for 15, 20 bucks an hour and just being an assistant all day. They're stoked on having a part-time job on the weekend sometimes. And you have someone who can help you carry lenses and snack some water and helping with the clients and the wedding party and all that good stuff. More than just being stressed. Mm -hmm. It's important just so that your client gets what they actually need and deserve mm -hmm. from you. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, yeah. And you might think you, you're able to cover that, that wedding just by yourself, but that might not be the case. You might be missing stuff. And so, yeah, you just got to make sure that you're going into that. If you're, if there's like 250 people at that wedding setting, really strong expectations with your clients of what they should expect if you're shooting it that solo. Um, but then maybe think about what you could do to serve them in an extra way and how much they would feel loved if you brought an assistant or someone that shot a little bit and they got a little bit extra and who that, who you might be able to book because of that. Now, if you were in the circumstance where that's not possible at all and you have to shoot solo, um, I would just highly recommend knowing the schedule like the back of your hand and setting very, very clear expectations with the clients about where you will be and when. Um, and making sure that if there are, I always ask my clients if there is, if there are any th things that I miss and you would be devastated about, I need to know those things. I need to know if there is a detail or a piece of jewelry that you're going to be wearing or a, a trinket or a moment or something that's going to be incredibly important to you. I need to know that first um, so that I don't miss those things. And then setting strong expectations. If we're going to take portraits during cocktail hour, there's going to be no coverage of cocktail hour unless I get some at the end of the 10 to 15 minutes I have when I come back or whatever that case is. So setting strong expectations and then just working your tail off and getting as much coverage as you possibly can and staying late if you need to, to get that coverage. If you missed a certain amount of portraits and want to do some night portraits, like stick around to get that done and serve them well. Okay. Whew. That was a long winded answer. Sorry. Does anyone know if once you buy the classroom courses, it's yours to keep to use those courses forever or are they limited time use? Great question. And a really common question. Um, no one who does an online course can guarantee that it is going to be there for a lifetime. Tons of people online sell courses and they say lifetime access. What they really mean by that is you're going to have it for a long time and they can't really they can't really say that it will be there forever because the platform that they hosted on that company might dissolve and they have to reformat it to somewhere new. And at that point they might just get rid of it or whatever. Um, so what I, I just like to keep really strong expectations of what this will be um, based on how much my business evolves and changes over time. I am guaranteeing it for two whole years. You'll have access to everything in there for two whole years. I will guarantee having a membership through Thinkific, which is where we host the classroom. And it will most likely end up being around three to four years, if not more, if we keep doing education in this capacity, which is more than enough time for you to watch and rewatch re everything that you need to know in these courses. Each individual course is 16 hours long and combined with uh, crossover modules, it's 28 hours long. Um, so it's more than enough time if you just get disciplined and watch one, you know, one module once a week throughout the year, you can easily get through in three to four months um, at that pace. So, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. You could do it at your own pace and they're not going to expire on you. And if and when that happens, I'm going to make it very, very obvious years down the road that you need to watch it all to make sure you get it all in. Um when do you recommend that you get an LLC? So these are incorporating questions are really complicated questions when it comes to turning your business into an LLC or an S corp, because there's so much nuance to it based on where you live in which state you're in. Um, if, if you're making a certain threshold of income uh, and so, and then the, the difference between if you should do an LLC or an S corp, I cover this at length in, in the business module of the classroom. I sit down with my CPA, my accountant, and we talk about all of the nuance of incorporating and what is best for each scenario specific to where I am and broadly. Um, but my recommendation is that you get connected with a CPA, a certified public accountant, 
and you figure out with that person what is best for you at the stage of your business. If you have no idea where there's an accountant, reach out to other professionals in your field in the area so that they can give you recommendations on a, a good CPA um, that could work with you. And that's where I would that's where I would go to to make sure that everything is is rock solid. You can get your tax savings as an incorporation, as a corporation incorporating. Um, and yeah, just do it the right way. Sick. Okay. I want to get more stuff. Like I want to get more vibes going in the room. So um, we get, yeah, wait, you, you want know, something? I'm ready for the next. One oh, the next question, hit it, Brex. Uh, along with Felipe. Um, he asked about, I have been struggling to prospect more clients. I have Excel and client experience has been helping me a lot. Can you guys advise more things to do besides client referrals and Facebook ads? So two things that I found a lot of success in in my short time here in Chicago, I've only been in Chicago for a little bit over a year. I, I built my business in Mississippi and was there for a few years. Um, one is that I still shoot weddings. Um, not only do I still shoot weddings, but I shoot weddings for a, I don't even know what you really call them, a wedding company. Um, I shoot for uh, a company here in Chicago called Golden Hours uh, Wedding Photography and Filmmaking. Um, it's ran by my girlfriend, Dana, but she has several associates on both the photo side and the filmmaking side. I shoot both photo and video for her, but basically the way it works is that she'll field all the inquiries through her company, and then she'll ask me if I'm available, and then she'll subcontract that job out to me. Um, there are several people like that throughout the country that do that. Um, now, I had an easy enough opportunity to where she reached out to me, but I feel like there, there should be no problem with reaching out to those companies. Um, and asking about possibly associate, associate shooting for them or even just associate shooting for other uh, wedding photographers and filmmakers. And then another way that was really successful for me is when I first got here, I second shot for a lot of people. I'm just not realizing I've been looking at my phone and not the camera. Um, <laughs> um, I, I second shot for a lot of people and I was very strategic about the people that I, that I specifically second shot for. So what I did was I second shot for a lot of people who were a little bit outside of my price bracket. So people like Eric and Mike and other people throughout the city that I now know that were charging a, a, a little bit more than I am. Um, so what you do is you give those people really great experiences as seconds and you show them that you're, you're really worth um, mm -hmm. what you're asking and uh, show them that you're really capable of lead shooting a wedding. And then what you do is that however y'all talk about pricing or if they ask you how much you charge, whatever it may be, just price yourself a little bit lower than those people, like low enough that they're not willing to take on that wedding themselves. And nine times out of 10, they will refer you because they know that you are a quality shooter in that person's price bracket and they'll refer you that way. And I've gotten several weddings through that. Yup. I love, that's why I love having your guys' perspective too. You're just in a different spot than I'm at currently um steven any insight in that as well no I, I honestly think braxton covered that pretty well that was great yep. yeah great um so we have some other ones i think we skipped over a few going to that one we had jimmy's as well uh what advice would you have for someone wanting to break out of corporate and start full-time photography my general advice is Try to balance a part-time or a full-time job while building the business unless you have enough money saved up in, in uh, savings um, as a padding launching into your business. Because a lot of times when you're starting a small business like wedding photography or portrait photography, you need to cover a lot of overhead in the beginning. You need to be buying a lot of gear, multiple cameras, a set of lenses and strobes and lights and all these memory cards, computer, hard drives, all sorts of stuff where a lot of people in their first one to two years are just dumping a lot of money right back into the business. Now, if you feel confident enough to go into debt to be able to do that, knowing you will be profitable later, that's something plenty of companies do all over all the time. Um, you just have to, excuse me, you just have to have enough foresight and enough understanding that you will be profitable to do that move. I think it's really hard as a small entity to do that without a business plan that is crazy scalable, um, where it's just one person and you're reliant on your skill to do that thing. 
That's why I recommend having a good amount of savings or a part-time job or a full-time job and really grinding it out the first one to two years to build that business up until you feel comfortable enough that you know you're going to be able to make it work full-time. I hear a lot of people feeling like they need to jump ship and go full-time, but they're so scared because they only shoot five weddings a year. And I look at that and I'm like, that is, it's going to be really, really hard for you to maintain that if you're the only income in your household and you're reliant on that um, job for living expenses. Um, that's a really tough spot to be in at that point. And I also think it's important to note that I think for the vast majority of people looking to go full time, it's it's never going to feel like the right moment. Mm -hmm. Like very few people actually have a moment in their career where they're like, this is the perfect time to go full time. and. I'm in the perfect position to go full time. Yep. Many, many people, including myself, was in a decent enough position to go full time and was still very nervous and did not think it was going to happen. So I think a lot of people wait too long to go full time because they're waiting for this perfect moment when there is no perfect moment, especially for people like me who really just need to force themselves to do it. And once you force yourself to do it, you'll find a way. Mm -hmm. Like if you want it bad enough, you will figure it out. Um, Hugo says, if someone works in a production company already is learning to film commercials and filming for brands, but wants to branch out on their own, at what point can someone branch out? That is a conversation I think you should have with your existing employer, um, in that, um, in that production company, making sure that they feel respected in the decisions, uh, you're making, but at the same time, they're respecting you and your ability to, do things on your own. That's a really nuanced conversation because if they aren't letting you use any of the stuff that you shoot for them, it might be really hard to build a portfolio to prove to other people that you can do it on your own. And that might require you working weekends and nights to build a portfolio on, on, uh, on your own and proving that you have that skill set, but you have, uh, you have the portfolio that is your own, that isn't through that company. And, Basically, just taking what you can get on the side and um, building your own brand outside of that and getting, again, similar to the, what I just said, with building your own brand uh, you know, while you're, you have that full-time or part-time job until it's at a point of profitability where you feel comfortable leaving. Um, but that's where that piece of diversification really helps too. And what I talked about in the whole slide deck is if you have multiple skills, then you could pad going full time with editing for other people or shooting on the weekends at weddings or doing a multitude of different things to increase that income. So you can keep building that portfolio and getting your own production company, your own commercial work to a place of profitability that's comfortable for you. Uh, Justin Babcock says, any unique thoughts or things that you've done to become a preferred vendor at a staple, at staple venues around your area? Yeah. So, uh, I became a preferred venue at, or vendor at one venue out in the suburbs. And I, I had to have shot like 10 weddings at this one venue. They would just always put my name in the pot for referrals. And I think ultimately it was because I really connected with, um, the manager that was there when I, uh, when I worked weddings there and I went to a wedding show there and just my face was there. I was just there all the time. Um, and so I showed up, I made sure to be friendly with people. And then something that's really poignant is deliver the gallery before they even ask, like deliver it to the actual venue and say, Hey, I was thinking about you. I think this wedding was really beautiful. And I got some really amazing photographs of your venue and the details of it as well. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you can use it for your own company and for your own marketing. It's a really easy way for people to be like, I want to work with this person more. If they're going to get these bomb photos of our venue and make it look this awesome, then yeah, we want to scratch their back as well. So just being incredibly friendly and giving a ton of value, like I said at the beginning, um, to people when they're not expecting it. Exactly colors I have trouble with, reds and greens. Much love. Oh, that's awesome, Alex. Definitely check out Chris Chu. Um, assuming everything goes to plan at a wedding. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, with the, the solo shooter stuff. Yep. Um, okay. Can we do some rapid fire questions so that we can start getting into, uh, mentoring the live mentoring? Okay. Let's see. Oh, I went way too far back. You want me to read them off? Yeah, I got, I'm getting lost. All right. Here we go. Eric, you ready? Yeah. Okay. 
Philippe, I have been struggling to prospect more clients. I have Excel. I have excelled my client experience and it's been helping a lot. Can you guys advise more things to do besides client referral and Facebook ads? That's the one that I did answer previously, just to note. Excellent. Oh, okay. okay. Gotcha. I, Moving I, on I, I, that I went one. a little too far ahead, my bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin Babcock, also another question, my friend. I'd love to know if being a preferred vendor is even worth it. Do you find more success from referrals and content creation? He put the same question in plus. Excellent. Wait, I don't think I answered that one though, briefly. Um, it's, I find more success in referrals and content creation. Um, I don't always want to shoot at the same venue that, that is kind of counterintuitive to my philosophy, honestly, but like shooting at the same place, half of my weddings a year is recipe for disaster for me creatively. Um, so, and that's just a personal thing for me. Uh, plus like that specific venue that I was the, the preferred vendor for was in a, like a far out suburb of Chicago. And I started scaling out of that price range of typical clients that went to that venue. So I found new ways to market myself. Awesome. Jared asks, what do you think about utilizing platforms like wedding wire and the knot? Are those a good investment or not? I'll jump yeah, in here. You can go ahead. Eric hates those things. Well, because a lot of people think that they're scams. So, yeah, so like, here, 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 <laughs> talk about it. because me and my wife, uh, our wedding business is now Michael and Kristen. We found a lot of success using those. We paid for one of the premium things through one of the first things. But you have to play the game. You have to change stuff out. You have to change your copy. You have to change your photos constantly to try and see what works, see what lands, right? And then once it's landing, go with it, stick with it. It worked well when we were sub 5K in uh, pricing. When you're in that 3,500 to 4,500 range or below, those things are amazing and booked us a ton and a ton of work. Once we put 5K plus as the option, crickets. So we dropped that and so we're no longer on it. But if you're in the right price point and you are willing to play the game called the knot, the wedding wire, whatever that is, to see what works with your copy, it could be really great. But it's not for most people because they're not willing or they don't know how to play that game. Yeah. And if, I mean, if you are just signing up for a subscription and just wanting referrals to start rolling in, it won't. it's not going to happen. No. no, you have to work for it. Awesome. Moving on. Wild Horse Productions. You guys look like an absolutely scruffy crew. <laughs> I think that's the best time and fun for the business before it gets too mature and everyone gets jaded. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Especially because your Hawaiian shirt. Bro, everyone loved this shirt on the Thursday live stream. I thought I'd bring it back for this one. It was beautiful. Seems like a party. And I feel like a good follow-up question is one of the next ones. What's everybody drinking? All right, Eric, sound off. Uh, Virtue Cider, Solar Hop. S cider. I finished my Virtue Cider. I'm a cider guy. Cider. Cider. All right, from uh, right to left or left to right, however this is looking in the live stream, Steven, I've got go. some Sazerac Rye Whiskey. Neat. Mm. Uh, whiskey and Coke. Yeah, yeah. Same as Braxton. <laughs> Braxton. Braxton. <laughs> Braxton. Mixologist over here. Next up. How do you deal with all the cell phone when shooting weddings? Love this question because so many people um, really just want to get angry at people who are using cell phones. I love it as a creative limitation and something you need to work around or engage with. So if someone is getting in your way for a cell phone, move your body and get the shot you need to to avoid and don't be afraid to tap them on the shoulder say hey excuse me like I'm, I'm shooting here like you can do that you are the professional you are hired there to be that person to ask them to move um but photograph them shooting on their phone like that's actually interesting think about what this what that could mean 40 years from now think of some of the photographs we see from the 50s and the 60s of people doing things back then and the cars they're sitting in front of and I think of Vivian Meyer with her self portraits with her double roll of flex looking through um, the glass. Well, all the hipsters do it now, but she did it first and seeing like seeing everybody do things differently in Will that time. Do you think the same way about us taking selfies in the bathroom here on our cell phones? Yeah, I don't That's think so. No, I think that we will as Vivian Meyer. It's interesting. Oh, it's yeah. Historical. Yeah. That's I, fascinating. I think like we see, we are jaded about things with technology now, but I think maybe 50 years from now, we might look at it with nostalgia. I agree. We don't know that. And so it's, it's really unique to actually engage with those things and to not just scoff at them and be frustrated by them. But think of how you can interact with people doing things like that, becoming the photojournalist in the moment of capturing that stuff happening. Quick plus one to that. I love when people use cell phones at weddings mm -hmm. because it means that they are trying to get a photo and yeah. document the day in their own way. And yep. usually a phone is the most accessible way that people can do that. And it's really, that really beautiful. I always take a photo of people either taking a photo of 
you know, the couple at the altar, or maybe they're taking a selfie with the couple uh -huh. later at the reception. I always try to get photos of that because I think it's really sweet. Yeah. And I think engaging with it, like Eric said, is a really good way to interact with that. Mm -hmm. Um, continuing on, Joshua asks, once you picked your videography niche, are there different types of diversifications that you would recommend for the different types of niches? If so, what is best for wedding videographers? I think it's really easy to get into commercial work by bringing a ton of value to local businesses. If there are local businesses around you that need content for their Instagram or their website, it's a really easy start off point to just point blank go to those places or dm them and say hey i would love to just make a little commercial for you and get your feet started in doing that so that you can start building that portfolio and that network of commercial work and proving that you're capable of that stuff you already have all the visual and audio skills you need to be able to make stuff like that or partnering with a content creator or whatever who's making content as well is another easy way to jump into that love it jai asks what is the best way to receive payment paypal cash etc um, best ways to receive payment. I use my CRM is through HoneyBook. And so we uh, can do credit card payments through there. We can do um, direct wires through there. We can do uh, Chase Quick Pay is a really popular one to do. Sometimes that needs to be paid over Which is multiple days. Zelle. 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 Yep. Yeah. So like even if people don't have Chase, they can still use Zelle through Quick Pay. That one has zero fees. Oh. We actually, um, and in the state of Illinois, it is legal to do this. Some states, it's not legal to do this. Um, you, we charge a 3% fee if people are using their credit card because we get a 3% fee on our end through HoneyBook. And so if people want to use their credit card, we'll tack on 3% to their total. Um, but then you can also do PayPal. And I recommend doing uh, paying through family and friends because the way I see it is it, you're doing it in the same way as, um, as QuickPay. QuickPay has no fee. PayPal has an option as well. If you do it as a business transaction, they're going to take the 3% fee as well. You could add that as well, just like the credit card stuff. But um, I, those are the options I do. I either go uh, directly through HoneyBook Chase QuickPay, PayPal, and then sometimes I'll do Venmo, but for multi-thousand dollar transactions, not the rest. Just greatest. to clarify on QuickPay, also that is built off of Zelle, which Chase just calls it QuickPay. Zelle mm -hmm. is universal across all banks, so your bank supports that as well. Yeah, and it's I think universally everybody thinks Zelle and QuickPay is the best way to go for retainers and final payments. Luke Garman, what's up? Luke Garman just signed up for the classroom. Hey! We need. Can you go get the me me me? Is it on the table? In the yeah. in the button. I don't know where it is. I think it's out on the main table out there. Also, um, when, when are we going to talk about what we're giving away for people who purchased the... Oh, thank you. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> Braxton, just overachiever over there. Uh, anybody who has bought the classroom this past week, so starting last Monday, all the way through midnight tonight, anybody who is enrolled in the classroom is entered into our final giveaway, which is a full refund of all payments made, so whether you paid your first month or paid in full, you get the classroom entirely for free, one person, if you win this competition. Um, and even if you just, like Luke did, bought only the photo course here, you will get access to both the photo and the video course if you win that giveaway. So out of all of the people that have entered so far this week and through the end of tonight, you will all be entered into that last competition. We will pick one winner and announce that in the Facebook group, in the classroom Facebook group. Um, and yeah, so if that's any more incentive, if you're on the fence, please jump in. And uh, yeah, we're going to do this every single, we've had three so far. Three. <laughs> okay. That is what a scruffy crew would do. Right Let's, go! Let's go! Let's go! Also, for anyone who purchases the course, I actually offered this last time we did this. Oh my uh, Brax. It never ended up working out, but this time we're going to make it work. If you purchase the classroom during this live stream at any point, one of you will second shoot a wedding with me, either this year or next year. If you're a photo person, we'll find you a photo wedding. If you're a video person, we'll find you a video wedding. So anybody that is in the live stream tonight, that's your yes. offer? Anybody that enrolls in the live stream tonight? No, like into the classroom. Oh, but like, just tonight or the whole past week? During the time of this live stream. This live stream. Okay. So these are the three people that potentially will second yes, shoot a wedding so with Braxton so, so far. So far. Okay. You're legally required you to shoot for Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Know. Are you, Wait, like, you, are you, are you looking for a second yeah. shoot? Yeah, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Excellent. That's amazing. Uh, fun, but you will have, you will have the ability to come to, 
to Chicago to Creative Club and potentially see us and interact and all that yes. fun stuff. We'll make it fun. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Amazing. Uh, Davi asks, any advice in regards to stepping up in social media? I have tried to step up many times in here, but I really struggle. I have uh, quit for a few months and feel stupid <laughs> posting uh, on social media again. Yeah. So social, in my opinion, is all about the intentionality of it. If you're just posting for the sake of posting and there's no intention behind it, whether that be because you just want to share something with the world, if it is a business move or it, if it's because you're trying to connect with other people, again, I'm going to go back to that same thing I said in the slide deck is that you need to lead with some sort of value. What kind of value are you putting out onto these platforms? With, with me starting out YouTube, that's all it was. It was just putting out videos that brought value to other photographers and filmmakers. Now, if you are just in the wedding world and you're posting wedding content to try to book wedding clients, what could you be doing? Maybe it's an Instagram reel. Maybe it's pointing to a blog post or you're doing a carousel on Instagram that helps wedding couples or helps other people in the industry or creates inspiration for people in the wedding world to feel inspired for their own wedding or anything like that or telling beautiful stories that you are able to capture to really appeal to that market that you're trying to appeal to. All of those things are done with intentionality and are done in a way that I think is sustainable because no matter what the response is, you are still doing what you love to do and you are explaining who you are as a business person. I think subsequently with that, with consistency and committing to it, not having super big expectations will lead to work and will lead to connections with people. And honestly, like engaging with direct messages and asking questions on your story and like finding ways to have conversations and connections with people. Mm -hmm. It's not just getting clientele on places like Instagram. It's also connecting with people in the same community as you. Love it. Uh, Christopher Messer, who bought the classroom tonight. Yes, Chris. Again, oh, Chris. Let's go. Um, hey, he asks, any major keys that make posing easier for you? Do you develop a workflow for that? So posing, I try to keep, I'm an introvert, so I don't like really, I don't like posing people a lot. And this is going to be coming out in the video that we made with uh, Josh and Tina the other night. I really like to, I really like to get the vibes from them. Like, what are they giving me? Are they energetic? If they're energetic, I might have them do some prompts. If they're more introverted and kind of into each other, I might have them be more into each other. So really feeling that out and playing on their strengths or it's not necessarily strengths, it's like their introvertedness or extrovertedness. And no matter what, I always bring a Bluetooth speaker to play some music to liven them up and get them more loose and feeling like they can be comfortable in themselves. And subsequently with that, like what happened with Josh and Tina the other night, I asked what music do you want to listen to? Josh was like, I don't know, Tina, what do you want us to do? And she just thought about it. She just went Paramore. And so we played Paramore. And of course they like, and then they like started flossing and like doing being goofballs and stuff. And it like, I think you would say you guys are, are you introverted? Oh, we are. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> definitely <laughs> introverted. So like, I never would just expect an introvert to just start dancing at a photo shoot. And I wouldn't be like, please dance for me now. Like that would just be incredibly awkward. But if you facilitate an environment that gets them comfortable, all of a sudden you have an introvert dancing and it becomes super enjoyable. So really focusing not, not so much on like what poses can I get, but what experience can I bring to them to let them just have a fun night so that then the posing just becomes natural. Also, kiss. Oh, sorry. Kiss. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Yes. It doesn't have to be ah. it doesn't have to be super intricate like the hand goes here no, and the it, legs go it, here. It just starts getting weird. Though. So often for me, I'm just like face each other and I'll say goofy things like pelvises need to be closer. Like th things like that just make people giggle and it's like or I'll say like do the slow motion kiss. Go in for a kiss as slow as you can, and I'm capturing the kiss as it happens in super slow. I'll say, all right, super slow-mo kiss, go. All right, slow away, and they'll, they'll go really slow in and out for a kiss, and all the in-between moments there are super awesome. Uh, wonderful. Uh, Natalia did mention that she's not totally sure if her mics are working, so if people could just do a little thumbs up in the chat, just okay. make sure all of our mics are totally working. That would be amazing. Uh, continuing on, Matea says, you're amazing, Eric. I think we all agree with that. Uh, <laughs> Daniel asks, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made? Oh, man. One of the biggest mistakes was early on was holding the rings in my open hand <laughs> as I walked through the field outside the oh, church where this yeah. couple was getting married. And I um, 
I thought like, this is probably a dumb way to hold these rings, like the, the engagement ring and both wedding bands. And as I had that thought, uh, her wedding band fell out of my hand into the grass and I was like, Oh no. <laughs> and so I quickly put both of the other rings on my fingers and held them tightly and then tried digging through the grass and, uh, did not find them for a solid five to 10 minutes. And then I had to, um, <laughs> I had to, uh, elicit the help of some ladies in the church and I was sweating profusely. And funny enough, if you watch my recent video, uh, my net worth at the age of 30, the video we made on Maui, I ran into that couple on Maui on a hiking trail and we recalled that happening oh, that was at that their couple. wedding. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh my god! It gosh. was so awful. I was like, did you know that happened? And she was like, oh, we totally knew. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. She's like, you walked back into the room and everyone was like, what's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine Eric just being like ghost white. And pouring sweat i was so uncomfortable i was just like <sighs> and this was early like this is maybe this is the second year i was like photographing my college friends weddings and i was still pretty new to the game and just felt so so horrible so <laughs> that was, that's one of the worst mistakes i've made um I also didn't check one time. It was a Wisconsin wedding. I live in Chicago. They, I don't know what it was, but I think I just assumed that they lived in a certain part of Wisconsin. And the morning of the wedding, I typed in the address into my phone and I thought it was an hour drive. And when I typed it in my phone, it was a three hour drive. And Oof. it was one of those where I was like, we have to leave right now. Like we had an, at least enough time in the morning at that point to this is what my wife was filming with me we had enough time to at least have a two-hour buffer or well, at that point we had two and a half hours till start time so i definitely broke a few laws and sped a little bit to get to that wedding and i was like 10 minutes late but check your locations and be obsessive about dates and places do not be lax about that stuff did something happen to our mics because a lot of people are so yeah. your mic is quiet. Everybody else seems to be working. So maybe you take yours off the stand and just like share it. Well, yeah. let's just check. Is this one working okay? Because I'm listening here. Maybe get their faces on it so they can see who's who. Brax is in yeah. the middle. Wait, I want to know. Wait, I want to know uh, from Chris Messer. Who's the talk hipster guy that you're talking about? I think she went oh, tall. Yeah. I assume that's that tall. Tall. Guy tall. In the corner? <laughs> yeah. Assuming that means tall. Okay, I'm going to assume that's, that's me. Steven. Obviously talking about me. <laughs> no, definitely not. Okay, wait, Josh, go ahead and talk for me. Yes, hello. Can okay, you hear me? Okay. talk to me really close to the mic. Yes, hello. Yeah, I think yours isn't working well, but hey, everyone, Steven welcome back to the live stream. And me, hello, and then, hello. Uh, this is my microphone. Great, and we're gonna keep going with Eric. <laughs> Obviously, the cool dude on the left. Hey, we have somebody else who enrolled in the classroom. We have Alex Van Campenhoek. Let me know if I said that right. Alex Van Kamenhout, thank you so much. Enrolled in the photo course. You're a legend. Thank you so much for uh, enrolling in the classroom. Uh, make sure you sign up for the Facebook group. We have so much stuff in there. Community, referrals, all that stuff is one of the first things I ask you to do on the first module. So make sure to do that. And thank you for investing in yourself. It's, it's mind blowing to see people sign up during these live streams. It's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. And Alex actually asked a question that oh. we answered while we were in the chat. Already. Let's go, so Alex. Are you, are you took care of it. It's amazing. Oh. It's purchased since then. It's the best. Alex, thank you so much. We appreciate you, man. And you nailed the pronunciation. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. And we also don't know because Alex could be a, a guy or a girl. I just commented, nailed the pronunciation. Bravo. High five. He kind mm. of on top. Well, we okay, don't know. Eric, you said moments ago that we were going to do this rapid fire. So now we're going to do it double rapid fire. Oh my gosh. Go okay. Into the mentorships. Michael Where's Hancock's it? here. Hi, Michael. Hi, uh, Jonathan D'Souza. Eric, love your content. I live in a small island called Aruba. How Aruba. would you uh, strategize getting into weddings on a small island? I've been there. Okay. Um, I'm not a professional on small island photography, yeah. <laughs> um, but my, my estimation would be to get connected to whatever market is already there and get to be very good friends with whatever planners or photographers or filmmakers are already there. Lead with value and do a lot of shoots in popular places. Yes. Build your portfolio with that. Our dear friend, Chad Meeks, best advice for someone moving to a new city and starting fresh in a new market with photography. He is doing that in September. Oh, in Chicago, Chad Meeks? In Chicago, Chad. Oh, in Chicago, Chad Meeks. Best and you want to co-work with us, Chad Meeks? Chad Meeks? 
you want to co-work with us? Chad Meeks. Chad Meeks. Yes, Chad Meeks. Um, yeah, Chad's been here at the studio before. We're so pumped for you to come to Chicago. And I think I think he just wanted to ask that question because he wanted us to be like, yeah, come work with us, Chad. We love you, Chad. Um, because, uh, yeah, Chad has showed interest in, like, potentially co-working with us and being around and potentially second shooting with us. And he's somebody who has led with value and wanted to get connected with us and DMing Steven, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And meeting with oh, you for coffee. Good friends now. Yeah. yeah. He was listening to a rally catch for a long time. And then we just met up for coffee in November and now he's moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. And strategic, honestly, Chad, because I don't always meet with people for coffee, but where are you at? Like, cause in my, when I was in, 2017 i remember i got coffee with gene and gene is one of our studio mates no now. Way. and he was asking me all about wedding photography and i was in the season where i was like i just want to share it with everyone and i'm so stoked to, to and now it's too overwhelming for me to, to get coffee so is your, is your answer to go get coffee with local photographers that are influencers yeah that aren't or that are. are uh well i mean like What's your and answer to the question? My What's answer the is moving to a new city. Go. Okay. Well, okay. Yes. We'll reach out to people to see if they're willing to connect, yep. but it's not necessarily just like if, if you're, if you're established mm. or if you're reaching out to someone who's established, just asking them to go to coffee is not an appealing thing for them. It just isn't. I'm just going to be honest. Like there are a lot of people who just ask me like, can I get coffee with you and pick your brain? And I was like, well, I do mentorships and that actually costs money. So that's not fair to the other people who pay money to pick my brain. Um, but if you're finding ways to connect with people who aren't doing mentorships at the moment, or you can connect in different ways, Steven, you're 26. Yeah. Yes. And I around am. that time I was meeting with other people like that and coffee. And I can guarantee you in two to three years, you're probably not going to be doing as much of that anymore. That only depends on if I am better at saying no. <laughs> yes, that's it, it true. Depends. Also, not many people reach out, so I was very flattered to chat to me. It was awesome. Yeah, and now he's a very good friend. Yeah. I so him. I mean, like in in finding ways to do that, and just like, yeah. And Josh did the same thing through email. Um, just I don't know a month ago at this point, in leading with value and being very intentional with that, commenting on a YouTube video, DMing on Instagram, and then finally emailing with a portfolio, not just being like, I'd like to second shoot for you sometime and be like, no, I'd like to edit for you and here's my work, right? Yeah, like, first of all, I didn't, I didn't expect <laughs> response back. <laughs> I just like haphazardly uh, heard him on, on YouTube one day. But yeah, like my, my thought process on, on being able to reach out in the first place was, you know, there's got there's going to be a lot of people reaching out to different people about cer certain things like this. It's like, it's not so much of what you get out of it, it's how much you can give someone for them to benefit from. So that's what I was going through my head when, um, you know, reaching out to Eric. Also, I didn't realize Alex, who just purchased, I totally know who you are. I just didn't recognize last name and profile photo, but I know we've been talking recently. And thank you so much for enrolling in the classroom. And I'm really excited for you. Uh, let's do two more questions and then yep. we're going to start taking calls. Uh, we're basically, sick. we're just about caught up at this point. We had sick. some more comments about, uh, mics and how they are working. It sounds like Josh is working well. Braxton's is not working very well. I'm working. Okay. Okay. We're figuring it out. Um, let's see. Uh, I struggle to connect with other photographers in town because I've heard them talk poorly about each other. How can you trust other fellow photographers? Go ahead, Braxton. So I... I feel you on that. When I was photographing Mississippi, the um, when we say community over competition, that is 99% of the time always the answer. But I do feel you when you're in a place where community over competition just is not feasible at all, especially mm -hmm. when you are dealing with some fairly toxic people who will talk bad about other photographers and such. Um, I was in that exact position when I was photographing Mississippi. And the only way that I really found success was you, you kind of have to, you kind of have to hang out with everyone, see how everyone is. And then from there, you can kind of decide who you want to associate yourself with and who you want to be friends with. Um, because I'm willing to bet that even though there might be the vast majority, not great people, but there will be good people around you somewhere. And those are the people that you really want to connect with. And from there, I'm a firm believer that even if community over competition doesn't work, being a good person over a bad person always wins 100% of the time. Work hard and be nice to people. Yes. That's it. Yes. At the end of the day, work hard, be nice to people. Yep. And with that, 
Let's open up some live. There's mentors. one more question I want to say about. Just kidding. A question. A practical <laughs> there's one question. There's one more question about the classroom in here. Would we ever consider selling the classroom by module? We have thought about it. At this point, we don't know when the classroom is going to open up again. If it's going to be next year or 2024 or how it's going to open up again. Um, I think we're all, we have all confidently agreed. Like we were planning on charging more this time. Um, but we ended up not doing that. Um, because we added six modules, basically we added four BTSs, two BTSs on the photo side, two BTSs on the video side, new editing modules, um, and two other modules on top of that. Uh, so, which were the updated gear modules because we recently got the R5 and the C70 and all that stuff. So because of that, it's probably going to be segmented in a different way, but the full courses are going to be more expensive later on. And we just don't know when that's going to open up again based on team availability, rolling out marketing and all that stuff. Like, honestly, these drops are just so much work all consuming yeah like the past week is just i mean you saw how much youtube content we were cranking out and like it was all hands on deck all of us and especially last drop too it's just like it's incredibly stressful so yeah that's my long-winded answer um my my answer to that is just, i just can't guarantee when and how it's going to happen in the future what i can guarantee is the pricing that it is now and the financing with no interest right now um, to get into the pricing as it is. And it definitely won't be available for the rest of the year. Yeah. Great. Do you want to meet oh, yeah. some people? Let's, yes. Let's okay. How are we going to do this? I am going to drop and pin the link in the comments. Ooh. It is now posted. <laughs> oh, boy. Excited noises. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see how good our internet at the studio really is. Okay. Oh, I have to put on my, head, wait, I have to put on my headphones now, right? What's happening? Yeah. Okay. They don't even know. All right. So happening. what's happening now? And this is why it's in the title. This is now live mentoring. This is why I'm putting on my headphones now. That link that I just dropped in the chat. It says https colon backslash backslash streamyard.com cputyb6 at e7d. That link is going to be the link where you can click and get into the live stream. You could tell me about your business and I will give you a little bit of advice. Expectations, I plan on spending a maximum maximum of 10 to 12 minutes per person, maybe 15 if we're really into it. I just wanna be respectful to anybody that, or everybody that wants to join in. So please, if you're feeling the inclination to do it, please jump in. We would love to talk to you. If you are especially feeling like you're still on the fence about the classroom and you need clarification on if it's a right decision for you or not, or you want nothing to do with my course and you just want business advice, or you just want to say hi, like any of those things, totally cool. We just want to talk with you guys. This is something brand new. We've like, that's we learned that's today. I just want to say this is literally brand new. We've never done this. And, but I, Hey, I see, I see Felipe in there. Oh, okay. So should we, I don't know. Do you think I can hear? I don't know if I can. I think you'll be able to. This is, I think you'll be able to. Is there any way we can test it first? Nope. Okay. Well, we're just going to. This is live. We're just going to. We're doing it live. Okay. Oh, wow. Here we are. You are live, my man. Welcome. Hey, guys. Hey. Philippe, I can hear I hear you. Hey. You need your volume up? This is so Oh, my gosh. It's so cool to talk to you guys. Oh, likewise, man. It's delayed. I can't look at the screen, but I'll listen to you. That's fine. You can hear me well? I can hear you great. Oh, that's great. First of all, thank you so much for all the things that we've been doing for the community. Yeah, uh, of course. I'm from Brazil, and most of the photography stuff that I've been learning is actually from you. Oh, so it, it's, been, it's been great. And, you know, so many inspirations from editing, from, like, prospecting clients, the, you know, the, the, uh, the service they offer to clients, like, all of those things – I've been getting from you and also from Steve as well. So Epic. I just want to say I appreciate it. I like the appreciate that I have for you guys. Oh man. Thank you so much for saying that. It, it's like, yeah. yeah, that feels like that is, that's really what I've come to realize is my expertise. It, it, like I know enough about technical things to teach those things, 
But I think really what it comes down to differentiating in my education is all about the heart stuff and like yeah. the things that people don't always discuss about talking about your why and your purpose and my philosophy. So to hear you echo that is super encouraging to me. So That's thank cool. you. And I love that you have a ukulele on the wall. Is that a ukulele? It's like, yeah, I have a ukulele. I also have a, a guitar. Uh, it's going to be hard to show you guys, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I have one quick question for you guys. Yes, uh, I was the guy that I was the guy that asked about the uh, struggle with prospecting clients and mm -hmm. all of those things. And mm -hmm. uh, Rex, and thank you so much for this for their answer that you have that you gave. Was like, I definitely gonna reach out. I recently awesome. moved from Washington D.C. to Orlando, so okay. I'm based in Florida now, and it seems like the the industry here is a little bit different from the other mm -hmm. parts of the, the the country i guess mm -hmm. uh but my company i've been working i i'm located in orlando but i don't work in orlando i actually go to colorado california seattle like a lot of people actually like my work outside of florida so in the moment right now i don't have any weddings going on in florida mm. so all the weddings that i have it's actually outside of florida mm -hmm. which is epic when they booked was like amazing this is the second year that i'm doing this I'm not a full-time photographer. I'm also an mm -hmm. architect. So mm -hmm. it's been hard to, you know, balance this. And the moment that I have right now, it's kind of like, I'm not, I don't want to say burning out, but it's been hard to conciliate, you know, a full-time job with uh, being a full-time photographer and videographer. Totally. And I, want to, I, I want to know from you guys, if you guys ever happen to, you know, be on this moment in your life, mm -hmm. kind of don't know exactly what to do like i'm actually now asking to outsource the editing process too so i want to learn a little bit more of you guys if you guys have had ever experienced that moment in your life yeah that's so congrats first of all being an architect and then being flown all over the country is awesome <laughs> um <laughs> but i totally hear you and feeling overwhelmed with that stuff uh, because for me in 2015 to 2016, it was similar. It wasn't exactly the same, but I was a classroom teacher and I was working full time as a teacher. And then I was shooting like, I think that year I shot 25 weddings. Um, but the reason I did that was because we had our first kid and I wanted to make sure that I still had medical benefits and a padded salary yes. as I continued to build into full time work. But for me, like looking back at it retrospectively, I contemplated doing that that year. And if that was a good decision or not, ultimately, I think it was the right decision, but it was like the most stressful year of my life um, in, its, in its own way. I've had a lot of stress since then in doing business for sure, different stressful years. But I mean, on like the May and September, I was shooting double header wedding weekends and then going and teaching Monday through Friday. And it was just chaos. But in that chaos, in that one really, really difficult season, I was able to build financial padding that then set us up for success when I went full time so that I didn't feel like when I jumped full time that I was just living paycheck to paycheck and needed every single wedding I booked. Um, but I continued the mentality of booking whatever I could. Now, my recommendation for you and your circumstance is if you get any opportunities in the coming months and in the coming year to shoot within Orlando, yeah. I would take every opportunity you can to shoot there to build your Orlando and Florida portfolio. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's negotiating prices. That's shooting at prices that are lower than your destination prices, yeah. even without travel. So that you can get all that stuff booked and you can prove that you are a local photographer there. Um, in the midst of that as well, I would, even if you don't second shoot at all, um, I would start trying to second shoot for other local Orlando mm -hmm. photographers and getting connected to them so that you can start getting on their short list of referral um, referrals for any dates that they can't book. Awesome. Um, that would be my initial uh, advice. And then, just based on it's like i don't know what your specific financial situation is but like if you are sitting on some savings and you feel enough comfort to do that within the next six months or 12 months to jump to that full time i would say that you might have to also experience that short window of feeling really uncomfortable so that you can feel uncomfortable once you decide to leave the architecture i had tried that last year uh, mm. 
I spent five months uh, actually being a full time. It was great for my mind to only be focusing on one thing, but financially, I just like it it feels, I feel I just feel better, like more comfortable to be, have two incomes, and yeah. also like another company reached out to me, so like it made sense back that time. But every single time, I just realized that actually it's it's getting the moment that I'm gonna just go full time for to be a photographer and videographer soon. Mm -hmm. And how much video are you shooting? Is it mostly photo now? Uh, mostly photo right now. Um, so far, I have uh, 35 weddings this year, and five you of say them. 35? Yes. Oh, whew. yeah. You're really good to go right now. <laughs> yeah, and five What's your of price them point is actually there? wedding. Well, uh, right now it's like thirty five hundred for six hours. Okay, that's that's what it's been right now, and for a video, pretty much the same. Uh, but when I go to Colorado, I actually I go with this price, but I don't I don't charge for travel expenses. I don't like to bother the client to like, oh, you actually have to book my flight same. tickets and hotel stuff like that. So yeah, just I, I just like yeah, everything is included. So you know, if I, if I cut like if a client from Florida hires me they're gonna pay the same thing but it's mm -hmm. gonna be better for me financially yep so that's that's what is going on right now are these are 35 of your own bookings or are you working for another company no it's actually from for my own booking uh colorado ones i have one um elopement company that i know the owner so for all like the six plus hours wedding in colorado he just assigned it to me so he usually sends like you have a wedding saturday but i'm gonna try to fill you with like short elopements throughout the week. So you can just pay like one flight ticket to come here, stay a little bit, and then we can get more photos and portfolio. And I just love Colorado. So it's just yeah. nice to be there. Yeah. So if you're fine with traveling, I would say continue doing that. But if you're, if you're shooting at that volume, yeah. I would highly recommend start raising your prices. What's up? Do you need some? No, I'll say it. Like, oh, um, so I, I would highly recommend considering starting to raise the prices, um, but doing your best to make sure you can shoot as much locally as you can so you can start getting the yeah. stuff near you. I appreciate um, Eric. Yeah, because 35 weddings, I was like, that's a lot. That's, I mean, yeah. that was like the max of what I ever shot full time. And balancing that, max, yeah. yeah. Like balancing that with another job, just like that sounds like a lot of stress. I'm sure you're <laughs> de dealing with a lot of editing and yeah. um, that's why I have the, the ukulele here. So yes. I can play and just relax. <laughs> the natural deterrent to that is going to be raising your prices because the demand is there. Like it is, but you need yeah. that demand to be local now. So do what you can to get it local and see yeah. how you can start raising those prices locally. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you so much, Eric. Of course. Thanks for jumping on. It was Felipe, right? Yes, Felipe. So nice to talk to you, man. Thanks yes, for calling nice in. Nice to talk to you. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. See ya. Okay, this is the coolest thing ever. All right. Everybody, make sure your video is on if you are in here, and feel free to jump in on that link that is pinned at the top. Yo, also, Felipe, Jared just said, welcome to Florida. Over in Tampa, there's, a, there's quite a few of us here. Please reach out to Jared. I think Jared's handle is just Jared Gacharan. Instagram, right, Jared? Uh, yep. Jared's just Jared Gotcher. All so right. His name is spelled on Instagram. Go reach out to him, Felipe. You ready for the next one? Let's go. All right. We got John Thompson. This is so cool. John Thompson. John, yes. What's up? Whoa. How you doing? Good. I'm, I'm honestly just, I just barely got on here. So epic. Well, yeah, we just started doing the live calls. Where are you calling in from? St. George, Utah. Epic. What like part of Utah is that? Vegas. Okay. And wait, what was your name again? I'm sorry. I totally blinked on it. John Thompson. John, John Thompson. Epic. Okay. So, Utah. What is up? So it's kind of on topic, off topic. Really. I just wanted to ask like, well, let me fill you in. So I had an Instagram that I almost had like mm -hmm. a thousand Instagram followers on. Got mm -hmm. hacked or something. Gone. Gone. Yes. So Instagram said, ha, good, good job. What'd you do? Bye. <laughs> Restarted. Also moving to Atlanta in a few months. Okay. Trying to, oh. trying from Utah, trying to build my future clientele. I'm just starting, but it's not very easy. 
So, and you're moving to Georgia, you said? Yes, like right outside of Atlanta. Are you wanting to travel back and forth for a while or no? Mm, I don't have to. Uh, do you want to answer some of this, Stephen? Because Stephen... jump in for a little bit, yeah. Uh, can, can you hear Stephen, first of all? Yes. Hello, hello. Okay, so Stephen moved from Boston to Chicago oh, okay. very recently, just mm-hmm. a year ago. Kind of explain your process and how it's been sustainable for you and what's been difficult. Yeah, so... Oh, that's hard. Turn the camera. There we Turn go. The camera. Hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna sip it over here. Thank you. Yeah. So as far as the uh, the actual travel process was concerned, there was um, I guess I was in a slightly different position because I still had a full season of weddings booked in Boston, and I moved halfway through that season last August. So I was back and forth a ton, which was a kind of unfortunate reality just with the amount of time that I was spending on planes and traveling and back and forth and also kind of just money lost because I wasn't going to personally decide to move and then also go back to half of my wedding clients that year and say, hey, um, I decided to move. Now you have to pay for my plane ticket for a Northeast wedding photographer now that I'm going to the Midwest. So there were just some some, uh, tougher parts of that transition that were just like a reality and frankly, an investment in moving to Chicago in the first place, because there were a lot more business opportunities out here for me. So I saw a lot of the, um, you know, the costs associated with the move itself as kind of part of the investment in moving to some bigger and better opportunities out here. So if you're in a position where you want to be just branding yourself to be an Atlanta photographer rather, rather than a uh, Utah photographer, um, and if you're kind of like in that in between, um, I would say, again, like do whatever is sustainable for you. For me, I kind of like had to be still keeping up with the contracts that I signed and and making happen. And more Um, so my issue and the reason I'm partially going to Atlanta is nothing here. Like it's a tiny town. Mm, For sure. I travel to Vegas or I travel to Salt Lake. and For sure. You know. (laughs) And you are going to Atlanta, right? Yes, I, like my girlfriend's okay. already there. Like she lives there. Oh, awesome. Okay. Oh, awesome, man. That's so cool. And you are finding more business opportunities out there too? Yes. Okay, awesome. Braxton wants to chime in? He's going to Atlanta. Yeah. We also have a really good friend in Atlanta, Caden Walker. Yeah. Probably would be someone cool to reach and, out to. And Luke Lambertson. Yeah, and Luke Lambertson um, as well. Yeah, so two people that are in the classroom, um, Friends of the South, uh, look them up. I'm going to put both of their names in the chat right now. Perfect. Caden Walker and Luke Lambertson. Um, send them a video message on Instagram saying that I sent you and just see if they'd be willing to connect at all. Um, Caden just started his business like last year and Luke's been in the game a bit longer. He, We met and when he was like just shooting in Chicago one random time, Luke. Um, and then Caden came and visited Chicago mm-hmm. as well. Um, so yeah, my, my biggest piece of advice is like, I'm always going to be the person that recommends to do what you need to do to make ends meet. So that means if you have to fly back and forth, um, you have to fly back and forth, yeah. but your biggest move is going to be finding community, especially in a place like Atlanta. Right. There's just so many people in such a big market, um, where if you can connect with a few people like that, or they can start giving you second shooting jobs and you can prove like what you're capable of and you show up with a ton of value. Those, that could be your network of getting in. So like in Chicago, when I started shooting, I went to school in central Illinois, moved up to Chicago with my wife once we got married. And then I started like back in the day when there were like Facebook groups were popping, there were like meetups and I would go to every single meetup. I got connected with these people that started asking me to second shoot for them. Once I proved my worth and salt with those people, they were established in the Chicago market and then they started giving me referrals. Their referrals had planners in the weddings and then the planner started booking me for new weddings because I was like more of a budget friendly option at that point. Um, and then because of that, it just started snowballing from that point on and then not needing, cause I was, I was traveling back and forth to central Illinois, which isn't as far. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've never been more East than Denver. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's like, that's my biggest recommendation is just like have a year where it's hard and make sure you're still getting portfolio work, even though it's going back and forth and just doing your best to keep content I, going. I really don't have a reason to be coming back either. Like I'm trying to go and like, just gotcha. Because I, 
there's not a lot here. <laughs> like, that's right, how for sure. Yeah. Right. Very I would cool. say hammer home that free work too that we talked about at the beginning of the live stream. Like if you're moving to a new place and you need a portfolio to establish yourself as an Atlanta photographer rather than a Utah photographer, just like start doing whatever you can, start reaching out to people, finding that community that Eric was talking about and shoot alongside them, uh, shoot brand work for them, do portraits yeah. of people, just like do whatever you can to just get the foot in the door so that you even just have photo work and video work that is based in Atlanta proper. So you can start like tagging stuff and really establishing a foothold for yourself in that new place. Yeah, that's that's why I'm excited to be actually in a city too, to act like literally do the footwork. Like to yes. be- Yes, oh my gosh. To even have the option to do that yeah. work. Yeah, boots yeah, on the ground. Sure. <laughs> The, cro the closest camera shot for me is two hours away. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Like, to even get film developed, you got to go four hours. Yeah. Oh <laughs> but, but kudos to you to doing what you need to do to make it work, even if that means moving. Well, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and what Mike's wife in the chat said is super poignant as well. Like, if you can start blogging about specific venues and specific places in Atlanta, you can start ranking an SEO for those areas and getting connected to venues and maybe getting on a preferred vendor list, like just rubbing shoulders. And again, that groundwork, boots on the ground, just no effort is, is bad. <laughs> like just do, you know, like go and see what comes of it because something is bound to happen if you keep trying and chipping away at stuff. When you start twiddling your thumbs and waiting for stuff to come to you, it's just not going to happen. So lead with that value, get your boots on the ground and get going once you're there. Oh yeah. Sweet. Hey, man. Well, appreciate you guys. Of course. Yeah. Best of luck to you, man. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, thanks for coming on. I see you finally set the, uh, the mic stand down. So <laughs> yeah. And it's like <laughs> sitting on a piece it's of gaff tape. That's not big for me now. <laughs> It's a it's on a roll of gaff tape that's officially stuck to the bottom of it, so to get a little bit more elevation, <laughs> it like perfectly fits. <laughs> oh well, well, cool. time to restick it. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you so Thank much, you, man. Take care. Oh, this is freaking awesome this is awesome so i am seeing a bunch of dudes in here yes uh we would love to get some females mm -hmm. yep <laughs> or just it's not just a dude fest yeah, in this room you know, and five online dudes in this room yeah but so we will move on now to chris <gasps> hey what's up guys Hello. What's up? I just heard a big gap. Oh. What was that big gap? So I work with my wife behind me. You might see a mess. I said, I'm going to get on the camera. If I do, watch out. <laughs> but, uh, How's it going? It's, it's going great. Um, actually, my wife. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from Houston. I'm sorry. My name is Chris. I'm coming from Houston. Nice and, to meet you, Chris. Um, nice to meet you, too. Um, and me and my wife are a photographer's video uh, like duo. And my wife is a photographer who was actually brought me home from work. I was doing my job, and then she started making more money than me. I'm like, wait yeah. a second. You know, this is <laughs> this is a hobby. Her hobby turned into a business. It's literally just mm -hmm. her um, having fun, family, friends, and extends, and then it turned into a business. Um, so uh, when she brought me home, I said, you know what? I love doing video. Let me just see that goes anywhere. This is before yep. we knew what it, what an industry was, any kind of industry, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it just took off from there. So we're doing awesome. great in Houston, Houston based. Um, but my question is a little bit about marketing. So she has her photography name. It's actually Art and Photography. It's her name. Mm -hmm. And then I had made my separate name. So I'm like, well, it might not go nowhere. Who knows? Um, and we work separate. The only thing we do together is weddings. And mm -hmm. so only so uh, show this photography. I'll do video for weddings. But now um, we're growing so much. Um, I don't know how to market um, together. They're separate. I don't know if we, we should keep it separate. Or we should combine our business together. Um, I still do photography on the side. When she's booked up, I'll take those leftover clients. And then she's just so busy. She's the main one getting the most business. So she doesn't need to add anything on to her just yet. So I guess it's yeah. a question more for me as, as in, should I keep my own brand name? Um, and just extend from there. Um, our, our thing to get into the wedding industry, 
was to do photo packages and then you get video for free. That's how I started getting my portfolio totally. and getting like, clients. Um, so good. But now, um, now we're getting so busy. I'm not sure if I should keep that, if we should go separate, kind of stuff right there. So yeah, you're, you're in the place where you have too much demand. So a natural deterrent to that is both of you raising prices if you feel too overwhelmed. And that feels like a scary thing to do, but it could just be incremental. And the live stream that I did on Thursday, if you haven't seen it, definitely go rewatch that. I talk about how I increase prices over time. And my chat with my buddy Levi was such a poignant part for me to realize I was so overwhelmed with video weddings. He was like, double your prices. And I was like, I'm not doing that, but I almost... I almost went 50% increase and I booked the first wedding I did, uh, I, I got when I came back with that new pricing. Um, and then the, the, the demand started slowing down, but I was making even more money. And so yeah. you're in a scenario where the both of you have to realize if she is so wildly busy, she definitely needs to increase her prices if she can't handle, can't keep up with the demand. That's the yeah. natural deterrent to scale back and actually make more money. But then you guys have to decide will you turn into a model where it's like we are one force under the same umbrella and we're always going to book photo and video. And that's really the only way you can book us. That's another yeah. natural deterrent at a premium price where you two don't have to work as much. You can always work together. And then yeah. that is the way forward with charging the same amount, if not more and shooting way less. Charging, that would, yeah. Cause we, we, um, on our own, and then mm -hmm. uh, charge less, but it's the same as together. Yeah, that's what you're saying. And then also, um, I think we're confusing clients because they go to her. Yeah. And then they come to me like, hey, I'm looking for a photographer. And I said, well, yeah. actually, you just inquired my wife. Well, my wife. Yeah, that's yeah, awkward. That's super yeah, weird. We're in the same circle. You know, when you're in your, right. when you're in your city, you have your circle. Mm -hmm. and, um, but you I can... Like if you if you structure it in a way where it's like she's the premier photographer and you're more of an associate role under her brand yes. or under that new brand, what you could do in a transitional time is keep both of your entities as businesses, but start the new brand and start booking under that new brand and building that portfolio and website and socials and all that stuff. And you can pull from these two to supplement that and prove that you're you're worth hiring with this new entity. And as soon as this one, this umbrella one, gets enough flowing you start yeah. dissolving these two out of the way if that's yeah, what you want that's to what i was like i couldn't figure out that's that's yeah. a great answer to my question honestly because it is sure. scary to start a new brand in a sense because you are the brands are established or say her mm -hmm. brands established mine is fairly new it has some traction yeah. but before we get too far to where we came back down I, I didn't know how to handle that but that's mm -hmm. I think perfect but as, 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 far, as long as you're taking her brand and constantly pointing to the new one, like, hey, we are rebranding, we are rebranding, we are rebranding. And then you're sending all these existing clients, all of their new contracts, PDFs, invoices with the new branding, just being like, this is who we are now. That convinces or shows them that anybody they're referring you to in the future is mm -hmm. under that brand as well. Um, so that you just start communicating all that. If these two are still successful in their own right, there's no need to just cut them out, um, but let them keep going until that one is established. Maybe, one. What do you think of that branding? Because we just, again, it's just for weddings. What do you think of that branding? It's just a, just a, a wedding branding. Like this, this brand, this name is only for weddings. Yes. Like that's back to what I was saying in the slide. I don't know if you saw the slide deck I did earlier. I was saying like mastering one thing at a time. Um, and starting a new brand is just like to get that thing going, just hyper focus on doing one thing or in your case with both of you, each of you doing one thing, doing it so well and yes. making, seeing that to fruition so that when you dissolve these two, then once this is functioning well, you can start thinking about diversifying it into commercial work or associates over here once it's a strong enough brand on its own. Awesome. Man. Thanks so much for your help today. Of course. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, have a good Appreciate night. It. You too. Take care. Thanks for jumping on. I love this so much. It's the internet. The internet sucks when it's just you talking to a camera. Mm -hmm. And then when you can actually talk to the people that are listening, it's just so fulfilling <laughs> and awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, quick break, just to let everybody know if you hadn't heard yet, the classroom is closing tonight. That's mm -hmm. a huge reason why we're doing this live stream. Uh, the enrollment for my course for wedding photography, wedding filmmaking closes at midnight central standard time, which is less than three hours now. 
Um, so if you are on the fence and you want to call in and chat about it or leave any uh, comments in uh, the comment section, please do that. Gene's here. Hi, Gene. <laughs> um, yeah, just know that that's the case. And anybody who has enrolled in the classroom this past week or enrolls tonight before midnight gets entered into the final raffle. And out of all the people that enrolled in the classroom in this drop, one person is going to receive the classroom for free. So if you already bought it, you will be fully refunded. Um, and if you just bought the photo side, you'll be refunded that amount and access to both photo and video side, same with video. So just wanna let that be known as well. And enrollment will be a hard close at midnight tonight. So, yep, just got to let everyone know that classroom up in the, this is the, the classroom, the classroom. Uh, it's linked down in the description to the classroom education. Does the Eric classroom Fogler. teach you how to uh, start a wedding filmmaking business? Yes, that's exactly what it is. It was made for. And then it expands beyond that. So in the beginning of the live stream, I talked about the two demographics that it's targeting. It's targeting people who just started shooting weddings and want to grow it into a full-time business and then existing full-time people, part to full-time people who are looking to expand, get bigger, diversify, and grow their businesses into something bigger and feel the creative inspiration that, I, that they feel I have to offer. Sweet. Ready for another? I'm ready. This is so fun. Right. I hope you guys are vibing. Here you go, Luke. Luke! Okay, can I hear him? Nope, sorry, I was, yeah, I I was on me. Oh, that gotcha. was on me. That's all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all good. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have Excuse a question. Excuse me while I drink my wine, sorry. You know Luke's name? Wait. <clears throat> Luke, yeah. you can't see the names. Luke. Uh, oh, Justin. yeah, Not I haven't Justin. seen your face. Hello. Yes, we've never talked face to face, but I've DM'd you, Thomas. Yeah, how's it going, yeah. man? I'm doing really good, yeah. Very excited. Uh, I don't really have much of a question because I have that with you and the classroom if I have anything. I just wanted yeah. to say... Thank you so much for all that you've done for me. I just booked my first man. wedding uh, in May, which was very exciting. And I delivered them. And Let's go. Super, super, super exciting. Um, and I just, so yeah. Good. Yeah, I don't know. Just thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have really changed my life. And I don't even know how to describe it. So you make me freaking cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Dude, I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, um, yeah it's a. Uh, it's just wild to see the face to face stuff, like to have so many conversations, like we've talked so much and it's just so awesome to see your face and like hear your voice and that it's just affected you in that way. And it's yeah. just super encouraging for me to hear that, man. Yeah. Um, and I have to know because I've been dying now. I should have asked you earlier, but how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Atchison? Atchison. I was going to say Atchison, so I'm glad yeah. I asked. Funny <laughs> enough, like I'm actually taking my last name out of my business name because it's so, mm, it's just, it's yeah. so confusing. Um, so I'm doing like Luke Elliott, which is my middle name. So, Great. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I love man. that you're being intentional about that stuff just to like make it that much smoother for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Not having to like just explain that every single time yeah. just lessens the barriers of yeah. like real interaction yeah yeah for sure um i don't know i don't want to take that much time but yeah just want to say thanks i really appreciate thanks so it. much luke i really appreciate you calling yeah. in yeah great cool. to talk to you man see you later thanks all right see you later. take care luke uh, i literally almost right. started and crying a reminder <laughs> if you do not have your video on you're just going to pass that so just keep your video on at all times all right now we have max my camera said they didn't hear any of that. Max. Hi. Hi. Let's go. What's up, Max? Um, <laughs> hi. Um, I, I haven't speak English. I haven't uh, practiced my English that much, so I'm not sure. Okay. If we we'll do our a best. Good conversation. Yeah, we'll do our I'm best. A wedding photographer based in Thailand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, and I've been following your YouTube for a long time already. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I just have a few questions about regarding a video. So mostly yeah. I shoot a wedding, for, wedding photos. And mm -hmm. do you have any recommendations if I want to start shooting videos too? Like I feel, mm -hmm. I feel that uh, wedding films and photography are actually very different from each other. Mm -hmm. Like when you know photography for a long time, the settings 
that you are using for photos and videos and how you tell a story is actually like very different. I tried to uh, do a few uh, wedding films, but then I found out that um, let's say the the way my camera moves or how how I tell a story it's is still very much like I'm shooting a photos, but it's just now moving a little bit, and mm-hmm. it doesn't seem to separate. Mm-hmm. The, the two things like photos from videos mm-hmm. yeah so i'm gonna answer with a few few answers first is kind of what you said at the end there well first let me start with video is different than photo because you're now dealing with not just a, a visual that's still but you have a moving visual all the time so it's the same that it is visual but it's a very different visual because it's constantly moving Then second, you have the component of audio, whether it is people talking in the film and and or music as well. So because it's that different, you always have to be thinking about those things. For, so for a rule, a rule that I have for myself whenever I'm filming anything, filming a wedding day, my rule is if I'm filming something, whatever is in my frame needs to be moving. If I'm still, I'm still Other people or things have to be moving, or if something is still, I need to be moving. So there's always movement. Oh. So for me, that's what differentiates. So because if you're just standing still and you're filming something that is standing still, it's no different yeah. than a picture. So I understand. The added layer of that is so constantly keeping things moving and flowing, and then it's the dance of trying to interweave it with music. <laughs> and vows and speeches. <laughs> um, and so that's when it becomes just way more complex. Now, what's so beautiful about that is that it, it appeals to people's emotions so much more. Like people feel the weight yes. of the story, and the love yeah. and the music and the tears um, so much more than any photo could. And you have so much more of an opportunity to hit people in the feelings if you do it the right way. And that's what I love about wedding films, but that's also what's so hard about wedding films because it takes that much more energy in the editing process to get it to a place that affects people that emotionally. But when you can do it correctly and you do it right and you do it intentionally, then all of a sudden you're affecting people's lives in a way that is so different than any photos that they get from you. And ultimately, that's what I love so much about wedding filmmaking, is that you give them the opportunity to revisit those memories and the people in the films, especially their voices. If you include their voices, yeah, um, or if somebody passed away, like including them in the film, like a photo of them along with something that someone says about them, it just can be so emotionally impactful. So. What I would recommend then from, so first, just knowing all of that, like to me, that's the most important thing about filmmaking is understanding the emotional impact and how you can do that as a filmmaker. But then also making sure that you have all of the technical pieces correct as well, so that you can tell that story really, really well. Because if you're overexposed and you're not shooting the right, shutter speed or shutter angle and frame rate and all the technical things, it can distract from the story. And so my goal is always like in the wedding films, I want it to feel as true to life as possible, appealing to both visual and audio. So I want to expose the image right. And I want to include sounds that you would normally hear if you were at that place to make them experience that. So that means researching and understanding what the 180 degree rule is and looking that up on YouTube. I cover all those basics in the classroom and uh, in the not so basics module um, of the filmmaking portion and making sure you have all that stuff in check, white balance and opening up your aperture, not going over a certain ISO speed. You have to do your research and figuring out all those technical things. I had all the emotional stuff when I first started out for four or five years, but I didn't have all the technical stuff. I was booking stuff because people were like, wow, this is really emotional. I love it. (laughs) 
but it was distracting because it looked bad and it sounded bad. So once I learned those things and then I brought the emotion into it, it was just like, okay, then. like everything exploded. Cause then people were like, Oh, I'm so involved in this now. <laughs> like it is just like, I feel like I'm there. And when people say yes, things like yes. that, like it, it brought me to tears. I felt like I was there. Those are the things where I'm like, okay, I'm doing both of them really, really well. And that's what it takes to have an effect on people. So that's my long winded answer. And also your English is really good. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, was the, the one, the one, uh, I forgot the name, but there was, uh, the one where you posted on YouTube where shoot, I forgot, but yeah, but I just remember okay. the, 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 the winning film that, that I've watched that that's, that's the, actually the first one that I've watched. And then I stuck it to the end and actually feels and then come to tears a bit that mm -hmm. I, I feel the emotions of the bride and groom mm -hmm. right there. And uh, I've watched all much, uh, a lot of your videos and here's, especially the audio part seems to be very important for you. Mm -hmm. And right, right now, because I'm just starting at the, uh, at the video parts, uh, I mostly have only photographic gears. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, how do you recommend I start investing? Like, uh, let's say, how many jobs do you think I need? I should be doing for a year. Then I can start actually buying my own gears rather than renting. Right now, it's only maybe like three to four wedding films for mm -hmm. six months. So maybe one to two a month, like, and that's it. That's not really much for mm -hmm. investing in many, like, like the audio gears, like the mic, the, mm -hmm. the boom, the zoom and everything. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to know, when do you think it's a good step to start really getting it and investing more on this? Yeah. So yeah, this is where I go. If, if you have another way to make money with a part-time job or doing photo work and doing as much as you can to get cash, to get money, so that you can invest in a new thing. So that's what I went through in the slide deck is like build one thing at a time, get the photo stuff really, really good yeah. and get it making a lot of money and start pouring some of that money into the filmmaking side, get new gear, get the stuff you need to make the technical stuff great and then start just pulling that story and the technical things together to then build that to make money. Um, and that's all a personal thing and you understanding where you're at and what feels comfortable with putting money back into the business or figuring out like, uh, do I, do I spend this money knowing that I'm going to make money later? Uh, that's all up to you and figuring out where you okay. are in the process. But I'm always, I'm always one to say, Hey, take it safe, get an extra job if you need to, to get more money so that you can keep growing this thing. But I think for me, when I was full time with just photo and video, I was really trying to do 30 to 35 weddings a year. And at that point, when I was doing that many, I was making like gross revenue about 150,000 a year um, and taking home just over 100,000 um, in US dollars. So, and that was more than enough for me living in a big city um, and managing and not spending too much. Uh, so again, that tends to be a personal thing, but my advice is do your best to save as much and use the money that you are making to reinvest back in to grow the new thing. I'm actually like very nervous right now. <laughs> That's okay, man. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I really appreciate it. I just, just well, one last question. Like, yeah, I, I think I, I, I have my language opportunities, but right now I'm only based in Thailand and because of mm -hmm. the family circumstances and everything, I don't think I could, I really wanted to, you know, just move to a country where the, it pays higher in photography because in Thailand, a weddings that, I, let's say uh, the weddings that we are shooting here, the average, like my team, we have like three photographers mm -hmm. and I only get uh, 850 US dollars Mm -hmm. per one sessions so it's it's not that high but because of everything like i i, I couldn't move and um 
I really wanted to use like my English and I know Chinese. Mm -hmm. like, do you have any suggestions? Like, let's say you are a bride. Ah, uh, yeah, no, you're a groom, but you wanted <laughs> to <laughs> to shoot something like locations in Thailand. How do you think I should like advertise myself so people would know that there's this English speaking photographers in Thailand that you mm. can have access to? Yeah, so I think. I think either putting content out on Instagram or YouTube or or blogging or things that communicate that and put that on your website, have English lines on your website, yeah. have different languages and in, in there showing that you do those things, but then fill your portfolio with films that have English in it, and that you can you can edit a film that because like I. I mean, I couldn't edit a film that was in Taiwanese. Like, I just couldn't. Like, I would need to call you up and be like, "Hey, I need you to help me with translating this, yeah. right?" But I, like, I'm I'm pretty conversational in Spanish. Like, I know Spanish, so I feel yeah. like I could yeah. edit I could edit a wedding film in Spanish. So, I if I wanted to get into a market like in Mexico, shooting weddings um, where people are speaking in Spanish, then I would fill my portfolio with that with footage like that with people speaking that language. And then communicating uh -huh. that stuff, like on your Instagram stories or whatever, like speaking in those languages as well. Communicate and show people that you are capable of doing that. Thank you very much. Awesome, of course. <laughs> I'm so, thanks I'm for calling in, Max. This is no man. This is so awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for calling. I really appreciate it. Best best of luck to you. It sounds like you're doing incredible stuff. Just keep going after it, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Max. Epic. We got another enrollment. Let's go. Sarah Jane Boucher, thank you so much for enrolling in the classroom. Sarah enrolled in the photo course. We got a lot of people enrolling in photo course. Let's go. Hit that button. Oh, oh yeah. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> Boom. Remember, if you enroll in the classroom during the live stream, we're going to call out your name and celebrate you. Thank you so much, Sarah, for enrolling. Make sure you um, request for the Facebook group. Get in the Facebook group immediately. It's in the first module. Thank you for enrolling. Okay. If you want to chat with us, mostly with Eric, but if you want to chat with us, just get in the waiting list, get on the waiting list, because I'm just going in order. So here we go. Here's next. Let's go. Danny. Danny. Oh! <laughs> what's up, Danny? Eric, what's up, man? What's up, Danny? Hey, thank you so much for, for doing the live stream and for just letting me jump on here and ask a question. Of course. Where are, you calling, where are you calling from? I'm from Southern Oregon in Medford. Epic. We were just there. No, we were in Northern Oregon and shooting a wedding up in, was it Bend? That's like it was Central up, Oregon, yeah. Okay, no, we were up. Hood River. Oh, yeah, oh, Hood, Hood River. River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, first, I just want to say thanks for all your work. It's definitely been impactful on my journey. Um, thanks for watching. Man. Specifically about filmmaking. And, and the heart and emotion and, and making couples feel connected is just mm -hmm. been, I think, what I've tried to build my business on. So appreciate that. Thanks. Man. And uh, for a question, I've been, I went, I made the, the great choice of going full time uh, right before COVID hit. <laughs> nice, as you do. <laughs> and then uh, my wife got pregnant and we had a child. So great timing. Yep. All that. Um, but I, I managed to survive all that. Uh, I've, I Kudos. do some uh, content creation for businesses, so I sort of diversified a little bit. Yep. And then I shoot weddings uh, a lot during the summers and, and other months as well. Um, but in my market in Medford, it's a smaller town of maybe 70,000 people. I'm starting mm -hmm. to hit sort of the market cap on videographers mm -hmm. around $2,500-ish per wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and I love where I live. I don't really feel like it's a, a good thing for my family to move to a bigger city, but I would like yeah. to move beyond that market and, and sort of get into maybe the four to $5,000 range. Um, yep. I'm definitely trying to be realistic with my skill set, what I offer, how I stack up against competition. So I know I'm not there yet, but I was curious what, what suggestions or advice you would have about moving beyond your current pricing level and market. I've, I've been raising my prices every year um, for the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Um, so like, how do I break into those higher tier markets um, for higher end weddings where I could charge maybe four or $5,000 a wedding and, and not have to do 
30, 40 weddings a, a year, I can only do totally. like 15, 20 maybe. Totally. If, if you're able to already supplement with commercial work, I'd say it's an, a natural thing that you could already do because you're like, you're, what I'm hearing is I can only charge 2,500 where I'm at, except mm -hmm. you're charging 2,500 for 35 to 40 weddings a year. So you're sorry, in the market. I, sorry, I should clarify. I'm doing commercial work. I probably do about 15 to 20, but I just feel like in order to make more money, gotcha. I could do some to like let my wife go part time, that kind of stuff. I would need to do 35, 40 weddings right now. I, I currently do about 15 to 20. Gotcha. To supplement some of the content creation I do for local businesses. Gotcha. So what I recommend is keep doing the content creation and keep okay. growing that, um, keep bringing value to those companies and keep raising your prices in that because okay. if they see a ton of value in the work that you do, they're not going to want to let you go and they're going to want to keep coming back to you. So keep right. bringing value to them and find efficient ways to deliver content to them. Um, as far as the wedding side goes, are you willing to travel at all? Yeah. So I would then look at places like Bend or Portland or Sacramento, if that's not too far, mm -hmm. bigger cities where you can maybe start networking with other people who are already in the market in those places. Okay. Um, and I would really start to DM with value to people that you really admire in those cities okay. and just be like, just be like, Hey, I'm someone who's wanting to get into the Sacramento market. I'm someone who wants to get in the Bend market, like wherever you want to go and say, I would love to assist for free just for yeah. like, any weddings I'll, I'll, bags, I'll second shoot for you whatever it is yep. I'll, I'll do a same day edit for you like mm -hmm. something that could bring a lot of value to their clients cool. like here's here's uh something i threw together real quick the a same day edit that i did mm -hmm. let me know if you I, like i can assist for you i could do a same day edit for you and we could show it to your couple um, yeah. i'm just trying to get connected to people and then like taking time out of your one of your weekends, couple of your weekends to go and help those people and see yeah. what comes of either second shooting and then starting to get referrals in those areas. Same okay. deal with planners in those areas. Yeah. I would recommend that to start really branching out to try to connect to those cities mm -hmm. so that you could start. And then the, the second thing in that is what I constantly say on YouTube all the time, the whole concept of lean into what makes you different. Yeah. Look at those same successful filmmakers in those cities who you're mm -hmm. aspiring to be in the companies that they have and seeing, just see what they're doing and find a collage of things that they're doing well and yeah. apply it to your own business. Okay. Little facets here and there creatively. This person is doing this with their edits. They're doing film overlays and double exposures and um, like retro audio and all yeah. this stuff. And this person is marketing in this way. And I want to take this, like start applying those things to your business in your specific area and see what starts happening and people wanting to work with you. Yeah. Maybe re-edit some of your own films, your okay. old films, yeah. to show that new aesthetic and those new things that you're doing. The combination of those two, it's again, it's just like, what do you have to lose if you're trying to build this stuff? Yeah. Um, and for me, it's like, I love doing things in a natural way like that instead of being like, all right, I'm going to start doing ads in Sacramento. Like you could totally go that route. Yeah. I've never it's done not, an ad at all for my business. Yeah. Ever. It's just, it's not how I function. Yeah. Um, you can totally have a ton of success in going that route and really doing your due diligence and figuring out like what yeah. that looks like and how to do it well. But for me, I'm like so community based and like creatively inspired to do things that I love doing it in that organic way and that like hustle mentality way. So that's usually how I advise other people to go about it. Cause I like, if you've, if you've connected with my work, that's the advice that I want to keep giving, yeah, you know? For sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It, yeah I don't want to take any more time. So I appreciate no, you man. guys. Uh, if you're in Oregon again, let me know. I want to buy you guys dinner or beer or something. Oh so, man. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Guys. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Take care. Freaking epic. Oh, we got another enrollment. Oh, I, do I see a bung, bundle over there? Wait, is this Max who we just talked to? I think so. No way. He didn't put his last name. Okay, Max Chang. I don't know if this is you from Thai, Thailand. I don't know. Okay, just let us know if it was. Um, bundle, let's go. Wow. Wow. Yeah, let's photo. go. Oh, yeah, wait. Oh. Hey, oh. So epic. All right. Oh, is it like already almost 10 already? <laughs> That's wild. Okay, it's super fun to talk to you guys. I want to let other people chime in on some of this because I don't want you guys just to watch me the entire time. And you guys, they have plenty of insight as well because everyone in here has dabbled in wedding photography, wedding filmmaking, 
And how many people do we have in the waiting room right now? We just have a few more yeah, at this point, right? Few. Max, it was Max. Max. Oh. Thank, okay, I'm so hyped for you. Make sure you get in the Facebook group. Yeah, Max, make sure you're in that Facebook group. If, if, yeah. you, if you make a trip to the States and you come to Chicago, you let me know, Max, okay? Um, oh, it's insane. Thank you so much for investing in yourself in that way. And I just hope, I hope the classroom just blows away your expectations and teaches you all that core stuff, especially on the video side. Um, all those basics leading into creative storytelling and philosophy. Um, but please make sure to get connected with so many people in that Facebook group. Okay, epic. All right. And don't forget the link is pinned in the comments to join in to the video chat. All right. Keep going. Mm -hmm. All right. We got Terry. What's up, Terry? What's up, Terry? Okay. Are you muted? Yeah. There we are. Yeah. yeah. What's up? Where are you calling in from, Terry? Mm -hmm. Man, I'm calling in from a place called St. Martin. Let's That's go. Actually... I've been there. Oh, you've been there? Yeah, back in high school. Ah, uh, Nat, you, you were go going to high school here or? No, no, no. We like It was a summer trip with my family. We stopped in Aruba, uh, St. Uh, Martin. On a uh, carnival uh, cruise on, ship uh, or something. Yep. Uh, <laughs> real, real, real. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of that. We get a lot of that. When, <laughs> He's like, yeah, it goes off. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet Likewise. you um, here. Um, I actually, every single every single time I've ever Googled 1DX wedding footage. Let's sorry. Um, I should probably let you guys know I tested positive uh, today. Oh, man, I hope you're feeling so, all right. Yeah, man. So I'm actually uh, like the worst time in for me to ever be part of a live stream, but uh, um, fine, the best time in regardless because yeah. you guys are here. I'm in. I hope, I hope you rest um, and feel better soon. Man, I'm going to try my, my best because I actually have a wedding coming this Saturday. Mm. So um, I, 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 I don't know. I was sick for like two weeks, so probably a few more days yeah. and I should be Drink good. some fluids. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do. Um, but anyway, I have a question. Um, whenever I try to get wedding bookings, um, I have a site that I direct my clients to, mm -hmm. and they usually talk about the pricing, and uh, usually it seems like it's a deterrent mm -hmm. because of how expensive I am. However, my price range is like capped off at around $2,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too sure... Um, what I can do to like to basically add more value, or sorry, if I can add okay. more value, or um, if there's something I can do to like kind of uh, structure pricing differently, as I, I'm I'm not trying to go too high with mm -hmm. pricing, but I'm also not trying to work myself to death. Right. So <clears throat> sorry. So okay. I don't get very frequent bookings, but um, that is also a deterrent as well because I last year I probably shot three or four weddings. Mm -hmm. This year I've already shot three or four weddings for the year so far. Yep. But uh, so I projected maybe I might do a bit better than this the, the, this year than last year. Yeah. But um, I I still find um, because I'm not being booked that much. Like my pricing is too high, so I'm actually considering lowering pricing. But I know, um, yeah, at nineteen hundred ninety nine dollars, it's already pretty pretty low. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty low. Do you have another part time job right now? I do. I do. I actually work full time uh, for mm -hmm. an insurance company, and mm -hmm. I shoot weddings on weekends. Yep. I, my recommendation is keep doing that. And if you if your goal is to book more weddings, I would recommend lowering that price to get more weddings in the door. But think about structuring your pricing this way. Build a three-tier package system. Put the desired one that you want to book, whether that might be sixteen hundred or eighteen hundred, right in the middle, and put a high-end one at twenty five hundred. And then put a low one at twelve hundred. Make make that low one like nothing that they would want and really focus their attention to that middle one. That's the one you always want to be booking to get more portfolio work in the door. And then 
yeah, maybe every once in a while someone will book the low one, but that might be like a five hour day, just something really short for you. So it's not a ton of burden on how much you have to shoot, but always trying to be gearing towards that middle package to keep building your portfolio and getting better as you go. And then whoever books that top tier package, which people will also do that because that's an option. They want to splurge a little bit more. That's probably going to offset the cost of you lowering that middle package while still being able to book a lot more at that middle package. Does that make sense? It does. You see, the thing is, I already like I, I have done some research, like I said, um, with you and Parker and mm -hmm. uh, Jake and some other people that I've followed up with. Um, your your stuff is always the bomb from 1DX footage for whatever reason. It's never Parker's <laughs> one that shows up when you look up 1DX wedding footage. <laughs> always you. So uh, great job on that. Thanks, um, man. But um, in my pricing strategy, I actually have a four tier package, not two. Um, okay. One like at the the bare minimum of like I think it's seven ninety nine. Then the middle range kind of middle range one which is uh i think 16 15 99 mm -hmm. yep then one above that which is like 17 99 and then sorry above the 15 99 was the two thousand dollar one and then i had a twenty four hundred dollar one okay so what i decided to do is i recently made changes to make it from the 15 99 jump um the one right before the top, I made it seventeen ninety nine, and then the top of the top was the nineteen ninety nine to make it kind of mm -hmm. enticing for people to try and book between the very top and the right yeah. before the top. And but it, it sticks around the sixteen hundred, the fifteen ninety nine, regardless. Yeah. and it does it does make sense that you are you are trending in a trajectory where you are booking more weddings a year. You've already shot the amount you did last year, so if that continues to happen, that's great that you're doubling every year which it seems like you might be on that trajectory, but it's going to take more work than just pricing. It's going to take you thinking about how do I make these edits look different? How do I make myself stand out and how can I justify prices that are higher, but then also doing your, your due diligence and time to make sure that you're connecting with other people like any planners that might be on the Island or any other other videographers on the island or even photographers, any other vendors in the wedding market to try to elicit more of those bookings, to try to be on a referral list so you can pick up any of those weddings that like in your stage right now, you're in a prime position for anybody who's booking a last minute videographer or anybody who whose videographer fell through or whatever. And you can sweep, sweep in and save the day and then you could crush it for them. And then all of a sudden that client is going to be singing your praises to their family and their friends and wanting to book you for further work in the future. So it's multifaceted. It's so much more than just structuring your pricing, but it's also, and it's hard. I know it's hard to do with a full-time job. I totally get that. But like for me, when I started making these films that started standing out, it was because I was putting that extra intentionality into the edit of really trying to appeal to emotion and not just putting it through a cookie cutter template of, of editing and just like really figuring out what's going to make your stuff look and sound different in comparison, if that makes sense. It does. It does make sense. Um, what, what I really was trying to figure out with the pricing is like how I can not get so much because basically I was supposed to have two weddings booked. Um, so one this month, one next month and one the month after, but, uh, the one for next month, they were like, you know, nah, it's it's actually way outside of our budget range. So um, we're really sorry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you can go ahead and book off that date if you do get a booking, but it's it's outside of our range. And I've been hearing, you know, a common theme that it, it, it my pricing is a bit expensive, at least here in St. Martin. Sure. That $2,000 range seems to be um, just wild basically it seems to be wild yeah yeah but, I, go ahead brex i was i was in a very similar market where i was capped off at about 2000 2500 for a really really long time and it was very discouraging i i've i've been where you are for years two things that really really helped me was one and this is what i preached to almost everyone who's struggling to like secure bookings because of pricing is 
and Eric talks about this a lot too, is if you can get them at minimum, if you can get them on the phone, but anytime I get an inquiry, I always like, I push hard to either meet up for coffee or Mm -hmm. I invite them into my home. I offer to go to their home. I, I push to meet up in person. And from there you can really show them who you are, what you're about. That's where you can kind of show the philosophy side of your business. And once people, get to see what kind of person they're hiring and what you're about. People basically are much more willing to spend more money for a good person and being able to trust the person that's documenting their day um, versus just seeing a name on Instagram or a name on a website, being able to just like have that connection with them and being able to show them who you are like that, that improved my booking rate. Like, 10 times fold it was insane once i started pushing that into my business and then the other thing is now this is not very popular with a lot of people and i completely understand why and it doesn't really help too much when you're booking at a lower price point but i started even offering uh clients uh payment plans Mm -hmm. um i put that now you have to make sure that you have a rock solid contract when you do that because it can get messy but if you have a rock solid contract and you have good wording and you have um if you're setting really good expectations with your clients and you're on the same page there's nothing wrong with accepting payment plans whether that's two months four months six months Um, whatever that can help them out in order to book you because once people actually book you and you blow them away, regardless if they booked you on a payment plan or not, that's when you start getting those client referrals and that's when people are more willing to um, be inclined to book you. Makes, Makes a lot of sense, like every single thing you said, but imagine this exact client, I rented out an entire venue at a four star hotel sat them down uh for like some some drinks and stuff really brought their whole family paid the bill uh let them go back home and think about it to come back and let me know that um yeah the pricing is way too high and i did introduce a pay like actually all of my weddings none of my weddings have ever been paid for up front all of them have always been like uh afterwards uh, pay you over the course of like a year or something Kind of thing. Well, I think it's the the encouragement I can give to you now is that you still are on an upward trajectory, like you said in the beginning. And so at this point, while you have had frustrations with specific clients doing things like that to you or saying that you're too expensive, the truth is, at least at this point, the first six months this year, just as many as booked you last year, booked you this year in the first half at the same price. So that means that's good. That means that that's working. And that might mean that it's a slower grind for you. And that's okay, especially as you have a full-time job because you can supplement your business that you're growing with the income you have from your full-time job. And I'd say keep grinding, keep grinding and keep going after it and applying all the things we talked about here. Um, and just keep taking opportunities to build your portfolio because you're still in that really robust building phase right now. So take as many opportunities as you can. And even if someone says no to you, toss it back to them and be like, what would, what price would work for you? Let's make this happen. So you can get a portfolio piece. You can still get a paycheck. If it's a and client, then, that's something you really want. Yeah. And, yeah. Everybody. yeah. But you could, yeah. you could also use that as marketing for yourself and getting, and getting more uh, more people in their circles because you booked them. And if you just say no to them and let them go just because they're not willing to pay an extra four or $500, then you might've missed on that opportunity as well. So it's, again, it's like you take that cut in pricing a little bit to negotiate a little. And that's almost the same as if you were willing to spend money on ads or other traditional ways of marketing yourself. Right. Speaking, speaking about that, actually about ads, like what, what would you recommend, uh, be marketed because um i inside of my packaging i've struggled to find what where the value really is so um sorry before before i continue on to this part um to to take your advice eric um stick to the four package plan or you would still say cut it down to three get it down to three simplify it as much as you can this is the last question i have to sorry because we just have other people in the chat but simplify it as much as you can and try to gear them towards that middle package as best you can. And then offer something that's reasonable for you that you feel like is a sustainable way for you to edit. For me, that's a four to six minute montage and including raw footage. That's a really good value add that I'd like to give to my clients. 
um, and just really trying to hammer that middle package, telling them. So that include the raw footage as well. Yes, a full raw footage edit, super easy to edit, beginning to end of the day, Rec 709 on top of it or whatever you use to color the footage across, export the whole thing, and then deliver it on a flash drive or Vimeo if you can compress it down in the file. For like two hours, so like a two hour full yeah. wedding. Yep, just from Straight start to finish, you see everything. It's, it's not really an edit. edit, it's just dropping right. most of the clips. and It's just everything, yeah. just in a timeline. That's, and that a lot of people love being able to see it that way. It's a good combination of like, I have a creative edit and then I have full raw footage as well and I can see the whole day. So I hope that's helpful to That you. sounds like a good idea for the top tier package, doesn't it? Yeah, or sure. to, Or that could be the thing that you throw in for free to get yeah. them to book. Yes. Like, like, okay, it doesn't yeah. cost you anything else. It's just an extra hour or two uh, of your time. Yes. You throw that in for free. Hey, hey, I totally get that. If you want, I can throw in the raw footage. 100%. Like, Oh, I really wanted that package with the raw footage, but you know it's just too expensive. We'll have to go with somebody else. Oh, how about I just give you the raw footage for free? Uh, not, no problem. So perfect. Just, just, just great. ideas, options. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Thank oh, you so talk. much. This might so get you, me that job. Let's Thank go. You, man. Yes. Let's go. Thanks right, for good night, on. man. That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, like it. it Scenarios can be so complex based on where you're at and what stage of the process you're in. But I think the, resou the resounding thing is always going to be like, you have to just keep cracking at it. Like you might feel frustrated with pricing, but if you still see success happening, you're on that upward trajectory, keep going. Like don't feel discouraged just because one client said no to you. See that as an opportunity to learn. You ate crap on that one and you're mo moving on to the next one. You've learned from it and maybe even consider negotiating those prices as well. Max, I saw in the chat, says he's on the fence about joining the classroom, but he went in on the bundle and decided to enroll. And yeah, just through the few uh, minutes of conversation, thank you so much again, Max, for enrolling. And thank you for just believing in yourself and in, in investing in yourself that way. I released a video this morning on YouTube. If you watched it, I put it on Instagram as well. Everyone was like, Eric, you sad? I was like, no, I just filmed it at 6 a.m. this morning. I was super tired and had puffy eyes. I just wanted to be real with everyone. It's really hard for me to sell something like the classroom to people. Um, there are so many online educators that are like, you have to have this course to level up, to get to six feet, to blah, 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 to do the thing. And I'm sitting here going, There's, there are so many ways that you can learn what I have to teach on a technical level. I think what differentiates myself and my course from a lot of the other stuff is that I pour my creativity. I poured my creativity into all of it. And I talk intricately about the business practice, about incorporating and taxes and investing your own money and how to plan for the future. But beyond that, it's about my philosophy. It's about serving my clients and the core of that. And at the end of the day, it's really hard to sell something that's mostly inspirational. But if you feel like any part of what I do online is inspirational to you and you want to take that next step into your specific line of work and your specific business, this could be the right investment for you. You can check out the site. It's down in the description, education.ericfloberg.com. Run through everything that's in each course. There have been a bunch of people that have already enrolled during this live stream. There are only Two, at this point, two hours left to enroll. We're going all the way till midnight to leave it open. If you're on the fence, I implore you to at least consider making a decision to invest in yourself in that way. Um, if you're listening to this and hearing this advice, I go into depth on literally all of these topics within the classroom um, at full extended length to the best of my ability. And, and we have just keep, kept adding to it and will continue to do so in the coming months and years as this community grows. Um, an added benefit to all of it is that we have a Facebook group that's over 150 people strong now with referrals and questions and comments, always talking about things like this um, and just a community that exists where if you did want to shoot outside of where you live or you did want to connect with people in different areas or find other people that are near you, there's got to be at least someone somewhere close to you or somebody that you connect, can connect with in there as well. Um, so because we're doing a live stream like this, I just have to at least mention that and let you all know that that is an option. And 
yeah, if you choose to jump off that fence and enroll, we're definitely going to celebrate you live and just thank you for, for doing that and investing yourself in that way. But would love to just continue to do some more mentoring yeah yeah we got more people they are showing waiting. up i see all of in, you in here and we will get to you as long as we have the time when yeah. we have two more hours let's so go we got the time if you're willing <laughs> we to are, hang yeah, out with us we are on a telephone so right we now. are here we are ready and i see the first i'm sure there are others sorry maybe i shouldn't say it that way <laughs> annalise what is up my girl let's <laughs> go Hi. Hi, Hi, how's Eric. it going? Good. How about you guys? I are we pronouncing it right? Annalise, yes. Annalise? Annalise, so I'm sorry. Annalisa. Annalisa. Yes, I'm Italian. So nice to meet you. Italian. <laughs> nice to meet ah. you <laughs> are you calling in from Italy or no? No, I'm currently living in San Diego. Oh, okay. So awesome. I'm in I was like, wow, that's like four <laughs> in the morning or something. Yeah. yeah. I was going to hit you up. I just booked a wedding in Sicily. Uh, Whoa. In... Did I tell you that? No. Yeah, no, we, uh, yeah, we booked a wedding. I was going to, yeah. I Maybe hope I still you, you also booked some extra days to enjoy it because it's fantastic. We are working currently. I have three kids, so we are currently working on getting the babysitting lined up because we and my <laughs> wife do it together to try and make that happen. We've spent a few weeks out in Italy, but uh, up in the Piedmont region, but now heading down to Sicily. Yeah. Oh, it's a so, whole new, different thing. Uh, that's what I heard. I heard it's kind of the Wild West there. <laughs> yes. So that's what I heard. I think you're going to love it. <laughs> I, oh, I definitely will. I definitely will. All so right. So I wanted to say thank you, first of all, to everybody. Eric, as an instructor oh. and how you deliver information, it's fantastic. I've learned thank so you. much from you. I have been a photographer for many years, mostly in the yeah. fashion realm. Mm -hmm. And I was the photographer that always said, I'm never going to do a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Until recently, um, I got somehow through a weird series of events, roped into a wedding. It was my first one. I, I did like small one, like two people, but this mm -hmm. was my first legit one. It was an Indian wedding. I did mm -hmm. not know when I signed up that it was going to be a week long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was a little bit of a shock. Fortunately, I over-prepared and had three other Good. shooters. Cause Great. When they gave me the time schedule, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't oh. know what to do. <laughs> um, she hired me because of my shooting style. I, I told her very clearly I'm not a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. um, but she liked the editorial style. And I actually loved it. I Aww. never expected that. So now her friends hit me up for possible other weddings. And I don't know what to do, where to go, because yeah. this one started at a really good price point. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, do I market myself at the same? Do I go higher? Because I don't have that extensive portfolio. I don't want to, you know, just sell myself over my skill level. Mm -hmm. um, so what... Uh, what would be your next move if you were in this situation? I feel like I've got plunged into this bucket. <laughs> yeah. And it's like sink or swim. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's crazy is you have now been like admitted into a realm that people want to get in and tried for years to get in because a lot of times traditionally with Indian weddings, a lot of Indian couples want to see work from prior Indian weddings. And yes. so the first few that I shot – it was like they were taking a gamble on me because they did not see it in my portfolio, but they loved similar to what you're saying. They loved the content of my work and the way I made I a film. Oh, thank you. And <laughs> it was just like, I don't know. If, okay. Hopefully I do it right. Hopefully I, you know, I show up, I have my philosophy, I serve well, all that stuff. And yeah, same thing. It just was like, oh, wow, I wasn't prepared for three entire days. Like I did not think it was going to be this many hours, but ended up like, working out awesome for me it was like for a sustainability standpoint the way my the trajectory of my career especially and i feel like i can relate to you in some sense because you're in the editorial space as well my business was already so getting so diversified that i was like i can't niche into indian weddings because at the price point that i could charge like i am and i am talking to a potential client for an indian wedding right now south pacific um so it's a multi-day, I believe they want three days, but they're like, I think budget's around 10 or 11,000. And the way, the rate I'm at right now, it's like, it's gotta be in the 15 to 20 range oh, absolutely. To, to consider. Um, and so for me, it's just like, 
a lot of like a lot of Indian weddings that are happening in Chicago are either like really big budget Chicago weddings where like most photographers have that on lock already and they're like in that market and they're booking <laughs> all the weddings in Chicago. And then there's a lot of Indian weddings like in the suburbs of Chicago, which budgets are a little bit looser there or a little bit tighter, I'd say. And um, and so I was like, do I want to niche into that world? I ultimately decided I have the portfolio piece. I can keep working into this. But this doesn't make sense from a, a technical perspective for my business because it doesn't match up with the diversification I'm doing. Like I can't sacrifice three days out of a summer week or slash weekend because I'm making YouTube videos and I'm doing this over here and I'm shooting this portrait session and I need family time. So ultimately, like what you're getting into right now is not just wedding photography, but like <laughs> if, if her friends like are doing family. it. And, and you're trying to get in and they're, you're, they're wanting you to do more Indian weddings, then you need to be okay with committing that much time to do it as well. Now, if you were going to do it and do it in a sustainable way, I would build a team and like oh. make sure oh. that's <laughs> how you do it moving forward. Um, the only thing I say to that is just like, be really careful that you are not overwhelming yourself with too many days of work because I know it can like, I know uh, a couple of photographers in Chicago who almost specifically shoot Indian weddings. And it's like, they have to shoot a very specific amount of year because of the intensity of how much, because one tends to be two to three, you know, eight hour uh, more traditional American weddings that you would see. Um, so I just, I just said a lot of things. Um, but ultimately, again, is what I talk about in a lot of business consultation is just like, take the time you need to, to figure out if this is something that you want and want to pursue, because it feels like it's being served to you on a platter right now. Like Yeah, and that's what I feel. I feel like I'm not grateful if I don't pursue it. But at the same time, um, your recent video where you photographed that couple, um, where you brought the bottle of champagne. Mm -hmm. I that that spoke to me on so many that's my jam I'm mm -hmm. a little bit more of an introvert when it comes yes, same. To, to face to face mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm dying inside right now just, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so I'm many people don't thinking. know that like so many people don't assume that I'm an introvert but I totally am like I really struggle with small talk with people and it's hard for me to like get to know people and a lot of people just don't assume that but that those are really good ways for me to go like, hey, I'm trying to connect with you without having to do it through words and asking <laughs> yeah. questions, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, and that shoot that you did, I was like, that is, if I had to go down this route, even just uh, engagements or just a couple mm -hmm. sessions, I absolutely loved everything about it. The vibe, mm -hmm. the simplicity, the story. I mean, it was, uh, I cried my eyes out, but it was Aww. amazing. So, so um, I feel, you know, yes, it has been served to me, but I'm like, I don't know if my personality and my energy is going to mm -hmm. be okay with that. Because I felt drained. Like, I wanted to sleep for a week after that. It was yeah. so intense, mm -hmm. so demanding, and... I so I, I wanted to see like uh, and you kind of gave me the answer that you confirmed mm -hmm. that yes they're very intense um, mm -hmm. so that that was the main question because I was like am I being ungrateful for you know kind of turning maybe away from it however I did like shooting the actual wedding like the mm -hmm. experience the the seeing all the emotions and mm -hmm. like and there's also there's also nothing wrong if you still wanted to pursue that but talk to the client in a way where it's like hey my associate will be shooting the first day i will be shooting the second day and we will be kind of swapping roles but what i can guarantee you is that everybody shoots within my style and i'm not hiring anyone that i don't trust okay, to be sense. able to cover this fully um so that could be a sustainable way for you to approach it if it feels too overwhelming for you to handle all of the work over the multi-day event. Um, but again, yeah, you're you're not being you're you're not being selfish by doing that. Like you are just doing yourself a service and recognizing like you don't want to burn yourself out and not give them an experience that exactly. they deserve to have. 
you not know? delivering what you know what they ultimately want to get yeah um but yeah it i didn't know but uh, they had uh, it was like a week long because they have the mandy or henna event mm -hmm. the hair and makeup mm -hmm. the, before the wedding and even during the wedding she changed i think four outfits yep. and i was just <laughs> i can't be in all those places so fortunately mm -hmm. i came prepared but it was a uh, it was crazy. It, it was an amazing experience, but it was absolutely crazy. And you came to mine a few times and <laughs> I was like, how does he do it? <laughs> so I, I'm so honored to have had the chance to actually pick your brain about it. So oh, thank man. you so much. <laughs> it was so great talking to you. Nice talking thank you so to much you for calling too. in, Annalise. Thank All right. You. Keep doing what you're doing. It's amazing. Thank you to thank everybody you so that's making this possible. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Have a great night. Take care. She's the sweetest person. That was wonderful. <laughs> I love her. I, I also love Italian people, though. I know. Me and Kristen always joke about. It. We're always like, "Can we just be the international wedding photographers?" Yep. They're just they care for family and hospitality mm -hmm. and good food. Yep. And, yeah, that's your jam, Annalisa. You're amazing. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, share your handle, Annalisa. I was trying to find you online. I couldn't yeah, find you. Seriously. If you're on Instagram, anybody who talks, just share your handle. We Everybody wants to see. People asked for it earlier. Share your handle. Heck yes. Um, also, Thank just you, kind of a back, like a note, housekeeping note. After we talk, I need to kind of get rid of you backstage, they call it on this app, to allow others in. And if you don't have your video on, I'm not going to call you to the stage. So a little housekeeping note. You ready to keep going? Yeah. Awesome. Wait, there's a couple. Hold on. Yeah, um, Sunrithi says, which video were they talking about? That's one of my most recent videos. It has 100K in the title. It's like, oh, thank you. I need water. Uh, it has 100K in the thumbnail, and it's talking about going full time as a wedding photographer. Um, and I tell that story of shooting that elopement with the champagne bottle. And then... Wild Horse says, wow, you guys are still streaming. Oh, yeah, we're going all the way to midnight, baby. Midnight, baby, it's let's like, go! We're going all the way to the end of enrollment close for the classroom. So, yep. That's what's up. All right, you ready to jump back in? I'm ready. All right, Nick's been in here for a little while, so let's okay. go! What's up? Unmute yourself, bro. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, I'm muting myself. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> How's what's going? up? Good. Hey, How are you? It's Nick. Nick, right? Yep. Yes. Nick. Yeah. Yep. Where are you calling in from? I'm from Rochester, New York. Awesome. Yeah. That's near where Steven's from. Cool. Cool. So actually, I just wanted to say real oh, quick. I nice. I have this recorded right now, but I can stop oh. recording if you want. I just oh, no, have yeah. a moment. So yeah. All right. Cool. So I'm That's just totally cool. whatever. But I kind of wanted to hit you with a couple of rapid fire questions. So let's I go. I'm ready. All right, so um, so do you shoot Super 8 or any sort of like video film? Yeah, I just started. Still have to get my first roles developed, but we started shooting Super 8 for the documentary I'm working on with Joe Greer this year. And then we're going to introduce Super uh, – we're going to do 16 mil um, on one of the trips we have coming up as well. But, yeah, I'm going to be going the route with uh, what Matt Johnson recommended with uh, processing. I don't know if you follow Matt Johnson online, who is Matt. Um, processing yeah. with who he processes with and the guy he sends it to in, I believe, Colorado for scanning. Oh, cool, cool, nice. Yeah, yeah I just found a website and uh, wasn't sure. I don't know if I should shout them out or not, but they're pretty yeah. good. It's Film Photography Project. So I found it pretty hard to like find labs when I first started. Yeah, I use Film Photography Projects. I've bought empty canisters from them and other things. Very good company. Epic. Yeah. Yep, I definitely like that a lot too. Like their workflow is easiest because sometimes it gets pretty tricky. Like you know, you have to like one of them. I had to like write a check, and I was like, I don't even yeah. have check. It's all archaic. <laughs> yeah, like, how do we know how to write a check? <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, okay, another one. Um, so white balance, just kind of quickly. Like I've struggled sometimes, like indoors. Like you're in a tungsten room, and then um, you're right by the window. So. I shoot video mm -hmm. primarily. So are you like, I mean, obviously when I'm outside, I set my white balance, like especially during a ceremony because I don't want clouds to come in and, you know, have the changing white balance. But do you use auto white balance like in that case or are you just strictly setting your white balance and then grading in post? Mm -hmm. I used to I used to shoot auto white balance, but then um, seeing longer scenes that shifted way too much, I decided to abandon that because 
even in a matter of a few seconds, you can shift quite a bit of Kelvin. Um, so I would highly recommend sticking to Kelvin and choosing one thing. And if you're in split light between tungsten and blue light, I would try to find an even balance or just really sway one way um, pretty hard and just let the blue be blue or let the orange be orange and then grade in post. Yeah. When in doubt, just stick to 5600 and mm -hmm. you can make it look yep. decent in post. Just go, full, just go daylight and do your best to grade in post. If you're shooting, if you're shooting 10 bit log, like you'll have flexibility with that footage. Um, or if you have the luxury to shoot in raw, don't don't nice be scared too. to let tungsten rooms be tungsten rooms. I yes. feel like too many people are like, oh my gosh, tungsten, I have to white balance this out. Right. When I was just, totally gonna agree with that. Yeah, then, like, just let it, it be just, a vibe. It just like it looks yeah. weird almost if it's not a tungsten room yeah. because most everyone films knows. really most Hollywood films really lean into that look anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool because that's something I've been kind of like struggling with. Like I've been debating going back to just using like auto, especially when I'm like indoors. But because mm -hmm. I feel like I shoot Sony, so shooting in like log, sometimes I'll throw a LUT on and it's like really orange. Yeah, or like way off, and it takes a lot to get it back. And I'm like, ah, you gotta, you gotta, get, you, you gotta get those gamut LUTs, bro. You gotta get those <laughs> gamut LUTs. I do, I do. Those because that's that Sony light, like LUT look. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. feel like there are, there are a lot of Sony shooters that just go to default, like the too much. super orange, orange and the dead greens. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I would highly recommend against that. Just going for the most natural look you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. And all right. Another rapid fire, uh, Eric, what's your favorite film camera you own? Uh, it's easy. It's gotta be my M6. It's, but it's just be. always broken. You gotta get <laughs> you need to have it CLA'd. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's that, but I just picked up a Mia, a Mia six, four, five, uh, AF and I'm falling in love with it. I love the 645 format. Cool, cool. All right. And then uh, I guess like a quick business question. I don't yeah. really go too in depth on it, but I charge by deliverables, but a lot of people mm -hmm. charge by hours. Um, I just don't really like to add stress into like the wedding day by like trying to say, oh, well, you know, we have to fit all of this in because then sometimes I feel like people like say, oh, well, let's fit everything into six hours and then. You get there and the schedule sets you up to get everything set up for the ceremony in 10 minutes. And it's like, you know, I'd rather have more time. So yeah. is that like really, is that unusual to charge by deliverables? And I don't know. I don't think so because it's essentially what I do. But I'm my wedding film packages are so unbelievably simple. It's literally two packages with two potential add-ons, which most people don't do the add-ons because in the top tier package is a four to six minute montage and all raw footage. And the second one is just the four to six minute montage. Both of those include up to 10 hours of coverage. That's what it says in the contract, up to 10 hours of coverage. So to me, I explain that to my clients and say, if I can get this coverage in eight hours and it doesn't make sense for me to be on the dance floor anymore, I'll leave because it's just redundant footage. But right. I'll include contractually, I'm up to 10 hours. If they need me for an extra hour, then I'll invoice them for the extra hour. So for me, that's essentially what I do. But I built it in a way where it's like, I don't let them try to squeeze everything into a six hour thing because I'm willing to be there for up to 10. Cool, cool. All right. Well, that <laughs> cool. That's because I feel like a lot of people charge by hour and I'm like, you know, that just adds stress. And I, feel like I, I do that for photo. I don't do that for video. Yes. Video, I'm up to 10 hours and then I have extra deliverables. Uh, unlike Eric's clients, my clients do a lot of times buy ceremony and speech edits mm -hmm. and dance edits. So like I charge, I think it's 750 per event, I call it. And so, and my, but my couples add that on and I have simple packages like Eric, but mine, yeah. So it's just knowing your client, but I agree with you for video, but I used to date all day coverage. Nah. Not not no, doing that no do more. That yourself. Yeah, don't I gotta do that. So uh, that's why I said up to ten hours, and then if they want to add more, depending on the vibe from the couple, I might give them the option to, because I'm like, well, I'm already there. I might as well make an extra nine hundred dollars per hour. So, what's another hour? I don't know. So, but that's up to you. I, right. if you have more, go on. That's. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I really appreciate all you guys. This, everything you do. Eric, the Montana video is probably like the best wedding video I've ever seen still. So oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Mike was on that with me. So yeah, we rocked that together. <laughs> so were you guys there like for the whole weekend then? It seemed that way. 
Dude, we took that whole trip was crazy. It was wild. We started out by so we pulled my car and I have a camper. So we started out by shooting an elopement in in Michigan, Michigan. on a lavender farm. Yeah. Where we hung out with them all day. They went out riding on their Ducati. We went on a sailboat. And then from there we drove out and we the camped Badlands. in the Badlands right on the edge of the canyon. Cause I'm just super into camping and stuff. And then we went out to uh montana but then in wyoming we stopped and we were on this river and then you were did the running and then we shot the montana wedding and then we shot on our way back down shot another elopement in colorado so it was a wild trip and it was absolutely that was when we shot the the uh if you saw the uh, video in teton National the grand Park. teton and the yellowstone so, i mean yeah the whole trip was insane uh yeah. we stayed on the couple's property like yep. it was his fam it was his family's property it was his old grandpa's estate yeah. um he had just passed like a few months prior um so we pulled his camper onto the property and hung out with them the, the full day before shot the rehearsal dinner and then the full wedding day which but the it, rehearsal dinner was some of the audio you used for that right yes yeah mm -hmm. exactly some really i think some of the best audio. audio for video comes at the rehearsal dinner Wh whenever Period. whenever i shoot that. any destination wedding i always just bring a camera to the rehearsal dinner because they always, an audio always invite you and you usually just get magic on the speeches. Um, and that opened up the film with his mom being like, talking about grandpa, like, I just wish he could be here. And that's how it opened up. And it just wasn't supposed to happen the way it did, but it was all serendipity. And he brought it up in his speech. And it's just it, all the stars aligned. And it was just crazy. Yeah. yeah, that was that was next level. I feel like that's like that really brought in like the emotion. And that was like probably one of the like, first videos i saw that is like really that impactful for like someone that i didn't know you know what i mean mm. so i was like oh yeah this crazy is ba crazy <laughs> backstory to that was i knew michelle from high school she was my high school girlfriend's sister's best friend and she tor <laughs> she tormented me dogs she neighbors cousins. <laughs> <laughs> um her her and my girlfriend's sister tormented me in high school just like gave me so much crap and then obviously we all matured and uh and she came to me and she's like this is our budget this is about all we can do and i booked them for chicago for six grand all in and then when all of covid stuff happened i was like i'm not going to charge you anything we'll just stay with six grand i know this is gonna be an insane portfolio piece and then we tied it into you making youtube content and doing all those weddings in that trip and that's why i love diversifying so much because it was like it made it all worth it from a financial perspective while still charging a very good rate, even though at that point I was pretty much charging eight grand minimum. Um, but to have a portfolio piece like that and then the diversification of my business of then teaching about that whole thing and teaching about the edit and all of those components to me are invaluable. So like even calling back to the way beginning of this live stream is, you know, like I'm constantly trying to see how I can, shoot things for a discounted price or for free or how I can get two birds with one stone with how diversified my business is on a trip like that. Or it's like, yeah, I'll take a cut on my rates if I can make a YouTube video or if I can make a Patreon video or anything like that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't take up too much of you guys' time. So I'm sure there's other people. Well, I really, I really appreciated the format with the rapid fire. Thanks. Nick, for that was awesome, man. I love that. All right. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Thanks for calling in. All right, guys. The last email on the email list just went out. There's only, at this point, only an hour and a half left to enroll in the classroom. Um, yeah, again, just to reiterate, anybody who enrolls tonight, anybody who enrolled the whole past week, you'll be entered into the final giveaway where we give away the classroom to one person out of all of those people. Um, so... Yeah, if you enroll, you're still on the fence. Like, please show up in the chat. Please show up in the mentor um, session. I'd love to talk to you. If not, that's totally cool. Um, but we do only have an hour and a half left for enrollment until enrollment closes. So, that's Sabria. <laughs> that's My wife showed up in the chat. Hi, babe. <laughs> Hi, Sabria. Hey, All Sabria. right, you ready? Next one. Next one, here we go. Who we got? Who we got? I'm just throwing them in. I'm not even gonna say it. Ready? Oh, oh what's Spencer? up, guys? Oh, you know him? Let's go. Spencer. I didn't even say his I name. I saw his name, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, baby, what's going on?" 
How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys feeling? It's I feel great, honestly. <laughs> like, when, how long are we going? Three we're hours here for a hot minute. We're like three yeah. hours. Yeah. Well, I mean, just like over the whole week, you guys have just been hitting it hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm definitely tired. Yeah. Look um, at his video this morning. He's he's real tired. Oh yeah. Yeah. I right. thought I was just a sad boy, but I was just, yeah, I was just gonna text a sad emoji. It's okay, Eric. You're you're good. Uh, I was, it was just six a.m. and my eyes were all puffy. Everyone's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm fine. I just look like a hot mess. That's all." I'm just nice, showing man. up for you, okay? I'm just being authentic, okay? <laughs> Love it, Love it dude. <laughs> Man, so good to talk to you. How, how you yeah, been? man, I'm good. I mean, just wanted to put a face to the uh, name, man. Um, it's so nice been, to finally do that. I know, DMing over like two years and everything. So, yeah. Uh, but no, doing good, man. Um, business has been growing. And it's been great just watching all you guys grow as well, which is really cool. So um, rad. But yeah, no. Um, so I don't know. I was just uh, I was just doing some work. I was working with the 606 presets as we speak. So I was let's just go. like, you know, let's. Uh, um, but I did have a question about diversification um, in yeah. your business. So, cause you've been really big on that the last couple of years. So <laughs> I was wondering, so I'm about two and a half years in now um, from once I started. Um, so I just want to know at, at that point or any point from then on, what do you wish you had started to get into diversification earlier with other things or like any advice on that? Um, Honestly, I, I can't complain for how it all went down because it just felt like all the stars aligned every single year. Um, and I honestly don't regret how it, how it went down. It feels like it's been a very intense growth period over the past six years, but nothing that I couldn't ever handle. Um, I was always like, I was the theater kid in high school, but I was also in sports. So like I would go to... I would go to jazz ensemble in the morning, full day of school, go to whatever sport I was in, and then musical or show choir all the way to like, I would do like 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And there, I had days like that in high school where I was just doing that kind of like grind, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I felt like that really, really laid a foundation for my ability to have that kind of endurance as an entrepreneur later in life really random example, but yeah, I don't know. There was, it just felt like there was something really profound there of me feeling that kind of intense day every once in a while to then experience it later. Because when I was teaching full-time and growing the business, we had our first kid, it was just chaos. Like I was coaching basketball as well. And I was like editing in the evenings, shooting on the weekends, making it work whenever I could sleeping for five, six hours a night um, at most. And in that sense, I don't recommend that. I don't think that's healthy now that I have a different perspective. I don't regret doing that because I have what I have now um, and I'm able to now have the comfort of not working, but now it's just always the competition of like, how do I work less? And how you know, like I get wrangled into things now that I'm like, I really didn't think I was going to get wrangled into it, but now I'm in it and I have to complete it. That's That's been the past three months for me, just... Lutz presets and the class all dropped all at the same time. Um, so I'm going to be entering into a few months of just like, oh. um, so that was a really long winded answer. Um, but really what I recommend is just like, don't, don't engage in stuff like have enough self-awareness to realize what your limit is. Cause everybody's just different. Like, yeah, I know that my limit is very different than other people that are even in this room. And I learned that last time we dropped the classroom, I was, I had terrible expectations for everyone because I was like, yeah, that's what, <laughs> look at this service. You almost poured that on my M1 Max. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> that, is a, um, that is a certified sommelier. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, the certified sommelier. Um, so you might I just want to know how many, how many wine bottles does Mike have? studio oh, right now at any one point at the studio i don't know but in his home he has over 100 i think what was that? wine bottles almost as oh. many kids as eric has so so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was good what was the question i didn't have my headphones on how many how many bottles of wine do you have in your home <laughs> oh i my wine cellar is close to 200 oh 200 now yeah no so i oh, like wow. when he joked about me being a sommelier like 
<laughs> like that's real talk. Like that's actually my future career is probably working in the wine industry. I make wine. I love wine. I love cider. Like wine is kind of my, my thing. We're drinking a 2015 uh, Rioja right now. Oh, it's beautiful year. Beautiful year. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that region. <laughs> that was good. Okay, sorry. I um, that. But no, yeah, man, I'm, I'm waiting for that Shark Tank episode where you come on and pitch Mr. Wonderful your uh, your wine idea. I'll be the one like <laughs> behind the scenes, and my wife will be the one pitching it. Yes. that's not me. She's like the business, like in front of. Yeah, no. I could so see Kristen <laughs> sticking it to Mark Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. My wife's more of a badass than me. I yeah. just like wine and know a lot about wine. All um, right, back to back the to the advice. It's it's ultimately just like having enough self awareness to realize what your capacity is, and uh, just just taking it one step at a time and having enough patience to see like. I think when I started YouTube and I started seeing success in it, I was like, okay, I see what the future could be. And I'm just going to keep taking like baby steps that are pretty intense that I know I can handle. And then I'm just going to keep taking those baby steps. And I don't know. It's just, it's gotten to a place over the course of five years now where I'm like, we're having opportunities. Like music bed just invited me to a, like a lake house and they're inviting Peter McKinnon as well. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't I don't feel like I should be there. I don't think Peter is going to show up, but like, um, did you just call him out? Oh no. Like, I don't think anyone's going to show up to that trip. Honestly, everyone's too busy. Peter's definitely on this live stream. So you, Oh yeah, for sure. Peter's here. Just Um, take the screen grab. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but yeah, Danny Gewurz was invited to that too. And we're shooting Danny's wedding that following weekend. We're like, there's no way you're going to go. And he's like, Oh yeah, no, I'm not going. Um, but even just like starting rally caps with Steven and getting to know more people, um, that's been huge in the diversification. I think that's a, that's a true sentiment through the whole process as well. It's just being in a room with people like this all the time has made it so much easier for myself. Like there's just literally no way I could be where I am without the people in this room supporting me the whole way. Um, and that might sound cheesy, but it's just reality. So no, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I do have one other question. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a good spot with weddings. So I I've been growing consistently and like, you know, listening to you and, uh, you know, David Renoso, all these other guys saying yes. like, if they could redo oh, it David. again, um, you know, it's slow growth, like taking the amount of people that you want being specific. And so I, I've been doing that. Um, but just getting to that point where I can really take that full jump to my business and quit all the other side jobs um, and whatnot. Um, it's almost kind of like frustrating because it feels like you're running a really slow race and you're like, I know where I'm going and I see the finish line, but I'm going so much slower than I want to at the point I'm at right now. Um, I don't know. So just like any, any tips when you were in like two to your year, two to three, um, where, cause you were just growing so exponentially. So if there's anything you could do to just get that like couple extra weddings per year or whatnot, um, yeah. So much of my growth phase was just saying yes to so many people and figuring mm-hmm. out like how I could say yes. And, and budget, like my Yosemite wedding was the biggest of them all with Tyler and Ellie, which is crazy. Cause we're about to make an insane YouTube video about this next month. Um, they have a business now, uh, roasting coffee. And like I made a YouTube video a while ago, how I booked that wedding and how I took a pay cut to do it. Um, and I rented a 5d mark four and had a Ron and M with the two handles and like went all out as hard as I could for that film. And it ended up being the portfolio piece that landed me like a dozen more films in the coming years because it was so profound. And I put so much heart and intentionality behind that story. Um, full circle, they have the business now and we're going to shoot a commercial for them. And the whole YouTube video is going to be this story arc of how I booked their wedding all the way to now serving them as a commercial client in tandem with a business that's sponsoring the YouTube video. Um, If I hadn't said yes to that thing, that one wedding, I would have never had the opportunities I have in what we're doing now and have this full circle moment. And I can't tell you how many arching stories I have like that with my career where I said yes to this one thing and it led to so many more opportunities. I think so many people struggle with like, that's not my price range. I'm worth more. And then they say no to that thing. But if they would have just negotiated and took like the little bit of a price cut and called it their marketing for that year or that month or whatever, yeah. they missed out on the potential of what 
work could have led to um, moving forward. I think it's honestly has the potential to be one of the most profound YouTube videos I make all year. And I think it's going to impact so many people with how beautiful it's going to be. I think we're going to use wedding film parts of their wedding film in the commercial. Like it's going to be crazy. Um, And to, to, to go to like my dadness and using a running metaphor. um, I'm sorry if this gets too nerdy, but I'm very into marathon running. That's how I am am too. I remember that's one of the first things we've learned on. Right. (laughs) Um, And so like to, to equate the Maffetone method and low heart rate training and marathon running is so counterintuitive. Like you need to run slow. Like yesterday I'm getting, I'm getting back out of shape after my last June marathon. I ran 12 miles yesterday at a way slower pace than I normally do. But I did that because I know that's the base that I need to develop in order to be fast on race day. And the majority of my training needs to be like 80% of my running training needs to be at a slower pace, building my aerobic engine. And that metaphor plays out in business. And that's why I love the metaphor of business creativity and running is that it's so counterintuitive so much of the time that you need to slow down and commit to the process. And when you actually commit to the process, when you get to those fast days, the hard workout days and the race days, you start ripping. And when you're able to have that opportunity, like the Yosemite opportunity, you show up on race day and you don't blow up. You actually achieve that PR or that goal. And it's the same deal with business. Like that opportunity presents itself with so much of like grinding to get that work and take the pick cut and do what you can to be grindy and get the stuff that when the, the big thing that you've been hoping for for so long comes, you show up and you're ready. And it just like all the stars align and it's just this magical thing that happens. So yeah, there's a whole lot of this, but I hope you got something out of that. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, man. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, well, I don't want to keep taking up time here, but I love you guys. You guys, you guys are awesome. Um, Eric, we're going to go for a run one day. Please. If, hey, whenever you guys come down to Nashville or near Chattanooga, if you guys need help, um, you come up here, bro. Me. Dude, I'll mm. come to Ch- I'll come to Chicago. I'm totally down. Dude, I, that was an invite. DM me, DM right. me whenever you. Yeah, we'll we'll figure that out. And and okay. when we're down, I hear you. When we're down there too. That's I okay. Hear. Yeah, yeah. Come down. I'll, I'm happy to hang with you guys. Wait, you're from you're from Nashville. Chattanooga is beautiful. Does he know I'm in Chattanooga. Um, it's beautiful there, dude. I mean, I know I know Josh um, Helton. Oh, um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I uh, second started with him last year. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, so I'm trying to connect with a little more people in the Nashville region because that's a little bit more higher price. Do you know, do you know than... Brad and Jen, photographers? It sounds try, really familiar. Try to connect with them, Brad and Jen. Okay. Um, they're tight with they're tight with Josh as well. Also, our really good friend David Wefflin. Yeah, but he's moving to Central America. He's still got a few months left. Yeah, <laughs> and he's coming back. Really cool. Um, guy. Do you guys know Sam Frawley? I don't think so. Okay. I know he needs Josh too. I don't know, but um, sweet. Well, yeah, I'll drop my username in the chat here. But um, yes, please. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was, it was great hanging out with you guys. <laughs> so good Sick. to chat with you, yeah, Spencer. Spencer. Hey, Thanks yeah. for calling in. Sick. All right. See ya. Uh, oh, all right, man. this next one is special. Is it? I, dude, all I know is this next person. I want to know what the heck they are cooking. Because y'all might not know, but I oh oh. Oh, oh, oh I'm so <laughs> what the heck? <they're> <laughs> bro, like, unmute your microphone, bro. Unmute, you, unmute your microphone. I, I just want to know what you have been cooking because I can see your videos. I know if, you're, if your video is on. Oh, you can see it? Oh, shit. yeah, dude. I, only I can. Only I can. Though. Okay. So, well, so I'm just everybody, the like, comment is pinned. Join us in the live stream, and I want to watch you cook. Because if you don't <laughs> know, I love cooking. Okay, what what's Wait, your name, us. my man? What's your name? Uh, you can call me Jallo. Starts with a G, though. Jallo. Jallo. So Gallo. Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Inside joke. How are you guys doing? Well, I was just cooking for dinner and lunch for tomorrow. Epic. Oh. So, just where, where are you calling him from? Uh, from L.A. Los Angeles. Oh, sick. Are and what are cooking? you cooking? You got to tell um, us. Some beef steak marinated stuff like Ooh. that. Ooh. Ooh. With sauce in it, vinegar. Mm. Um, okay. Too bad flights are expensive right now. I'm yeah. What would you say? I said too bad flights are expensive right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is, though. 
But uh, well, what's up, Eric? Just, How's it going, man? Dude, good, good, good. I just uh, want to say thank you first and um, uh-huh. congratulate you for the for the classroom, man. It's it's thank been you, awesome. Man. I've been I've been like binge watching it, studying hard of it. Like I just finished the act one so far. I mean, on a wedding, BT, uh, wedding BTS now. When did you enroll? Earlier this week? Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. I think okay. I so. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. When you announce it, I mean, the pay. Okay, yeah. Dating about it because financially, I was about you know, I I so I sold my Robin Hood money a little bit. Okay. To reinvest it in a better things, you know, it's been so, red. So, so yeah. I have to reinvest it in a better ways. So, Man, yeah. it's so good to hear that positive feedback. I like, I love hearing when people say that they finished Act One and they're loving it because then I'm like, dude, oh, it, that's, it not, great. that's not it's, the best it's, part. It's, like, it's been, just wait for two and three. <laughs> oh yeah, um, oh, yeah, about that. I know I haven't been finishing everything, but yeah, I'm just um. So my question would be, um, hold on, I wrote it down so just in case I get I love it. <laughs> no, Thanks. I just wanna, I just wanna ask if like how to. Like I'm literally starting. I don't know where to start, and mm-hmm. I've been emailing photographers to so I can second shoot. So mm-hmm. I got an opportunity to do a second shoot recently, awesome. which is you know it was an awesome experience, and um, yeah, just to you know get my name out there. But then still, I am still struggling to just just you know like get some inquiry. Just inquiries is gonna make me happy, but nothing's coming in. Yep. So far, so I just want to know how to like any ideas or like you know one of the most profound things i heard from an educator when i so what sparked me starting the classroom was me going to a workshop called workshop in brooklyn three years in a row Mm -hmm. i went 2016 17 and 18 and in the 2017 year or actually i think it was the first year i sat in a class for a few people that completely transformed my career um and taught me the baseline of what I teach now. But one of those classes was with a photographer named Max Wenger. And I talk about this in the classroom, so you'll hear it. It's in a a later module in module eight, Um, but, or module nine. But he, uh, he talked about, he brought this leather book. It was this leather bound book and it like had added pages and cutouts and like all sorts of stuff. And he's like, this is my creative book. Like it's my inspirational book. It's where I do all my creative ideas, everything. He's like, every single shoot I do, I cut stuff up, I glue it in here, I draw all over it, and I find inspiration for every single shoot I do in this book. Um, He then talked about when he first started his career, wedding photography wasn't really a popular thing. It was, he, he was right on the first forefront of people starting to do wedding photography different. And he, he asked his sister and her boyfriend to model as a wedding couple. And he, he bought like a dozen red balloons and had her in a yellow dress. And he planned this in his little scrapbook that he still had. And he, he faked a wedding with them. And he ran around a park and took these photos with balloons. And it was just like this very different thing that no one had ever seen before. And I'm not saying like you doing a shoot exactly like this would work yeah. today, but that creative mindset is what got him into that career because from that one shoot, it catapulted his career into starting shooting weddings. And he booked like 30 that year and it went crazy. So what I took from that, what I took from that, that's where I um, started my phrase, lean into what makes you different. I wrote that in my notebook, hearing him, hearing like, if I have a creative idea, I need to act on it and try it out. And if things aren't coming in for me, I need to make stuff happen. So for you, I would, highly recommend finding people or couples if you want to shoot portraits or weddings i would find couples that you already know and just say hey yeah. do you want to like get like i just literally just did this this past week with josh and tina it's a video that's going to be coming out on my youtube channel i asked and they got married last year i was like can we do a like a fake wedding portrait session with you to show how to shoot at right. golden hour and blue hour that's and cool. we just got i posted it on my instagram uh, a couple days ago uh we shot some photos on film with them we shot digital. It was a gorgeous scene that night. And you just have to make stuff like that happen. Right, right. Prove that you can do it and start convincing people that you are that photographer that can handle shooting portraits, shooting a wedding, 
and continuing to do what you're doing and what you said and getting second shooting opportunities, assisting opportunities, because those people will start referring you to more second shooting jobs yeah. and then lead shooting jobs from there. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you, Matt. It's just, uh, yeah, just excited to finish the class. So again, so, congratulations and thank you. Um, cheers for you guys. Cheers. Cheers, brother. Everyone. Thank you so much for enrolling. Thank you, hard work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for investing in yourself, man. Uh, that'll be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take All right. care. So sweet. Woo! I this is so good, man. man. It is just so sweet. I love talking to people who are interested in the classroom, who are taking the classroom. Just a couple of people have already told me on this enrollment period that they have gone through the first few modules or the first act, which is the first four mm -hmm. modules, and they're like, uh, it's it's so nutrient rich and i agree technically the first four modules so nutrient rich yeah. in shooting and gear and all the yep. technical things but like really the magic happens in the middle and end section when i start getting into creativity and philosophy and business like that's the stuff i'm uber passionate about and all the stuff that i feel like makes the classroom different than like everyone mm -hmm. in the other course we have how many yeah new enrollments that's right okay we're we're getting the last hour and a half and we got people who are still enrolling let's go we have i can't tell if this is esno or esho esho esho, esho. we have michael esho enrolling in the photo class let's go let's go michael the esho the the oh. Oh. <laughs> i don't know why i have to make the noise with my mouth too <laughs> uh, but we also have paul yoon who's also in the photo classroom let's go Let's go. Oh, I need some energy. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so Paul Yoon. Hey, Paul Yoon, Michael Esho, thank you for investing in yourself, being a part of this. Please, everybody, don't forget to uh, sign up for the Facebook group. Ask to join with your order number. I'll get you in there. Make sure you start uh, connecting with people, communicating with people, getting referrals in there. Reach out to people. Ask questions. All those good things. It's community. We want to keep building that. It's over 150 people. At this point now, it's, it's going to be over 160 people. Um, so many people in there, so much value in that group. And we also have, I want to make sure I say this correct, Fathana Fan, I think. Fathana Fan. I bought the bundle, both photo and video. Let's go. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for enrolling in the bundle. I hope you get so much out of both sides. Um, and again, also make sure you are getting in the Facebook group and getting the value there as well. Um, mind blowing. Okay. We have lots of people who have already enrolled this evening. Remember Braxton's giving away a second shooting opportunity to anybody that enrolls tonight. Yes. Yeah, so if anyone that has bought the course during the duration of this live stream, one of you guys will be able to second shoot a wedding with me. So sick. It'll be so much fun. Everybody, I'm let's go. <laughs> Steven is going to give away five boxes of 400H. <laughs> Listen, brother, I don't have that kind of money on hand. That's like $4 million. Douglas, I see you in the chat. I see you, Douglas. I love you. Okay. Um, do we have a, anybody else waiting? Or that's, a, that's it? Maybe. Join. Hey, if you want to join oh, yeah. our live stream and hey, jump on have... video, we are here. We are hanging out we, for the next hour, hour and 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, we Miraculously, we let's over an go. Hour doing this, we so. want to hear from you. You don't need a question. Let's just hang out. We got another hour and 10 minutes. I'm not going to bring you up unless you have video. There's some people in here. I'm going to be honest. They don't have their video on. Maybe they don't have video as an option. Then comment that in the video in the in the. We could take an audio feed. one. Let's try an audio one. They might be too scared to go okay. video. Okay, they're both muted and the. All right, here we All go. Right. Let's try just All audio. Right. Let's go. Who do we have? You are here. Calling in. Hello. Are you here, Terry? It it's me again, actually. Oh, it's hey! you. <laughs> I didn't realize I, I, it was the same guy. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> didn't want to say no, so I don't want to take you guys' time. I know you guys have plenty of people in here. So oh, gonna, you can come back to me it? after, give some people some more time, but I'm just here uh, soaking up oh. knowledge. I'm actually remodeling my website as we speak. I, love uh, I don't know it. if you guys can see the packages. Yes. So all I of the packages that. are being remodeled yes, right sir. now. Okay. 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 okay, Terry, can I jump in real quick with your packages? When you said you had four packages, to be honest, when you started explaining them, it sounded overwhelming. Right. 
Like, I'm just going to be real honest. Like, it sounded okay. overwhelming. So I, I'm just going to, again, do what you want. Test your market. See what works. Simplify. Simplify. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> not stupid. Sorry. That's yeah, no, no, I know, I, I know the phrase. Myself. Keep it simple. That, I'm not calling yeah. you stupid. You're not stupid. No, I'm I, stupid. I, Keep I, it simple, I know the phrase, stupid, Michael. <laughs> so that's why I, I know the phrase. Myself. Kiss. Yeah. So like yeah. that's and and honestly, like when you're talking to everybody, like I I I think. Hey, Kristen, can I add you to the stream real quick? I'm adding you in. So my wife just jumped on. She's I'm so. Hey, babe. Hey, hottie. What's up? <laughs> so Kristen runs the marketing. Do we have three tier packaging as well? You're muted, Chris. Yeah, you're muted. Turn your microphone on. I fixed it. Great. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, like how Eric said, it's like some people will book this. It's low tier. Not many people are going to book it. But like they're like, uh, it's like, okay, I don't need to shop at Walmart. I'm going to go to Target, but I definitely don't got to shop at Gucci. <laughs> so like – What's that? What's that like? I don't know. So maybe it's just a little too complicated. Maybe it's simplifying things. Make sure the language, like honestly, show me your website again, real quick. Just like flash your sure. camera towards it. No problem. This is the bronze package. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the wording. Mm -hmm. That's the silver. Yeah. Right there. This will be the gold. Yeah, I can tell you right off the bat, just by you scrolling up the website, there's too many words. Too many words. words. You need more bold points. You need clear communication, and you need to just like honestly, it just it feels like a lot of the same. Nobody's gonna read it. Like I, so, I went to school. I studied. I have a master's degree in digital technology. How people interact and create and like engage with digital things. That many words on a page like that. We need to see more simplified and more hierarchical. Uh, thing. So basically like bronze package and maybe honestly, to be honest, I'm just going to get real. It's now 11 PM here and I'm just feeling real. Maybe you can come up with a, a more creative and original term for that. Everybody uses, you know, bronze, gold, silver, or whatever the order is. It's like, maybe there's a different naming structure. Maybe there's a way for you to say your title, have them understand what you mean and just clearly state what it is and the value you're bringing to each one and basically saying why well, I should pick the middle one. Makes sense. And your the only thing, clients, yeah, we'll go yeah, on. The only thing I wanted to ask was um, what do you guys consider important? Because I haven't been doing this uh, too long, uh, weddings. So like you say, indeed, I, I do think it's a little lengthy in wording, but then I don't know what those bullet points really should be. You know, so for instance, I, I did make so, the change. So I'm going to jump in. Right now, there are a lot of successful people doing a lot of successful things. Mm -hmm. Go and study them. I'm not saying copy them. I'm saying study them. Go look to see what they find important. And, and, and maybe it's not people who are in New York because New York people are very different than St. Uh, Martin people. So mm -hmm. what are people who are – finding success in who you would say is a similar vibe, similar person as you and go study them. What is it that they're saying is important? So, and go, okay, great. When I go to their website, how do I feel? What do I want them to feel when I land on my website? Cause people act like statistically speaking, people will act more on their feelings rather than their logic. So you want them to feel something when they see something, they want to feel like they're being taken care of. They want to feel like they're your family. They want to feel like, they're getting something bigger than just a photo, bigger than just a video. What is it? So study them. Go to Eric's website. What does he talk about? Go to my website. Right what now. do I talk about? You know? What is your website? What is your Mine website? Is really just michaelandkristen.com. It's simple. Mike. It's clean. Yeah. Uh, K. Kristen is with an I N. But. Kristen, what do you have to say? Yeah, Kristen, jump in. You're the actual like guru at marketing. Not even. Um, moving on. So uh, the one <laughs> thing is the reason I hesitated about the whole idea of is because we moved to 
creating custom price on our website. You'll see if you click on pricing, we have a manifesto of like our philosophy. And then at the very bottom, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom of that because I want to see the pricing. I see the pricing and then it's only starting pricing. So when I and my goal is to get every single couple on a call or meeting in person. And so when I do that, I, I'm even though I, ha I literally have a list of packages, but when I'm mm -hmm. talking to them, I want them to feel like I made the package for them. Even if I okay. have that I already pick from. And what we used to do before we, I feel like kind of at the price point, we're actually really just like cater to what they actually want. But before that, we were actually creating that three tier packaging that we would send. And we we're doing um, like these stupid, silly names that were related to their, um, like who they are. So great. Yeah, so we would stop, listen to them on our phone call. And then when we build them a quote, all of our package names were customized to who they were. So if they talked about loving travel, and but then we knew where they were from, we would be like, okay, like locally. And then it was like slightly out. And then it was like international. Or if they had a dog, or if, it was, if they were into cars, it, we would literally change the package names based on who they were to build and customize so they felt heard and understood and loved. The other thing that I do I'm not saying you need to do that, but... I always ask no, no, I got you. I always ask their budget because if you like, oh, you want to. It's a little hard to hear you, Kristen. Sorry. It's because it's against the computer. Is that better? Yeah, better. Um, I always ask them their budget, and people will hesitate to give you a but like a number because they don't want to. They <laughs> they want you to like come up with something. Always. But if you just throw out like a ridiculous number. They will always be like, oh, no, you know, you're like, like, so you're like, what's your budget? And they're like, oh, I don't know. So I'm like, OK, cool. Is it 10K? They're no, like, oh, no, 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 it's not 10K. I was like, 5K? Oh, well, you know, I'm like, 3K? Because they're like, we're getting closer. If you know their okay. budget, you can actually build your packages out so that that middle package is their close to their budget. So I would always build a package that was a little bit over what their budget is. I would have another package that's lower than their budget that doesn't have everything that they want. And then I would have a high package that was like, great, if they book this, super. Um, so you're saying for wedding clients, you would pitch them different packages? That's what it was just going to not, not standardized so not really packaging? not website packages? Yeah. Because I would do it based on what they were wanting. So on your website, what do you put then? A starting, starting price. A starting price. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, got you. Got you. Got you. And again, this is what Kristen, again, Kristen runs the marketing for our wedding business. So this is what she has found has worked over the last six years of doing this for our business. She has tried many different things. Yeah. And and so like you need to test. This is not a one size fits all. We live in Chicago, which is different than St. Martin. So yeah, because I was just gonna ask about another pricing strategy where um like just testing. For instance, having a thousand dollar base price. Uh, that's just the base. That's just before any packages. And then let's say tier one would be like three hundred dollars added. Tier two would be. 500 to three would be like nine or something. Yeah. So, um, something like that. I was thinking as well, yeah. but it sounds way better the way Kristen says, cause then you it usually does to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen whenever Kristen says sense. something, it always sounds a lot better whenever she says anything. <laughs> yeah. It, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. It really does. And I see it does say here starting uh, for anybody else in the stream that wants to see Kristen and, Michael's site, it is absolutely beautiful, big images. Oh my, God, my man. Um, really nice, man. I love just the very first page. Our heart is to capture what matters most to you. Thank you, thank you guys, man. And Eric, yeah. Eric, I didn't see your site up. Uh, um, is there a site for your wedding? 
<laughs> EricFloberg.com. Yeah, just, yeah, just Eric my name, EricFloberg.com. Yeah, I'm here, but it only has access to the classroom life. Um, I'm not able to go anywhere else. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay, you just have to click, click out of that, and then, yeah, if you just click okay. off of that. Yep. Yep. Got you now. And then over by films, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That, and that's my video work on the film section. So there's the photo stuff. There's about, yeah, try to keep it super yeah. simple. So you don't have pricing on your website? I do, I do under the about section. Yep. About. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then I, I, I just keep, uh, I just keep my starting prices, but the model of my marketing at this point for weddings is very much in the niche of only people who really, really, really want to work with me. So that's my specific target is to not use, not use a ton of strategies. Most other people use. I, um, it is totally up to you. I don't know everything you guys talked about, um, because I stepped out to go to the restroom, but, um, it is really advantageous to share at least some form of pricing to let them know what the baseline is in my opinion. Um, and, and that's always been beneficial for me. Uh, but what's most beneficial for me outside of that, for that, just being a starting point and letting them know what's valuable or, uh, what, what your value is at or what your price point generally is at, and then getting them into a consultation, a face-to-face -face interaction face time, or yep. a, a personal meeting to then really just be like, okay, let's actually talk. Um, and if, if you need to negotiate in that circumstance or any time after, that's when you can do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my recommendation as, as far as pricing goes. Makes Terry, complete. Terry, glad we got back sense. on here with you, bro. That was awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you guys. You're Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Hey, get better. Right, then, bye. Feel Take better. Care, bye. bye. Take care. Such a sweet guy. Terry, my guy. Yeah. All right. Keep going. I love that he kept that near. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't realize it was him. It, yeah. Man, everyone's a legend for staying in here and being in here all the way through. Who's going to midnight? Who's going to midnight? Come on. That's right. Come me. On. What's up? Oh, bless you, Braxton. Oh, Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. I totally oh, we have more people. Live. We have way more people in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to take Q&A or do you want to keep going live? Uh, I'll go Q&A for a little bit. What all right, let's go. Q&A. Where are Q &A. the questions at? Where them questions at? Talk Show to up. me. Will, will this be posted it. on my channel? Yeah, for at least a week, I think it'll be posted on my channel. I think it'll it'll live in here for a while. Um, I did a honestly a pretty valuable uh, little lesson at the beginning, uh, basically a modified version of module ten in the classroom. But it's like a shortened version of it um, with diversification and how to market your business, diversify it, um, get it out there, how to start, how to maintain. Um, yeah, so I'll see. I, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to land on leaving these live streams up because, yeah, uh, there are, there's a lot of other content we made this week uh, that's in, insanely valuable as well. I feel like the how to start as a – or how, how to um, go full-time as a wedding photographer, the one we dropped on Thursday, I believe, is just chock full of a lot of the information I use in the classroom, a, a shortened version of that that just isn't expanded on. Um, Jenna said, this is the best live stream. Thank you for the wealth of knowledge. You're welcome, Jenna. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Hope you're still here. Um, uh, a question that we missed, uh, Justin Babcock, what do you guys think about short form vertical videos inside of wedding packages? Uh, oh, yeah. I can. So, yeah. so something that I've done in the past, I don't, I don't really, I don't have it on my, I'm not offering it currently, but when people ask me this, I do do it. And um, do -do. when I shoot for other, yeah, Sorry. <laughs> when, Sorry. No, 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 you got me, you got me on that one. And when, um, when I've also been hired out by other people to do this as well is clients will ask for like a wedding trailer. My current delivery time for a wedding film is two to four months. That's about as quick as I can get a wedding film out to a client that I shoot for. Um, so a lot of times they'll pay extra to get a wedding trailer. I usually promise like a 30 to 60 second edit um, of just like very, very highlight of the highlights of their wedding day. Put that all into a small edit and send that off to them within like a week or two of their wedding just so they can see something and get that posted to their social media channels. Um, actually, it would be very intriguing to edit that in a short form – or not a short form, a vertical form 
uh, instead of, you know, our typical horizontal, you know, because uh, brides are posting the reels these days and stuff. I actually have a former bride that went very viral on both Instagram reels and TikToks um, because she posted some vertical video that we shot of her wedding day and ended up getting picked up by People Magazine. And it got like 10 million views on TikTok. Um, oh so definitely something to uh, look into. You could definitely offer in your packages um, like a wedding trailer type deal. Put that into vertical instead of horizontal so they can post that to all their social channels that way. All right. The most important question of the night Will you, uh, do you ever think you'll collab with Frono's photo and Kai Wong? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw me and Steven were dying laughing <laughs> at that question. Yes. Frono's. Froyo. <laughs> we That's, all shoot film and we shoot uh, J- Jared Poland makes fun of a lot of film photographers. So I don't think we would vibe very well. Yeah, I don't think, I honestly. But I do, I do appreciate Jared Poland because I appreciate people who aren't, who are willing to speak their mind no matter what. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jared is very willing to speak his mind no matter how you feel and how Steven, others feel. Steven coming in with the coffee. <laughs> he, he just came in with a pot of coffee. Hey, yeah. tell us tell us what you just made. Made some, uh, let's see, from Metric. Wait, microphone. Oh, microphone. <laughs> he, it is that late. He needs it. <clears throat> uh, we're making a little bit of a metric colorized. Uh, metric is our favorite coffee shop in Chicago. Colorized yeah, is a much. natural process That's Ethiopian, Ethiopian yeah. coffee. Oh, baby. So. Natural process Ethiopia, favorite type of bean. And I am pouring that into a whiskey glass. Yay! What a natural oh, process yeah. means. 11 is that p.m. After the coffee is harvest, they lay the beans out and with the fruit. So coffee is a, like a cherry, and the seed is the bean. We have a new enrollment. Yes, we do. It means that the coffee's good. We're writing it down. Oh, yeah. We're writing, we're writing it down. We're down the enrollment. Yep. It's in the chat. Let me we're keep about talking to shout about it out. Coffee. Oh, we're about to shout it so out. So then. Coffee's great. They. No. <laughs> I don't have the name yet, so I I'm talking about coffee. Enough. Okay, loud noises. Um, yeah, my two day workshop, right when COVID started, we did a whole section where Mike showed everybody how to do a pour over a coffee. How to. <laughs> It was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was. So special. they dry the no, okay, that's oh my the gosh, sun <laughs> on the fruit. <laughs> also, All right, we have a new enrollment, and then it gives us more fruity aroma. New okay, enrollment. I'm so sorry, Leticia, if I say your last name right, but I'm going to go for it. Leticia. 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 You're, you're so sorry if you Leticia. say your name right. Lahulie. Lahulie. Hey! Leticia, welcome to the classroom. Um, you got the photo classroom. Thank you for enrolling. You are potentially going to be second shooting a wedding with Braxton. Yes, you are. I haven't even considered if anyone is around the world that they would need to fly here to do that with you. Maybe they just have a mentor session with you instead. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out. Maybe um, maybe they don't want to shoot with Braxton. Yeah, maybe they don't like Braxton. <laughs> I mean, if you don't. Cut to Braxton. If you don't, it's okay. It's okay. I still love you. <laughs> I'm dying inside. Hey, thank you for enrolling. Uh, as I've said with everybody who has enrolled in this live stream, make sure to get in that Facebook group because there's so much value there. Over 160 people at this point um, and going strong. Community, questions, all that good stuff. Um, oh, I just saw someone said Brian Burks is in the chat. Where's Brian Burks? Brian Burks has been in the chat for a, a, a minute. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, man. Big fan, Brian Burks, if you're still in here. Aw. Fellow, fellow 4x5 <laughs> cheater over here. Um, yeah, Braxton... Uh, Yep. Braxton uh, is definitely in your realm of work in large format. Yeah. I mean, like, if you see me in person, you know I'm compensating for my height with my large <laughs> negatives. So that's why I shoot 645. <laughs> that's why I shoot half. <laughs> oh, wow. We have New Zealand in the house, too. That's oh, amazing. Dude, chat's okay. popping Do off we, right now. I know. Seriously. Jeez. Why did that go so crazy? The, the, yeah, the comments just went. Bonkers. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait. One more from Hugo. Which question on Joe's documentary. How did we budget such an ambitious project? Uh, we've well, been that's paying. That's a great question. It's a great question. We've been paying for everything out of pocket in hopes that some brand would come in and fund it. So I have just been paying out of pocket for everything so far. Or Steven. potentially not a brand, but rather an actual proper investor mm-hmm. who's looking to buy a portion of the documentary or invest money into it, which we are. 
currently chatting about mm-hmm. with an actual potential investor. Yeah. And Steven and I... Um, and Steven keeps talking like this. <laughs> it is really late. late. <laughs> it is that. Uh, we, All right, we're going to do some rapid fire questions great, great, where great. we are oh, each okay. <laughs> we are each going to answer it in a sentence. It can be a run on sentence, but one sentence. Good, because each that, of us are? Each, each, each of us are, yes. It can be a yeah. fragment. Oh, and, so and, quickly. And, and, and I, I'm right, saying There's quickly. too many noises. Ready? Here we go. Eric, you're going to start. We're going to go around the room. Okay. Okay. Lizzie's life. How can you attract the clients you want? Go. You have to shoot the work that you want to book. I agree with that. And I think you need to use language on your website and keywords on your website that people who that will want to hire you will use that same language to find you. Share the work that you want to shoot. For commercial, cold emails for weddings, uh, email the planners and vendors that are already in that space. I think everything's pretty much covered, but the (laughs) other tidbit that I want to say is uh, continue to try new things in, in your creative process that could make you stand out different. Sorry. I'm just over here silently trying to block all of the spam in the chat. My bad. I know. Same. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm trying to find the right question. Block the spam. Block the spam. Block the spam. Amazing. Did you have? Um, What's the next question? Sorry, I'm. Do you already have on the it. rapid fire? No, uh, sorry. This is. Oh, this is so rapid. Wait, do we have anybody? Do we have anybody else in mentoring? Ready? Yeah, to go? yeah. Let's go. Ready? Yeah, let's do mentoring. Ready? Get right, set. Ready? Who do we have? Here, here's your screen. And. <laughs> hello, we hello. Have... What's up? Can you turn the screen a little bit more, Mike? There we go. <laughs> We can stick to Who do we have here? More than five I'm Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Guys. Where Sorry are you calling him from? The quality, the light is not the best, but oh, I can okay. hear you well. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you great. Yeah, I can hear you great. Awesome, awesome. It's I'm in Chicago, so it's pretty oh, late here. <laughs> you go. guys are keeping it up. I love it. What neighborhood are you in? Are you in North Side, uh, South Side, Downers West Side? Grove. Downers Grove. Okay, great. Suburbs. Let's go. Yeah, I actually just follow everything you guys do. Um, I'm trying to get that free education from YouTube. Mm-hmm. So thank you for all that. Of course. Um, I'm a wedding photographer here. Uh, I shoot 103 weddings this year. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, you have to expand on that. How? So um, I collaborate with three bigger companies and i have my own weddings as well um out of those 103 weddings is like 30 around so you're you're rich no i'm not (laughs) (laughs) i wish but yeah um um it's super busy i i started wedding photography like during covid that was my first wedding but i come from sports photography so um photography photographer for like seven years now before my first wedding i i I educate myself a lot about weddings mainly in hungary and romania um i'm a hungarian guy who grew up in transylvania so i have all my vampire dracula jokes for wedding days nice (laughs) and people love me a lot and um that's great yeah. and living the dream here <laughs> that's awesome man i mean my only hesitation to hearing you say you shoot 103 whenever i hear anybody that shoots more than 60 i always have to warn them be careful be careful not to burn yourself out because I I, I that's not that's sustainable long. i'm just gonna be honest with you 103 weddings a year is not sustainable um, I know what you're saying, and trust me, if I will edit all those 103 weddings, it will be I will be burned out by now. But um, I try to, when I collaborate with uh, companies, to never edit their photos, mm-hmm. never put that time into the business. So I'm I'm being paid less by doing that. So I'm basically yeah. having, I am usually the lead photographer, and they have like a bigger team, you know, Mm -hmm. and I have a second shooter and a video in the same package. And um, um, so this is with companies. And um, 
it's just you you just talk to with the with the clients like two three times in case if they need more help um and just shoot their wedding day deliver all the raw files and that's it and yeah. I, will, I shoot my own weddings um yeah of course i need to edit them talk with them and all this stuff but like i said those are like 30 weddings out of 100 something so yeah what's your hourly coverage like like how many hours per wedding are you shooting well, depends on which company I'm with, but usually it's 12 hours. So they burn the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but, man, that's um, impressive. Yeah. You, the, the, the average one is like 8 to 10 hours. So I try to not do more. Uh, but mm, I, I started shooting with companies just for learning, just to, to create a portfolio and all this stuff. But now I just um, have a super strong portfolio. I this is my last year in Chicagoland, and um, where are you headed to next? I'm moving to Denver. That's my oh, plan. Wow. I try to start from zero there. So, wish me good luck. <laughs> good luck, man. Well, good luck, man. Denver's a cool spot. Yeah, I, I miss my mountains, and I really want those. Oh yeah, yeah. Dreamy, you know. Yeah, yeah trust team, I feel that. I live 12 hours away from my mom. Just be careful not to overwhelm yourself, okay? Promise me. I will. I, I, keep, I will keep my promise. I promise. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, it's great chatting with Don't you, man. Don't promise yeah. with your dad. Thank you for everything you guys do. I love the vibe. I love the vibe. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. You have Take care in the suburbs. <laughs> Hold on. Next one, you have to do Douglas. Was Douglas? Did Douglas leave? Oh, Douglas was in the chat and then he left. Wait, is he still there? Oh, bummer. He's my college friend. I had a feeling based off of the chat. Too. I have a couple chats. Yeah. Couple chats. Couple chats. Can, can couple we chats. please talk a little bit Wait, about what you pause? Want? Pause. Because we only have forty minutes left until enrollment closes. That's a really good point. This is. A moment where if you are still on the fence, you do need to make a decision. I do not want you to be too late and the door is closed and you're not in. So just want to make sure that that is said. For only about 40 minutes left until enrollment closes in the classroom. There's the photo package, full photo course, full filmmaking course, or a bundle with 50% savings. Um, anybody who enrolls is going to be called out on the live stream so we can thank you. Um, you have full access to the Facebook group uh, where we have over 160 people in there. Um, Facebook group is popping all day, every day. And, thi true. and this year, me, Steven, and Mike are going to be much more active in the group as well. Which is By exciting. that, we mean active at all. It's going to be really fun. We're very <laughs> excited about that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I just need to make sure that that's known so you guys don't miss that if you're on the fence. And like I said in my video today, if you can't afford it, if it's not move, a move for you right now, it's totally understandable. Um, it's, to, it's targeted for the people who are looking for creative inspiration in their actual work, in their business, in their artistic work, in their business, um, and then also building a philosophy and their why behind the work that you do. Um, I think that's where uh, the legs of the project are. Um, and enrolling will, uh, will benefit you in, in those um, Categories. So perfect segue to the next question. I'm throwing oh. up a question. Can you please talk a little bit about what you mean by the philosophy of business? Yes. Um, so the core philosophy I always talk about is serving your clients. And it was brought up in the last live stream on Thursday where someone was like, what if you have to deal with a bridezilla? What if you have to deal with someone who is just being totally out of whack? And the truth is like, you just, you never know where someone is at in their life, what kind of stress they're experiencing. Um, and it's really easy to jump to conclusions in, in a wedding day where you look at someone and just say like, you're not my vibe. Um, you're, you're being disrespectful to the people around you. Like anything you can run into that might rub you the wrong way on a wedding day, whether it's your client or someone that's around them. And if that's the case, um, I implore you to think back to the idea that you like you're you're there to serve. You're there to do a job, or whether that's taking still images or motion picture through filmmaking. And 
you're there to capture that day for them and to serve them and to benefit them in that way. And if you're not there to do that, then you're simply just not doing your job. And what I want to constantly reiterate is that it's, it's just not about us in this realm of work. Um, it's about the people that are in front of our cameras. Um, and I gave the example of some, uh, a bride I had in, back in 2017 who had a really tough day emotionally um, with her family and friends. Came up to me at the reception and apologized for her behavior that day and said that we were her favorite vendors and out of everybody and that she was really sorry for the way she acted earlier in the day. Um, I took a moment when she was kind of freaking out earlier in the day to just take a, a, a second to, to, to take a portrait of her. Um, and that portrait was what was ended up, um, what we ended up using at her funeral because she passed away a year after uh, her wedding. And so you just never know what kind of impact you're going to have on a family. Um, when you do this kind of work, you never know. We went to that funeral and I talk about this within the classroom. I talk about this in the philosophy modules. Like her sister came up to me and she's kept up with me on Instagram and online and, she always reiterates to me that she'll um, she'll never forget like what we were able to to give to her and her family, and I gave her a huge embrace and a hug at the funeral. And there's it's it just goes so far beyond like what we do ourselves. And so that's just always what I want to share, even if you feel like triggered or mad or frustrated by your own clients or the people that you're working around, just always showing up, realizing that life is so fragile and that what we do is important to people and our families. So before I get way too emotional or more emotional, that's what I care about most. That's what we built the classroom on. And to have that juxtaposed with all this freaking spam in the chat is just so frustrating. Yeah, I've been here blocking it and stuff. Uh, thank you. Um, but yeah, um, that's what I mean by philosophy. That's what I mean by showing up for your clients. And I hope that you guys, like if you follow my work, I hope that that resonates with you or that you've seen that, um, you've seen me talk about that. And that is what drives you as well or that you're contemplating that in your business now. And that should be the driving force of, I just am convinced that that should be everybody's driving force. Um, that's just how I feel as an educator in this space. So. Um, Nathan is in here. Nathan Ninomia, who who won our music bed wedding filmmaking competition. Oh, let's go! Legend, classroom OG. Nathan, I looked up. Nathan was the first person to ever enroll in the classroom. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow! And absolute legend. Dude's been killing it. I've seen your stuff on yes. Twitter, bro. Nathan, you have been destroying. Okay, he says, "What lenses have you been using with the C70 R5 for weddings?" 15 to 35. Um, I know the C200 uses 16 to 35 with Super 35, but your lens choice has been different with the RF mounts now. I've pretty much tried to emulate the C200 on the C70 with the 15 to 35 RF almost exclusively, that and the 50 mil, and that's about it. Um, because it's those two lenses like have enough range, unless I wanted to slap the 7200, which I did a bit in New York, with the IBIS on that lens. Insane. Steven did a video on it recently. Talk about it, Steven. Talk about 7200 because you're passionate about that. He's so passionate about it. I do love that lens that I do not actually own, but I've yes. borrowed the lens and I rent it quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, it is one of the coolest and most versatile lenses that Canon has made for the RF mount. So I think if you are a Canon mirrorless shooter, you should absolutely consider that lens as an option for your kit. Very, very good for photo and video. The image stabilization and IBIS combination is kind of ridiculous uh the range is incredible and i finally understand why people have been so enamored with that 70 to 200 range for so long so definitely check it out if you are in the canon rf ecosystem very very good so good yep so good. honestly if I, i'm thinking about just going 15 to 35 50 prime and 70 to 200 kind of moving forward until they come out with a 35 prime which i would want almost exclusively for photography i think and then I probably want to pick up the 85 prime too. So much money. It's a lot. Of, yeah, it's a lot. Okay. It's just, I, yeah, I don't know. I just love having a suite of prime lenses to shoot photos. Can you blame me? No. Yes. But also, okay. no, that's great. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have anybody else waiting? Yeah. yeah oh yeah. We have some more people waiting. Okay. You want to jump back in and chat with some peeps? 
All right, here we go. What do we got? Hey, uh, unmute your microphones because we can't hear you uh, when you're in the backstage anyway. So unmute them. So then when I go to click on you, yeah, thank you. Thank you. And here we go. Jamie, what up, bruh? Hey, how's it going, guys? Jamie, what's up? What's yeah, up? Just just living the dream, having a having a Guinness and a magic bullet cup, you know, living Cheers. The, uh, That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Guinness. Well, Stephen was drinking beer out of a wine glass last Thursday, so There's amazing. No shame, yeah. Right? Well, I hope it was the right wine glass. <laughs> yeah. I feel like y'all are just making fun of me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't at all. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so many all right. Whatever. Whatever. Jamie, where are you calling in from? I'm calling Jamie, in from right? uh, the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia. Whoa! Wow. Way up north, eh? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. You know, I just I decided that I'd uh, try to dress as much like the Great White North as possible and really blend yes. into the wall tonight. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, I didn't I didn't choose the right background like you with the with the same shirt color. Yeah, no contrast ratios here. Yeah, no, it's um, but it, I, I, hey, I just wanted to test out. I'm using my uh, uh, old eighty D as my webcam, and uh, nice. You know, I'm I'm really enjoying uh, uh, punishing everyone with the detail on my face right now. <laughs> oh man, he's got jokes too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Let's but go, um, man. one one of the main reasons why I jumped on here is I just wanted to like um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the classroom still. I'm having those like uh, last minute considerations, but um, yeah. But the big thing for me is like I've been watching you guys like as like, almost like a group, and like you in particular, Eric, um, for quite some time. I'm like learning a lot for free. So one mm -hmm. of the big reasons why I wanted to like jump in is like I'm uh, uh, wanted to kind of like thank you in a more personal manner for like how much value you add to like the photo and video communities, like. Um, I can definitely like uh, blame you for um, you know getting into uh, spending a lot of money on film photography now and yeah sorry about that. My, uh, excuse me for standing up here but you know I've like started spending money on my dad's old uh, Canon uh, yep EL like I can actually shoot with this without any batteries uh, so that's so good money mechanical but, yeah it's so fun but uh, yeah I guess that you know I don't have any major questions other than. Uh, Oh, I guess man. I do have a question that I put in the chat. Um, yeah. Any? Do you have any tips for you know? Like I think the classroom touches on this. I think there's a module on this um, somewhat. But before you get the job, you know, before mm -hmm. you have the client, do you have any tips for like building that trust and that relationship before you're like signed on to go to the shoot? Yeah. And are you talking on a photo scenario or a filmmaking scenario? I think either in a way, like I think um, any context would help, but I'd probably come at it from more of like a photo side right now. Yeah, I'm personally, I'm far more detailed on the filmmaking side because I have this philosophy of like, I am engaging with an entirely other sense when I'm making this piece of art versus the other. And so when, when it comes to filmmaking, a lot of the emotional nuance is dictated through relationship of like getting it right um, on the filmmaking side. For me, it's a lot easier on the photographic side to connect with people quicker. And that's done through a lot of really tangible, easy things. Like if you've been following for a while, you know, I use the Fuji, Fuji Instaxes throughout the day. I, that like hits them in the hard strings in the evening when I drop that on the table for them. Um, but one of the biggest things for me is just music, like bring music and a story I share in the classroom, I'll just share here. Um, I had this couple that shared their timeline with me as most couples do. And I noticed that their first dance song was um, My Girl by The National. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw that into my romantic portrait jams, Spotify playlist. I'll just, and then like, as we go, it'll probably just show up. And then, of course, as serendipity has it, I just have them start. We did portraits in their hotel room because it was a winter wedding. We didn't really want to go outside. They had a beautiful hotel room. And I was like, you know what? Let's just finish out this portrait session with playing some music. You guys kind of slow dance. And then the song came on and they both looked at me and uh, and they were just like and I just looked at them and I winked. And the, and um, Eric came to me at the dance floor at the end of the night and he was just like, he, that was the groom's name. Um, and he was just like, that moment, I'm just going to remember that for the rest of my life. And I was like, oh. Um, 
So really what I like to teach is like, you don't have to be like winding and dining your clients all the time. Like you, because when you start shooting at volume, you start, start shooting 15, 25, 30 weddings. It's impossible to go out to drinks with all of them two times before the wedding. Like it's just not sustainable to do that. And so I try to find ways where it's like, how do I connect with them on this way that totally surprises them? Like what kind of note can I jot down in their client notes that I can bring up on the wedding day just as like an inside joke like that? Mm -hmm. Or what kind of music can I play or what kind of office reference can I make? You know, because we both love the office or whatever that I feel like connects me so much more to them, which in turn makes them so much more comfortable in front of the lens. Mm -hmm. Um, And in any way I can, I try to incorporate music in that way to break them down. And that playlist always does it for me. And I, if I really want an emotional moment, I go to Novo more and I just like let that stuff rip and especially anchor the song anchor. And I really, I try to prompt them and just be like, have a moment together. Um, so I let them know that in the first meeting, like I'm not going to be afraid to grab you by the shoulders and tell you it's going to be okay when it's not okay. So you don't feel okay. And I'm going to be that friend that's there. Cause you're going to see me most of the time throughout your wedding day. Um, so I don't know, it's a long-winded answer, but um, I go through the nuance of, especially like in the creative storytelling and philosophy modules of the classroom where I go in depth on all those stories. Um, and ultimately that's what I feel like separates this course from so many others is like, I think so many other courses just focus on the technical and like, how do you run the ads? How do you do the gear? How do you blah, blah, blah. And so much of this, especially on the second half of the course, like the technical stuff is on the front end. The second half is so much more about the creativity and the inspiration that I feel like strikes a chord in people that is hard to put a dollar amount on. I'm like, yeah, I put a dollar amount on it, but like, I really truly didn't know how to price it because I was like, what does this mean to people? Um, And it feels like the resounding reviews have been that it is really impactful. So, well, that's that's, awesome. I I love the like the idea of like just building that connection through like genuinely learning from the people who you're working with, right? And uh, yes, quickly that way. So. Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. just like just be their friend like just be there for them and be happy for them and the video i posted on youtube last week where i brought a champagne bottle and she was like that's gonna live on our shelf for the rest of our life i was like (laughs) i just it blew me away i couldn't believe that and she was so like they were so introverted so that the fact that she said that to me at the end of the day my heart just melted and i was like it's such a small thing i just spent a little bit extra time And I played music for them. They danced in the rain and they shared some champagne. And it just cost me 20 bucks at the liquor store 30 minutes before the elopement. And it was like all the difference that they needed to enjoy it that much more. So, yeah. 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 Well, if you've ever had uh, champagne out of a magic bullet cup, it (laughs) is um, it like really, you can taste the plastic (laughs) a little bit more. It really brings out the notes. Yeah. The Um, notes of the bubbly. I'm feeling attacked. (laughs) this conversation has come full circle (laughs) exactly well i I appreciate it i mean like this is super awesome and i guess the big reason why i turned on the camera was just to you know thank you for all the contributions to the community and uh always a pleasure watching and learning from you so thanks man it means it means the world really appreciate you coming on yeah no problem and uh, next time i'll um i'll paint the walls different color or something and uh, sounds good wear a different color shirt (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> All right, man. Have a good night. Yeah, you too, guys. Good luck with uh, the rest of the stuff. Thanks so much. Take care. See ya. Well, that was lovely. I just like talking about philosophy a lot, if you haven't noticed. All right. Do we wait? We have a couple other chats or no? Yeah, for sure. Gotta ask you guys, Tommy, please, each of you recommend. Uh, us the photographer you learned most from during your career mine photographers i learned from benj heish he has a youtube channel benj heish um also jonas peterson huge inspiration max wenger and then levi t arena but he doesn't really have any educational content Naraf patel and Naraf patel we just so Patel, 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 at the same time. Patel, Patel. Really the India Earl, time. India Earl was really helpful for me too with posing prompts. Who else do you have? Nara Patel. <laughs> Nara Patel. Second, second time. Second He's time. the best storyteller. A third ever. time. Yeah, unbelievable. He's and then so talented. Kristen Marie Parker really helped me yeah. understand like, oh, I'm an introvert. You're an introvert. 
that shows up in your work. Yep. India, Earl is much more of an extrovert. Yeah, I'm not like that. Yeah. But weirdly enough, her posing prompts really helped me in like times where I felt really insecure and needed something to give to clients. Yeah. Whereas Kristen made me realize like I don't have to be someone else yes. in order to get what I need from the couple yeah. for them to enjoy the time in their portrait session, their wedding yeah. portraits, all that stuff. Look for people that have your style and also do not have your style because you can yes. learn a lot yes. from a wide variety of photographers. Yep. I like I love Sam Hurd because he's taught me a ton. Mm -hmm. I don't love his photographic style. Like that's not my personal style, but I've learned so, so much technical knowledge from him yep a lot of people can surprise you so josh yeah for me um one of the first few people that helped me out was uh i think on on youtube he's known as matt who is matt johnson like i just remember when i first started out i just like googled wedding films and how to do stuff and he was one of the first people to pop up um i think the other one of the other people was actually i think one of the popular ones manny hapoya I think back in the day he was more Matisse. focused. Yeah, he was more focused on weddings and stuff. Um, also, Craig Adams. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was oh, one of the ones. Oh, that, yeah. Craig Adams is sick. Also, we met with him for coffee one Craig time. Adams. Also, <laughs> one last one that I know we're talking about wedding stuff, but Samuel Elkins. I had a phone call with him at this point three years ago. I think. Wow, that phone call changed my life in every single way. Wow. I'll say that much. Samuel Elkins is like. They like to joke about me having multiple lifetimes. Samuel Elkins is like so wise beyond his years, and he's like not far from my age. No, Sam dude, is twenty five and six eight, and one of the most accomplished <laughs> photographers ever. Dude is so. Steven, wise. do the voice. Hey guys, welcome back to the live stream. And today we're going to be talking about <laughs> Squarespace. Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sam so much. Oh, I love Sam so much. <laughs> I can't wait to hang out with him again yeah. in real life. Yes. Okay, I feel awful, but I don't remember the name of the guy I just talked to. I'm so sorry. If you're still here and you're in the chat, it's James Tucker Smiley. I don't know if that was just you who I talked to. Do you remember? Was it James? I have no idea. If it is, thank you. If it's not, still thank you. James enrolled in filmmaking in the classroom. Let's go! We still have enrollments rolling in in the last half hour. We have 20 minutes left until enrollment closes with the classroom. Shouting out everybody who still enrolls. La even last minute, make sure to sign up for the Facebook group. So many people in there, tons of information, tons of community. Let's go. This is exciting. I love talking to all you guys. <laughs> Braxton breathing hard in the mic. <laughs> James, uh, James Tucker just commented, what up boys? Let's go. Let's okay, go. that's who just purchased. Let's go, James. Oh! Get it, get it, get it. Okay. Um, yep, Nathan, Nova Moore, top tier. Nathan, I love that you've been on Twitter just being like, this is the musical I'm watching tonight. This is the musical I'm watching tonight. He's like, La La Land, tick, tick, boom. Oh, it's like everyone I'm like, like, like. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of musicals. I love it. Mike is too. Um, I think the first conversation we actually had was about Tick Tick Boom on yes, Instagram DMs. Yes. And you got to connect with people in that way. You got it. Like, if you have those connections about things that most other people don't like, you got to engage with those conversations. Like, yep. if you like winemaking, you better be talking to Mike about it. That's right. If you like running, just mention the word running near Eric and he will run to you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Also, they, you know, they say uh, marathoners. Uh, what's the phrase? <laughs> I saw you, brother. <laughs> Dang it. Sorry, brother. We, we don't know. Brother. We really don't know. Like, no, uh, you know someone's a marathoner because they talk to you about it. Oh, <laughs> like the CrossFitters. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know how someone does CrossFit? Because they'll only talk about CrossFit. CrossFit yeah. to you. Hey, Braxton, did you have oh, to say No, I'm saying I feel bad. This person's asked this question like three times. A oh, new I'm visual. Sorry. When you deliver raw footage and you shoot a variety of formats, do you put everything into one timeline playing real time? And with the audio, do you cut any of the trash clips? No. I just put everything into a timeline. Same. Just I even do just a basic color grade. Yep. Rec 7 or 9, yep. however you grade. Yep. Put it all. Just make sure when you're shooting day of that you or your second or anyone else doesn't say anything inappropriate. Yeah. Don't say stupid things. I literally <laughs> shot a wedding two days ago where the <sighs> photographer came up to me at the reception and was like, hey, by the way, I don't know if you picked this up or not, but can you make sure what I just said did not end up 
in their raw footage. And I was like, don't uh, worry, I got oh, you. Yeah, but even still, it's yeah. like, you got to dig through that. Yeah. I, like, yeah. it's tough. It's not yeah. your job that's, to have to censor them. But that's also why you don't say things like that. I'm yeah. winning no, those. Definitely not. No. But just saying. Just, just put everything into the timeline, export it, send it off to your couple, however many hours it is. Use Gamut, Rec 709, and 606 LUTs, maybe. I don't know. It's good. Oh, oh, it's good. 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 <laughs> we mix, we mix the G sound like GIF and GIF oh interchangeably with every time G shows English. up in the English language. Sorry, English language. Language. <laughs> language. <laughs> wig. Oh my gosh. We got to stop doing this in public. English language. In English language. 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 <laughs> The worst in our okay, future. chat blowing up again. What is up, chat? What is going on? Can you guys help me? I'm lost. Yeah. What's What's up, YouTube? YouTube? What were the music, those music artists that you just mentioned? Oh, um, Novo Amor. Novo Amor, Bon Iver, Sufjan Stevens. Mm. Go to Spotify and look up my name. You'll find my Romantic Portrait Jams playlist. Oh. And that has all those artists Mr. on it. Great side. Mr. Brightside. <laughs> great, great, great. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, we also have... Braxton got that nose what whistle. What does that even mean? <laughs> does that even mean? <laughs> everyone, everyone keep roasting Braxton, please. Keep roasting Braxton. Wait, keep roasting Braxton. Kyle, Let's will, go. Wait, no, that's Kyle. He's shooting a wedding with me in August. I will fire you. <laughs> All right, Kyle's in the stream now. Kyle oh, is here. He's coming live now. Kyle is up. Kyle, how can you right, do me like right. that? Oh, I'm man, sorry. this is so good. All the... Wait, he has a Ted Lasso sweater and a mustache. And a mustache. Oh, oh man, the mustache came yeah. because of Ted Lasso, hundred percent. Let's go. Kyle's been to the studio before. I did we meet? I don't know. You haven't. I don't think. Yeah, can I I've, see his face out in the side? Yes. I've. Uh, I think I've shaken everybody's hand once. Um, What's up, Kyle? Sh I uh, shot a wedding next to Mike recently. That was awesome. Yeah, um, buddy. And then yeah, hung out with Braxton for a while. Yeah, I was yeah. buying a lens from Bean one day. Oh, okay. He he helped shoot the wedding quick. that I covered when Mike had COVID. Oh, yeah, that, was fun. Gotcha. That, was, that was fun. Wait, so Kyle, are you in Chicago? Uh, it's suburb. Yeah, it takes gotcha. like an hour to get there and thirty minutes back. Yeah, yeah. yeah what uh, suburb? Wheaton. Wheaton, nice. West Side. Yeah. Uh, What's up? <laughs> over by over over by the Ville. <laughs> Naperville? Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Good. Yeah. I'll I don't you know. I, that too. I do. It's, it's an addiction. I'm with Mike on that. I will back yeah. him up with all the nerdy stuff he has to say. Yeah. It, yeah. it all started with coffee. <laughs> That's the coffee. Um, yeah. I have one question. Um, yes. So, so I'm in the midst of making kind of my first big wedding film um so i've been doing photo stuff a lot video stuff a lot in the last few years it's mostly it's like i've edited so many films uh and i've shot so many films mm -hmm. um like second shooting but really like Danny Hoshner, so. sorry what was that sorry sorry i was just saying who we were shooting with and like yeah. who your community is yeah um yeah, so like I wanted something to to show for myself, you know. Uh, and so I'm in the works of that now, and they were the best. Like it was it was one of those situations where I just like begged them, I'm like, yeah, I need something. You guys are just beautiful and super sweet to each other, and it's just mm -hmm. gonna be. I know it. I know it's gonna be amazing. So, and it was. It was like dream, like super portfolio. They yep. were so comfortable. Um, and so, yeah, my question is, like, it just got me, like, kind of thinking of, like, okay, so once this gets out there and I, you know, wishful thinking, get, like, clients out of it, um, how do I kind of make sure that I am or that they are a good fit for me? So, like, kind of, like, what does that look like to, like, can anybody just, like, say, yeah, I'll give you all the money, but then there's no relationship or like there's nothing like if i don't vibe with them or like they're not connecting or they're not 
sometimes they're not even like i've had i've had weddings where it's like do you really love each other you know so, yeah i've been there um, yes yeah, so like how do you kind of decide or like have that conversation of like are we a good fit yeah I, that's something i try to navigate in the first meeting right away by not even going into any business details, any payment, none of that stuff. I just jump right into philosophy. And I let them know, like, especially in my scenario, I go, I know I'm above market price for wedding filmmakers. And you probably came to me because you saw something unique in what I do. So because of that, I would assume that you probably connect with my vision and philosophy. And can I just share with you what that is? And I yeah. talk about legacy. I talk about the importance of their film. I talk about like what their voices are going to mean to their children and grandchildren when they see it decades from now. And so really targeting that and hitting it home because ultimately when you start getting into, if you're going to be that intentional with filmmaking, you're going to be able to raise your prices. You're going to be able to successful, be successful. But in the midst of that, you might have a few weddings here and there that are like, D yeah, do you love each other? I don't get it. But in those scenarios, what I would recommend is just go into the day strictly being like, I'm just going to serve you as much as I possibly can, however you act. And I am just going to show up and be the best version of myself and just make you feel super loved and cared for and even if that means you not vibing with each other, not romantic with each other, I'm going to show up in the ways that you're excited about. You like the Spartans? Cool. Like go Michigan State. Like, I don't know, you know? And so it's just all about empathy at that point. You might disagree with how they're acting on their wedding day. You might have thoughts of like, you guys are probably going to get divorced in five years, but like you have to push all of those thoughts aside and just be like, no, I'm just here for you right now and what you need. And so yeah. in those really hard ones, that's what helps me sustain where I'm not sitting there just being like, why am I shooting for a couple like this or not my clientele? They're not my preferred clientele. As you keep working through weddings like that, you keep raising your prices, you keep niching into your clientele. Josh Helton from A Little Long Distance is like such a perfect example of this. I don't know if you've seen any of his work. Um, a Little Long Distance over the years, he has just niched down to his exact clientele through so much creative pigeonholing, if you will, um, through camcorder footage and Super 8 and iPhone footage he gets from the couples and just like hikes he goes on and boat excursions day before the wedding, like all sorts of craziness where like he's getting them like he's based on Nashville. So if he gets a local Nashville wedding, he's like on the party bus with them through Broadway in Nashville, like just doing the thing with them. And he has niched into this clientele that is just like really amped on their wedding day and so excited to get married. And through the years I saw him shoot weddings that didn't, what weren't like that. But as he kept niching into that specific style and taking care of whatever client there was and making really beautiful pieces of art and like really intentional edits, he, I just saw him continue to niche and niche and niche into his exact clientele. Yeah. Um, and that's happened to me throughout the years as well, where like eventually everybody that's coming to me now, like I'll literally read you an inquiry that came in this night or tonight. Um, and it's, it's like a local Chicago wedding, but she literally said, it's hands down the storytelling. I asked my photographer to send me any videographers that, that he recommended after going through six other websites thinking maybe wedding video wasn't for me. I go to your site if there's anything I don't want, it's a cookie cutter video with folk song in the background. Love how much B-roll you embed and overall story you tell. As a graphic designer marrying a man who loves movies, the storytelling and feeling purpose-driven is the most important part. I'm like, yeah. all right, clearly you're like my people, your budget. Um, my budget sheet says 5K, but I know that that's lower than your starting price. I would love to discuss if there's any way to be more cost-effective. I don't need coverage the entire event. Or maybe I can work with one of your associates, is what she says. So it's like, this is a November wedding. I'm like, do I think it's a portfolio piece? It seems like we vibe. These are the kinds of ones where I'm like, I just want to go for it. You know, like it feels, it feels right. And that's because my business is diversified at this point. And I'll be like, yeah, I think this would be really, really great thing to add to the portfolio. Or I can be like, no, you could pay my rate or go to one of my associates. Um, but this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about where like, if you continue to put that stuff out into the world, you're going to start getting inquiries like this. It's just, I don't really ever get video inquiries that aren't like this anymore. 
I just said a lot of things. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, please. That's like the whole point of this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, I just, I just feel like if you just continue to be true, like it's cheesy, but like to be true to what you want and who you are, like in your storytelling, your philosophy, the clients will come like edit in that style, yeah. do it that way. And they're going to start coming in droves. Yeah. That was a great answer. Thank you. Good. Good. I'm glad it satisfied <laughs> the question. Oh, Kristen's calling me a troll now. I should probably do it. <laughs> I want you to roast Braxton more. No, I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're allowed to. He can take anything. No, I love you, Braxton. You he said he loves you. you. You didn't have your headphones on. You better. Love you, Kyle. <laughs> Epic. Epic. Thanks for jumping on, Kyle. Yeah. All right. Later, brother. Adios. Okay. There is only 10 minutes remaining. This is the last call. Last call for enrollment on the classroom. I know last year we had like two right at the buzzer, I think. If any of you are right on the fence, now's your time. You have 10 minutes left. Um, any recommendation for Denver area who's fun to work with? Yes, White and Reverie. Definitely check out White and Reverie. DM them with some value, ways that you could help them. Kaylin is my friend. Christy's my friend. Um, and then someone else said, the initial client conversation in the classroom kills it on figuring out clients and how to grab them and make sure that everyone is on the same team. Thanks, Timo. Love Timo. Timo just had a baby. And he's crushing it as a dad. And we've been talking about that. And it's awesome. Can I just make an observation? Oh, my camera died. Oh, no. Oh, great. Your camera died. The, 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 okay. Um, someone asked how many people enrolled tonight. Uh, I think today it's like over 25. We have about a dozen tonight through the live stream. Epic. Uh, it's so fun to see you guys enroll in this way. Um, but also, Eric, you should market the course like that, the emotional side, ideas for what to say to vendors to work with them. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I realize I, I don't, I'm not a traditional salesman. I said that in the video today. I'm just like, I just want to speak from the heart and what I care about. Um, but yeah, ideas for what to say to vendors to work with them. Again, uh, lead with value. Lead with how you can shoot portfolio stuff for them to share online to fill their website, to post on their Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, still the nose whistle, yo. <laughs> Don't be falling asleep over there, guys. We still got 10 minutes. Come on, 10 minutes, you gotta keep it alive. Someone's gotta roll so we can, our we can, dead. we gotta, oh really? Oh no, their camera's dead. All, of our cameras are all your cameras dead. are dead? It's just you, bro. We're not hardwired into, okay, so it's just me over here. Maybe everybody comes over here for the last 10 minutes. You know, all right, let's go. Team huddle. That seems chaotic. Here, Congrats on the enrollment, thank you, Kyle. Fine. Thank you. Eric, uh, let's see what else. How do you stand out from other photographers in your town? The classic thing I say is lean into what makes you different. There's so much competition. I feel I can't attract clients. So instead of just viewing everybody as your competition, I would highly recommend reaching out to people and start adding a philosophy to your community that is that you support each other and that you're not just competing against each other for work. So how can you work alongside each other like we try to do here um, to the point where get, – get out of here. <laughs> um, to the point where – we are diversified enough and have enough work coming in between all of us that we can help sustain each other's careers. And like Braxton came here, he started working for me. Now he has full-time work and shooting his own weddings, shooting for other people, editing for other people and a multitude of other stuff. Josh just hopped on to editing here um, and came in with value. Steven moved here, started podcasting with me. He's been growing his YouTube channel, still shooting weddings as my associate photographer. Mike has been here since day one, starting Creative Club and diversifying through studio rentals, shooting weddings together, collaborating on YouTube, doing commercial projects together with a multitude of brands. Um, yeah, we, we're all 
incredibly diversified at this point, but it's only because we've been able to link arms and do it together and not just from the get go be like, well, you stole a wedding from me. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Um, so I hope that's inspiration for you to maybe start considering that in your own area. This feels like New Year's. <laughs> oh, one last one. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Single camera angle to end it off. Yo, what? What's up? What's up, guys? How's it going? Hey, it's going good, Eric. Um, I have to be really quiet because everybody's sleeping in yeah. the house. But Makes this sense. is awesome, man. Oh, man. This is awesome. So, so I, Yeah, so I enrolled last year. Or, or I mean, the last time we had it. And yeah, yeah. Let me tell you this. It was, I had one wedding under my belt. And now I can happily say I have 10. And Stop. they've all been life changing. Like how you Dude. say, it's the philosophy behind everything. And I don't want to get too deep into it because I do get emotional. But man, <laughs> it's different. Like it, it's, it's a lot. But I'm so happy I invested in your course and it just, you know, made me, makes me who I am right now. It's awesome. You're going to make me emotional, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for jumping on and saying that, dude. Most definitely, Eric. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure speaking to you. And to you, um, Braxton, I have to be your second shooter, man. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> He literally just went, stepped down to he go to the bathroom. He went to go pee. <laughs> Braxton. Okay. He wants to be your second shooter, bro. I'm going to be his second right shooter. He's going There's to be no your way. second shooter, bro. Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Wait, are you I'm, the guy that DM'd me? This is Jonathan. That's right. That's Jonathan. Oh, it's Jonathan. That's where, right. where are you based out of? I'm, I'm in a little town called Indian Town, Florida. It's in South Florida. It's in South Florida? Yeah. Nobody knows can, where it's at. Do you think you can make it to Louisiana? <laughs> Most definitely. I'll make it happen, man. Most definitely. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. Okay. I got I got a Louisiana wedding in September. Perfect. Perfect. Bet. If we can send more details to me and, and we'll get it off. So I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and make you. it happen. I, I saw your DM. I'll, I'll hit you back. We'll set something up. Sick. Heck yeah, Brax. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. <laughs> Heck Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and back to the 7200. Oh, yeah. Isn't oh, it so good, the RF? It's, it's something else, man. This technology is crazy. <laughs> yeah, the stabilization in that lens is just like, you're holding it still at 200, and you're just like, how? That's right. That's right. It's insane. Yeah. This is like unreal talking to you guys live right oh, now. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm shaking, dude. I'm oh, shaking. Dude. Well, it's so good talking to you, man. Thank you so much for saying yeah, that. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. That like seriously made my my night to like end it off this yeah. way. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just so freaking cool. Makes it all worth it. It's just so fun to hear like the wins uh, on people learning this stuff and growing their own business. And yeah, man, yeah. like kudos to you for getting after it too, because it is easy to just listen to this stuff and feel inspired and not act That's on it. Right. But clearly, you've act on, acted on it and done done your work. That's and right. I just want to say That's congrats, right. man. Congrats. Thank you so much, Eric. And I just want to let you know, too, I come from a family who are very hardworking. And I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure most of us have hardworking families. And I'm just not accustomed to doing things on my own and going out there. So that, your course, really helped me as well. It's, you know, stepping the game up for me. So it's helping me financially. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it, and helping me stay away from the job I currently have now, which is okay. I like my job. It's yeah. not the best, but this is where my passion's at, man. man. So good to hear. Yeah. Keep going, man. You're that's clearly on the trajectory to like send that to full time, man. Thank you, Eric. It's a pleasure speaking to you guys. Likewise. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Most definitely. Later, All guys. Right. Have a good night. Thank you. Me too. Okay, I we have to end it on that. That is yeah. midnight. That was great. That was <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, no nobody signed up last minute, but we still gotta send a. Let's go! Well, thank you guys. Love you guys. This was so much fun. Whew.
whole stream was so heartwarming. Awesome. Oh, man. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm 31 yes, now. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Got a happy day over 43. Birthday. If you're still here, Eric just turned 31 officially. Happy 31. He doesn't look a day over 30. I'm turning 31. I'm holding Eric's. That's my Yay. 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 Happy Bo birthday. Burnham. Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, look at the, Everyone look at the monitor. Wait for Wait, it. This one? Or the uh, camera. camera. Look at the it's camera. Work. Three, two, one. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You look 12. I didn't look 12 this morning. Okay, nice. Oh. <laughs> you look. Wait, who looks 12? I look 67 this morning. Wait, which one of us looks 12? Which one of us looks 12? The 12 year old Braxton. Braxton. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. The nose whistler. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to leave. <laughs> okay. All right. We got to sign off. We've been here for four and a half hours. I think we're all fairly fatigued. Yes. It's a good night. <clears throat> it's been quite an amazing night. Thank you so much, guys. We will be reaching out. If you enrolled, we'll be reaching out on the Facebook group to let you know who won the final giveaway. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone said, don't leave. Don't leave. No. Stay Everyone right at C70 one more time. <laughs> Say happy birthday on three. One, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike switched it to his camera. <laughs> <laughs> you did, yep, it actually. Did. Oh, <laughs> that's a delay. Full send. Am I in this? Awesome. <laughs> Everyone look at the C70. Three, two, one. I don't know Play if I should have kept my headphones like this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Happy birthday, Kristen. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, happy Kristen's birthday, Kristen. Kristen. Twins. Oh, Sabria's still out. Oh, Sabria's. I love you. Oh, Sabria. Happy B Day, boo. Love you. Oh, oh. Love you, Sabria. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's go to bed. There you go. <laughs> Good night. That's like 4,000 in February. <laughs> Sabrina. Bye guys. Oh, Sabria's showing up in chat. Oh, she probably set an alarm <laughs> and then got up to say happy <laughs> birthday. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for hanging out all night long. Till next time. Like and subscribe. No, I'm <laughs> All right. See you guys.